Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is the next book with Tamaki Amajiki and a female listener. This is chapter one of Rapid Fate Online, and this one is titled Rapid Fate Online. I just don't see what the big deal is, you replied to your best friend as you sat eating lunch together in the food court area of UA High School. You and your bestie were both third year students in the Hero Course. Your quirk, Body Switch, allowed you to swap places with anyone that you could see. So if you wanted to swap locations with someone across the room, all you had to do was look at them and then activate your quirk and all of a sudden you would be where they were standing and they would be where you were standing. Not the flashiest quirk, but it was practical and tactical and fantastic for catching villains quickly. All you had to do was hop into the barred section of a police vehicle and look out through the bars at the villain in question and activate your quirk. Hey presto, problem solved. Well, most of the time. But enough about you and your quirk. Your best friend had just bought the latest online game called Rapid Fate Online, or RFO for short, and she was obsessed with it. No, seriously, she said, leaning towards you with the juice popper hanging out of her mouth. It's amazing. It can't be that good, can it? You replied skeptically. No, legit. The graphics are next level. You remember Sword Art Online yet? Yeah, the online game where the creator was a bored multi-billionaire who turned villain and trapped all of the players in the game so that he had friends to play with, and if they died in game, they died in real life too? You replied, leaning back in your chair with a harrowed look on your face as you crossed your arms across your chest. Uh, yeah, well, this game's created by the same company. Hard pass, you said loudly, throwing your arms up in an X shape across your body. No, no, she laughed. That villain billionaire guy committed suicide, so it's all groovy, baby. But this game uses the same technology as that game, and honestly, you have to try it. You sighed heavily and relaxed your arms. Ugh, if I come over and try your game once, will you get off my case? Just one taste and you'll want more, your friend sang passionately, clutching her fist closed and squeezing her eyes as she sang. You rolled your eyes and laughed. Okay, okay, I'll try it. Tonight? She yelled excitedly. Yeah, fine, tonight then, he replied. She jumped up and screamed and shouted hooray, which drew a lot of attention, as you can imagine. What's all the excitement? Your other classmate, Tagata Mirio, asked as he strode over, followed by his two friends. Ah, uh, Bestie here is obsessed with that new game, Rapid Fate? Mirio nodded enthusiastically. Yeah, and she wants me to try it, you said. Oh, that's awesome, Miro replied. I haven't tried it yet, but I've heard it's amazing. It is amazing, your best friend said emphatically. Tamaki, Nijiri, either of you two played it? Miro asked as he turned to his two closest friends. Nope, Nijiri replied in a bubbly voice. Tamaki just looked at the floor with his hands in his pockets, trying to stand as still as possible, almost as if he was hoping that by standing so still he would turn invisible. You found Tamaki adorable in a weird kind of way. He was painfully shy, and you guys had never really spoken, but he was good looking and gentle, which you liked. Tamaki? Mirio pressed. The shy bean shoved his hands deeper in his pockets and hunched his shoulders, his lips quivering as he lowered his head further. Oh god, don't stress the poor guy, you thought. Tamaki would have better things to do, you replied Mirio with a wink, taking the heat off Tamaki, but at the same time hoping to get a rise out of your best friend. It worked a charm. Ha, ha, excuse me, better things? Your best friend scoffed. You won't be saying that once you've experienced this game. You laughed. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Okay, okay, your best friend squealed as you both walked into her room later that day. Lie down on the bed, she said excitedly as she got the headgear ready for you. You chuckled. It was cute watching her get so excited about this game. You jumped onto her bed and lay down, getting comfy while she bounced around the room. Okay, so you'll be using my account because it's all set up for me. I'm still level one, not really sure what skill set I want to pursue yet, so I'm just an unspecified villager at this moment, she laughed. Okay, I have no idea what you just said, but awesome, you replied with a thumbs up. You don't need to worry about any of that. Just have a walk around and look at this amazing world, she squealed again as she put the headgear on your head. Okay, lay back. You obeyed. I'm pressing start. Oh, one last thing. To get out of the game, just swipe your hand down in the air like this. She held her hand up mid-air, about head height, and then dropped it down in a swipe motion. You looked at her skeptically. 
No, seriously, she laughed. A menu bar will pop up and you just scroll down to the bottom and point your finger at log out. I'm going to get stuck in this game, aren't I? He said with a deadpan expression. No, you won't, I promise. If you're not back offline in one hour, I'll manually log you out from the headset here, she said with a laugh. Okay, now go and see. She forced your head back onto the pillow and pressed a button on the side of the headgear. Welcome to Rapid Fate Online, an all-encompassing voice announced to you as you were sucked into a spiral of colours. You felt your whole body being sucked into this vortex of colour and then all of a sudden you were standing in a field. You blinked and looked around. You looked down. Your body was there. Your hands were there. You were still in human form, but just in tattered villager clothes. Why the hell am I standing in a field? You turned around and started walking. It all felt so real. The sun, the breeze. You inhaled deeply. I'm having a hard time believing this is a fake world. The graphics are actually incredible. You bent down and picked a flower. You could even feel the flower stem between your thumb and forefinger. Whoa, this is so realistic, you thought as you walked with flower and fingers. You looked around as you walked, wondering where to go. Ahead in the distance, you saw what looked like a stone wall of a city. You shrugged and headed for it, hoping someone there might be able to tell you a little bit more about this world. As you approached the big iron gates, you saw a hive of activity inside. People were walking the streets, going in and out of shops and inns and buying from street vendors. The streets were made of cobblestone, giving the whole place a very medieval vibe. Um, hey, you said as you approached another player. They turned around and looked you up and down. Hey, they replied. Sorry, I'm new here. I just wanted to ask someone some questions, you replied, nervously rubbing your arm with your hand. What do you want to know? The player asked. Um, I don't know really, just, well, what do you do in this game? The player laughed. <laughs> what are you? Do you even game? Um, no, I don't, he replied curtly, getting irritated at the comments this player was making. That's why I'm asking what you do in this game? The player scoffed and turned to walk away. Don't waste my time, he said over his shoulder as they rocked off. Uh, rude much, you thought. Uh, hi, a girl's voice asked from behind you. You turned around. Hey, he said brightly. Sorry, I just overheard you saying you didn't know what to do in this game. I've been playing for three weeks now and I think I might be able to help, she said in a friendly tone. Oh, you have? That's cool. Uh, so what do you do? Well, I'm still a low level, but I'm a merchant, she replied. Is that like selling stuff? You asked curiously. Yeah, I mainly stay around here because this is the main city. It's Dawn City. That's the only city on the first level, she said happily. There aren't a lot of strong monsters around in the forests and fields here because they've all been farmed, so it's relatively safe. Like, they do respawn, but they're weaker than the original ones that were here. You can easily outrun them. Sorry, you said? Farm? Respawn? Oh, yes. Farming is how the fighters of this game get experience points by fighting and beating monsters. Because this is level 1, everyone has fought all the monsters available, they're moved on to level 2. Respawning just means the monsters reappear. Oh, okay, I see, you replied. Sounds complicated, but all good. I don't think I could ever be a fighter type anyway. So, who's the top fighter at the moment? Oh, that'd be Butterfly. It's pronounced Butterfly, but with an I and a 3 on the end. But the 3 sounds like E, the friendly player replied. The top player's name is Butterfly, you asked with a juggle. What an interesting choice of name. What do you mean? the girl asked. Oh, well, I was kind of expecting the top fighter to have a name that was something like Imminent Death or Crusher, you replied. Well, you can choose anything, really, the girl replied. Like your name, for example. What, what do you mean, my name, you asked. The girl looked up above your head. See, you're sexy schoolgirl 69, she said. Oh, my God, how embarrassing, you groaned. This isn't actually my name. This isn't even my account. I'm using a friend's one. Doesn't matter to me, the friendly player replied. You looked up above her head. There was a green cursor and the name Yui-chan. So your username is Yui-chan? You asked her. She nodded. You can call me Yui or Yui-chan. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Awesome. You replied brightly with a smile. Yui continued to point out different things to you, like your health bar that was located to your left and also what happened when the health bar dropped 
and how to build it back up with food and water when you're on the lower levels. You chatted for a bit longer before you realised it could be getting close to one hour and your friend would log you out if you hadn't logged out by then. Uh, how do you see the time on this thing? You asked. Real time or game time? Yui asked. Real time, you, th you said. Oh, that's in menu. Just swipe your arm down in the air, she said. Like this. She did the air swipe and a holographic menu popped up in front of her. You did the same and your menu came up. The time was top left of screen. Oh, wow. I've been in this game for 50 minutes already, you gasped. Easy to do, trust me, Yui laughed. I'd better get going. I don't know if I'll be ever able to come back on my friend's account again, but thank you for telling me a bit about this game, you said politely. Oh, no problem, she replied. It was nice talking to you. You smiled and scrolled through the menu to the bottom and held your finger over the logout button. Immediately you were surrounded by a bright light and a friendly voice that said, Thank you for playing. See you again soon. You blinked as your friend's room came back into focus. Oh, you're back, your friend replied from her desk chair. She'd been chilling there waiting for you to come back. Sorry, I was gone for a while, you replied sheepishly. She gave you a devilish smile. <laughs> Addictive, huh? Meh, he replied with a dismissive hand wave. Like, it's cool, I'll give you that. Cool? It's freaking awesome, she yelled enthusiastically. You laughed. Okay, okay, calm down. Yeah, it's awesome. Your best friend lunged at you, crash tackling you on the bed, the two of you squealing and laughing together. The next day at school, you were distracted by your experience in Rapid Fate Online. You still had so many questions. If I ask Bestie if I can go back in again, I will never hear the end of it. Should I go and buy it? You sat there warring with yourself, one side of you jeering at yourself for being interested in such a lame game, and the other side coaxing you to do whatever the hell you wanted. That afternoon, you stopped by the game store and nervously walked inside. Um, hey, you greeted the mail shop assistant. Ha, how, how much is RFO? You asked, almost embarrassed with yourself. Just a little side note before we start. No, there's not an adult scene already. Calm down. Um, I just wanted to point out that when Yin is in the real world, her name will be shortened to Yin. But when she's in game, I've then put it as online name, O-N. So I will just refer to Yin as On when listener is in game so if you're wondering why i keep saying on then that's what's going on seeing as we've just started to enter rfo all right back to the chapter we go the shop assistant didn't even bat an eye as he answered your question it's eight hundred dollars he said you nearly choked on air um so what does that cover the nerve gear headset and the game chip the assistant replied like he had said the same thing a million times. Ah, oh, okay, is that all I need for the game? You asked. Yep, he replied in a bored tone. Oh, okay, thanks, you responded as you turned numbly and walked out. Where the hell am I going to get $800 from, you thought. You got home that afternoon and looked at how much you had in your savings account. $250. Ah, oh, man, you sighed. Maybe I can do extra work around the house or ask for an advance on my weekly allowance. The next month saw you working your ass off to do random jobs so you could earn that extra 550 to buy RFO secretly. You didn't want anyone to know that you'd become interested in the game. It was right on closing time late Thursday night that you appeared silently in front of the game store again. You had on your favourite hoodie, which was big enough to disguise you as you pushed the door open and shamefully made your way to the checkout desk with your head lowered. Uh, c can, can I buy Rapid Fate online? You asked nervously without raising your head. The guy behind the counter just nodded silently and picked a package off the shelf behind him before turning back to you and scanning it. That's 800, he said flatly. You nodded and pulled out your key card, and then tapped it on the card reader, and the assistant printed the receipt, put it with the game in the shop bag and handed it across to you. You mumbled a thank you and turned, making a mad dash for the door. You were so pumped on adrenaline that you ran all the way home, ashamed and elated at having finally bought the game. The minute you got home, you ran to your room. Closing the door quickly, you jumped up on the bed and opened the box, 
yanking out the manual and giving it a quick read. After figuring the basics out, you quickly plug the headgear into the closest power point and lay down on the bed, getting comfortable before pressing the power button on the side of the headset. You heard a loud buzzing noise and suddenly you were enveloped in a white light. Welcome to Rapid Fate Online! A sign flashed up before your eyes and you jumped slightly. Welcome and congratulations on your purchase, a friendly voice said. Let's get started. We need to create your character. Two options then flashed up before you, character or mirror. You hesitated. What's mirror? There was a little information icon in the corner of your vision, so you reached out and pressed it. Information on what both these options meant flashed up before you, and you read that Mirror would allow you to recreate your exact looks as your character in the game, which you dismissed immediately. Can you imagine if I just randomly walked around in this game looking like my actual self? What if my bestie saw me? You quickly clicked on Character. You got to choose everything relating to your features, from picking your eye colour right down to the shape of your nose. When you were satisfied with the look of your character, you had to pick an online name or username. You thought for a bit. Mm, on, you thought. Perfect. Selecting the keyboard from the menu bar, you typed your username in. Enter, it asked. Congratulations, the message said. Username accepted. Enter game. There was an option to click yes or no. You selected yes, and the voice spoke again. Welcome to Dawn City the only city on level one. From here your journey begins. You may choose whatever class you like. Just ask the guides for assistance. These are the people with the purple cursor above their heads. Good luck and have fun. And with that, you were immediately transported to the center of the city that you had visited once before from your bestie's account. You became immediately excited to be back here because you'd had been thinking about this game for a good month now and had worked hard to get it. This was gonna be fun. You wandered around a little bit, observing what players did, and then you remembered Yui saying that she was a merchant. Maybe merchant is a good place to start, you thought. You wandered into a quaint looking store, and the man behind the counter had a purple cursor above his head. Oh, awesome! Someone who can help me! You walked up to him eagerly. Hi, I just started today. I want to become a merchant, you said brightly. Wonderful, that's fantastic. The guy replied happily. First of all, you will need a basket, he said, turning around and pulling a wicker basket from the bottom shelf. Take this basket and fill it with foods to sell. There are plenty of wild vegetables and fruits in the fields and forests around Dawn City, so look there first. Each food item is given a mahi value. Mahi is the currency used in Rapid Fate Online, he added with a smile. You can then s sell these to get mahi to then buy essential items. Oh, I see, he replied cheerfully. Thank you, I'll start right away. Just beware of the monsters, the help guide said as he waved you off. Ugh, great, monsters. Well, Yui said they're weak, so I can easily outrun them, so no problem. You smiled happily as you headed down the cobblestone road to the gate that led to the fields. Time to make a fortune, you thought to yourself. You skipped around the fields a bit, bending down and tapping different flowers to see if they showed an item bar but none of them did, so you headed towards some bushes. The first bush you came across had red berries on it, and you tapped on one. An item bar showed up immediately, saying that these berries were good for eating and were called goji berries. They were worth one mahi each. Hmm, well if I pick enough berries and sell them all, I could be rich in no time. You happily started stripping the bushes of these berries. Each shrub was laden with the fruits, and you couldn't understand why no one else was out here picking these. You slaved away, picking furiously until your basket was full and overflowing. Alright, time to head back to the city and sell some, you thought. An urgent two-toned beeping sounded in your ear and you looked to your left. Your health bar had hit 35 out of 50. What? How did that happen? You thought. You pressed the little flashing icon. You have not eaten in three hours, the warning note said. Okay, well, I'll just eat these berries. No problem, you thought, reaching for a berry and popping it in your mouth. Oh my god, I can actually taste these? You reached out and took another one. Oh, they're pretty good. You ate a few more and looked at your health bar. It hadn't moved. What? What's going on here? You thought. 
you add a few more and finally it moved to 36 out of 50. What the heck? How many of these do I have to eat? Never mind. I'll just go back and sell them to use and then use the money to buy a food item that'll bring my health back up quicker, you thought. And with that, you turned from the bush and headed back across the field with your basket of berries and into town. You happily marched in and walked over to where it looked like there was a bit of a marketplace set up. Players had stalls with all kinds of goods to sell and you walked to the end and stood next to the last stall. A big red warning bar popped up. Cannot stand here. Unlicensed merchant, it read. Oh, you said audibly. Okay. You sheepishly walked off with your basket of berries and sat down on a bench. There was an older man sitting at the other end of the same bench as you and you turned to him. Would you like to buy some of these berries? You asked him. He shook his head. No thanks. I can get some of those from the woods myself if I want to. Oh, okay, he replied sadly. You got up and walked around to some of the other people standing about. Want some berries? They're cheap, he said happily. Your cheerfulness was met with sniggers and snorts. Why would we want to waste money on a useless item? Most people replied you. By the end of the next hour, you were feeling very disheartened and your health bar was beeping again. 31 out of 50. You sighed and sat down, throwing down some berries to try and bring your health bar back up. Are you new here? A voice asked. You looked up. A friendly looking guy was standing in front of you. Yeah, he replied despondently, looking back down again. Trying to sell some berries? He asked. Yeah, he replied again. Can I buy some? He asked. Your eyes shot up and met his. Y you actually want to buy some? Or are you just making fun of me? You asked with reservation. No, I want to help you, so can I buy some? He asked again, not moving from his spot. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, of course, he replied. So, uh, how, how does this work? You asked sheepishly. Okay, well, I want ten berries, so I'll give you ten mahi, he said, pulling ten coins out of his pocket. Oh, wow, you said excitedly. This was your first ever transaction and you were ecstatic. You took the money and put it in your pocket. Okay, here are your berries, he said happily, handing him ten berries. Thanks, he said eating them right there and then. Also, food items have an expiry, so those berries are about to expire, he said, pointing towards them. He looked down into the basket and saw that the red colour of the berries was starting to fade. Once they turn grey, you can't do anything with them, and eventually they just disappear, the male player said. Some food lasts longer, some shorter, but these berries are the shortest. Seriously, he said sadly as you watched the colour fade. <sighs> All my hard work, you thought. Anyway, thanks for the berries, he said, turning and walking away. Oh, no, no, thank you, you called out after, after him. You sat back down again and stared into your basket. Ah, oh, man, this sucks balls. What a stupid game. What time is it in the real world? I should get out of here. You swiped the holographic menu and it appeared and then you checked the time. 3 a.m.? Oh, my God, I've got school tomorrow. You were about to log out when a warning bar popped up. You must leave your character in a safe place before logging out. You cannot sleep in the open, it said. Great, where can I stay? You looked around and saw a few inns close by and decided to stay in the cheapest one for the time being. Hi, uh, how much is your cheapest room? You asked the innkeeper with the purple cursor as you entered the building. 95 mahi, she replied. You inhaled audibly, making the sound of something dying. Is there anywhere that would take me for ten mahi? You asked her. No, she replied bluntly. You sighed. Uh, can I help you? A female player's voice said from beside you. I need somewhere to stay while I log out and go back to the real world, but it's my first day here and I have ten mahi and an empty basket because all my berries expired. He said flatly, completely done with this game. She laughed. Okay, well, what if I pay for you to stay here and you can pay me back when you make some more money? But why would you do that for me? You asked suspiciously. You're very trusting. I've been in your situation before, she said with a chuckle. Even if you can't pay me back, just think that it's like paying it forward. 
If you ever do make it in this world, remember to be kind to the new players. You almost teared up. Thank you so much. She smiled and walked to the counter. I'll have your cheapest room, please, she said to the innkeeper. The exchange was made and she walked with you to the room. You put the key in the door and turned it. The room was as small as anything and just had a bed and a table. That's it. Well, I guess this is the cheapest room, hey? You said with a sigh. Here, let me give you the ten mahi at least, you added, turning to the female player. No, no, keep it for now, she replied. I work in the restaurant downstairs, so you know where to find me. You looked up above her head and took note of her username. Thank you so much again. I'll definitely repay you, you said gratefully as you entered the room and put your basket beside the bed. No problem at all, she replied. Good luck back in the real world. You smiled and closed the door, sitting on the bed before opening the menu and logging off. As you came back to reality, you sat up and sighed. Man, what a frustrating first introduction to RFO. I'm not even sure I want to go back, but I need to repay that player. You fell asleep that night, dreaming about picking berries. Yo, you look dead. What happened to you? Your best friend asked when she saw you at school the next day. Do not ask, you replied grumpily. Studying late? she asked. Yeah, something like that, you said dismissively. You weren't going to tell her that you had bought RFO and that you sucked at it. How embarrassing. You need to have some downtime, your best friend said with a cheeky grin. Come play RFO, get the gear and join me, she said with a chuckle. You sighed. Ugh, if only she knew I spent six hours picking goddamn berries in a field to get ten mahi, then still didn't have enough to stay somewhere safe that night and had to get help. She could tell you weren't in the mood for some friendly ribbing, so she just engulfed you in a hug and squeezed you. Come on, I'll buy you lunch today. As the day dragged on, you found yourself getting more and more worked up about how your first day in RFO had gone. I know I can do better than that. Maybe I'll give it another shot. The minute school was over, you raced home, making the excuse to your best friend that you just wanted to sleep. You got home and lay on the bed, putting the Nerf Gear headset on and pressing the power button on the side. That familiar white light engulfed you, and as the headgear whirred to life, all of a sudden you were back on the bed in the inn that you'd stayed at yesterday. I'm back again, you thought. A smile crept over your face. You were determined to do better this time around. You picked up your basket and went out the door and downstairs, looking for the player at the restaurant so you could tell her that you were going to try and make some more mahi today to pay her back. She wasn't there yet, but her boss, who was also a player, was there, and you asked him some questions about what kind of foods were sold well and where you could find them. He said that there were a number of wild mushrooms around in the woods and that he would buy them from you to use in the restaurant. Just to be careful of a monster out there, you don't have a weapon, so if you get attacked by one, you could get killed and have to start from scratch again, he warned. Okay, so I just run? You asked. Yes, definitely. They only chase for a while, so you only have to run for lo not long. Oh, okay, no worries, you replied. You thanked him and left the inn, heading for the city gates and the fields that lay beyond. As you neared one of the goji berry bushes, you checked your health bar. It was 40 out of 50. Not too bad. The sleep must have done you good. You grabbed a handful of berries for good measure and ate them as you headed for the forest. You entered the tree line cautiously but relaxed more when you weren't attacked immediately upon entering. You found a few white mushrooms that the item bar called white mushrooms and said that they were good for eating and worth three mahi each. You picked just a few so that you wouldn't run the risk of getting an item that might expire quickly and headed deeper into the forest. As you went, you found more and more different types of mushrooms. You picked about five of each, filling your basket as you went. There were some larger purple mushrooms that you found that were called hashi mushrooms, and the item bar said that they were worth seven mahi each. They seemed to be quite sparse, so you had a feeling that they could be a little more of a sought-after item, so you took a few extra, just in case. Just then you heard a growl and froze. A wild boar with glowing red eyes was staring you down from your right. It had a red cursor above its head. Red for danger. Got it, you thought. You turned and fled immediately. The boar gave chase, but you outran him easily and stopped when you saw that he had turned around and walked off. 
Your health bar beeped and you looked to your left. 29 out of 50? Ugh. Okay, let's eat a mushroom and see what happens, you thought. You picked out a purple hashy mushroom and hesitantly took a bite. Mm, not the most exciting flavour, but it might taste better cooked. You looked at your health bar again as you munched, and as you finished the mushroom it jumped to 41 out of 50. Oh my god, mushrooms are awesome! You decided to head back with what you had and just see what their true value was before going and collecting more. Hey, I got some mushrooms, but I don't know which ones you want, you said to the boss as you entered the restaurant. Let's see, he said leading the way to the kitchen. You picked a few of the mushrooms out of the basket and sat them on the counter for him to look at. Hmm, it's a nicer variety, he said as he looked them over. Personally, I like to cook with uh, taper mushrooms, he said, pointing to the brown mushrooms on the bench. You knew there were only four mahi. Hmm, okay, he said. What about these hashi ones? Yeah, they are good, but they go best with meat. I will take a few though, as I'm going to be cooking a little bit of meat tonight for special guests. Oh, awesome, you replied, happy that you would be able to get some more mahi than yesterday. The boss bought three white mushrooms, all five taper mushrooms and three hashi mushrooms from you and handed you the coins. Here you go on, this is uh, 50 mahi for you, he said with a smile. You nearly cried. Thank you, thank you, thank you, you squealed. Now I only need to get 35 more mahi and I can pay that player back for buying my stay here last night. Uh, but what about tonight, the boss asked. Your face fell. Oh, I didn't think of that. The boss chuckled. What if you go to the general store across the road and buy a fishing rod and go fishing by the river? The lowest fish value is about 10 mahi and everybody wants the fish. The only thing is you need to watch out for the sea snake and crocodile. You thought for a moment. Mm, I don't have much of an option, do I? He said with a sweat dropped look. I'll give it a shot and hope I don't die. The boss laughed. Well, I need the fish, so I'll buy lots. It doesn't matter what type. This gave you that push that you needed, and spurred on by the promise of more mahi, you walked across to the general store and bought a fishing pole. It was worth 30 mahi, so you were back down to 30 in savings, but it was better than the 10 that you'd started with. Down at the river, you caught a few fish straight off the bat. They were small, but they were between 10 and 17 mahi each, and you were ecstatic. You were making sure to keep an eye out for sea snakes and crocodiles, but you didn't see any so far, so you were happy. You pulled in another big colourful fish a bit later at 25 mahi and screamed with excitement. This is fantastic! If I can just get a few more fish, I have enough to pay for another night at the inn and a bit to pay the other night back to that player. You cast your line back in and waited while keeping a wary eye out for monsters. Another 20 minutes went by and your rod bowed slightly. Another one! You gasped internally, pulling the fish out of the water. It was a decent sized one at 20 mahi. Just a few more. You cast back in again and immediately the rod bowed right down, tugging on your hands. Oh, it's big. You pulled back, fighting the fish as you stepped back to pull it out of the water. Movement from the corner of your eye drew your attention and you saw a crocodile watching from some reeds nearby. No, you yelled, go away. You were still fighting the fish on your line and there was no way in hell you were abandoning it and your $30 mahi fishing pole, not to mention all the fish in your basket that you'd just caught. The crocodile started to advance slowly and you yelled out again, yanking on your fishing line to get the fish out of the water. A large trout came into view and you quickly ran forward and grabbed it, one eye on the crocodile as it started moving towards you more purposefully. No, get away from me, you yelled trying to gather your fish, basket and pole quickly. You grabbed everything and turned to run, slipping on the embankment and falling over. You looked back. The crocodile had almost reached you and had its mouth open. You screamed and lifted your leg to kick at it, but something metal shot across from your other side and wrapped around the crocodile's neck, slicing it off cleanly and making the creature burst into crystals before evaporating. What the? You yelled, your head whipping to your left to see who or what had just saved you. A cloaked figure, 
stood not too far from you with what looked like a metal whip that was retracting quickly back into a sword shape. You were awestruck. Who are you? You stammered, looking at the ominous looking figure. They were dressed in a deep navy blue cloak that covered them from head to toe with gold trimmings. The hooded part of the outfit was wide and low, covering everything except their mouth and chin. They stood silently while you just stared at them. Your eyes travelled their form before you looked up above their head for their name. Butterfly. <gasps> oh my god, you're Butterfly? You gasped. I heard you're the top player. Why are you on level one? Are you hurt? Their medium voice asked softly. Uh, no, you prevented a serious injury though, you said with a nervous laugh. You know, like my life being taken, you laughed hollowly again. Pretty serious. Butterfly didn't respond. You sighed dejectedly. Anyway, uh, thank you, you said sadly. Will you be okay from here? Butterfly asked, still keeping his distance. Yeah, I think so, you replied, getting up and packing the fish that had spilled out of your basket back in again. He didn't say anything more, but just turned and disappeared back into the woods nearby. Oh my god, I just met Butterfly, you thought. You will never guess who just saved me from a crocodile, you said excitedly as you entered the restaurant. Who? the boss asked. Butterfly! Oh, he's here already, the boss said in a very calm tone. You know him? you asked excitedly. Yes, well, not personally, but I've had dealings with him. Nice guy, the boss said, continuing his work. He's flippin' amazing. So cool, you fangirled. He just casually decapitated a crocodile in front of me with this, like, you snaked your arm around, bendy thing that turns back into a sword? It's called a chen whip sword, the boss replied. It requires a great deal of skill to use and master, and he's extremely talented with it. You got that right, he replied with a sigh. So, what do you know about him? Ah, you've fallen for him too, I see, the boss laughed. No, I, I just think he's cool, that's all, he replied defensively. The boss laughed. Okay, show me the fish that you got and then we can chat about butterfly. You walked over to the counter and placed your basket there, letting the boss look through your collection. Okay, so he started the game before me and the first time I heard his name he was... Uh, level 15, when the rest of us were still only on level 5, the boss said with a laugh. So, how did he get so high in the game so quick? You asked curiously. I am not sure, but I'm pretty sure it's because he went searching for a monster and, and beat them to level up quickly. Sounds brave, you thought. The boss continued. Legend has it that he has found a hidden boss and beat him to get the cloak he wears. No one else has that type of cloak. Cool, you said with sparkling eyes. What is he? Like, you know how I'm trying to become a merchant? Is he like a fighter or something? Swordsman, the boss replied. And although it's rude to ask another player's level, I'm pretty sure he's close to a level 80 now. To unlock a chain whip sword, you need to be above level 50. Whoa, he breathed, getting more and more excited about this player. So what's he like, personality-wise? Well, he's nice, but he's very quiet. He's a solo player, never joined a guild, singles monster, bit of a lone wolf, but will team with people if a particularly hard boss needs to be taken care of. Okay, none of that made sense, you deadpanned. The boss laughed. Okay, he keeps to himself, hasn't joined a guild, which is like a team of people that work together, is strong enough to take down monsters on his own, but does help other people. Ah, uh, gotcha, he said with a thumbs up. He sounds amazing. He was nice enough to save my ass from a crocodile earlier, so that should say something. Yeah... Some people love him, others are a bit jealous, just about nonsense, saying he thinks he's better than everyone else, but that's why he doesn't talk to people or join a guild. 
Well, I think I'm in the love him group, you said with a laugh. I'd love to meet him again and chat. He sounds intriguing. Well, if you hang around long enough, he'll be here tonight. He's one of the special guests I'm cooking dinner for. Seriously? You gasped. Yeah, seriously, the boss chuckled. There's a group of strong player who meet here to discuss how to take down monsters on a higher level. They like to meet on lower level because it can relax a little bit and get food and accommodation is cheaper here. Mm, guess I'll be hanging around then, you said enthusiastically. After being paid for the fish, you looked at your account. 144 mahi! So if I pay for another night here, that's 95 mahi gone, leaving me 49 mahi, which I need to use to pay that player back. Ugh, I still need another 46 mahi to make up to the 95 mahi to pay her back. You sighed. It's a tough start to the game, but today's been better. You walked to the reception desk at the inn and paid for another night, then you went back to the restaurant. Hey boss, when's that player who helped me yesterday back on again? You asked him. Oh, she was here earlier. When you were out fishing, she says she wouldn't be online later because she has to study. Uh, yeah, actually, I should probably be doing the same thing to be honest. You replied sheepishly. Okay, that's good. It gives me more time to get another 46 mahi to pay her back. Do you want to earn some mahi, some more mahi towards the 46 goal by working for me tonight? The boss asked, all you need to do is take people's orders and run food and drink to them. You'll have a chance to talk to Butterfly too, he said with a sly wink. As if I would take this job just to talk to him, you scoffed with hands on hips. <laughs> okay, you got me. Yeah, I need that as a reason to get closer to him. Thanks, I'll take it. The boss laughed. Okay, <laughs> we start dinner 5pm. You have about one hour so before we start. Righto, you replied with a salute. I'll be back. You left and got the key to your room, putting your prized basket and fishing rod beside the bed. Your health bar had beeped at you a few times while you were talking to the boss, but you just ignored it. It was back down to 26 out of 50. Ugh, guess I better go and pick some berries or something. You left and went to the fields again, picking some berries and making your way closer to the tree line to sneak a few mushrooms. You managed to eat a few, but the taste wasn't really doing it for you, but you managed to get your health bar back up to 32 out of 50. Better than zero, you thought. You checked the game clock and saw that it was 4.45. Ooh, better get ready for work, you thought. This is the waitress's outfit. You asked the boss, looking down at your frilly get-up. Yeah, the boss said as he busied himself around the kitchen. What? Something wrong with it? Well, uh, it's just not, uh, it's very short. It's not what I'm used to. Y you look fine, he replied, waving his hand dismissively as he pre-chopped vegetables and meat for the night. Okay, so what time does Butterfly and the other strong players get in? The boss chuckled. Most people ask how much they're going to get paid for working, not about the customers for the night. You blushed. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. He smirked. 7pm game time and 5 mahi an hour. Cool, you said, straightening your apron. Hey, customers are here. Go greet and see, the boss said, pointing with his knife out the kitchen door. Oh, wait, what's this restaurant's name? Don Restaurant, the boss replied. <laughs> Original, you said sarcastically with a chuckle. You greeted the customers and led them to a table and seated them, asking if they wanted anything to drink first while they looked through the menu. At first you were a little nervous, but taking orders and carrying food out to people became easier as the night progressed, and you relaxed into your job, smiling and chatting with everyone to ensure that they had a good time. You glanced to your right when you saw new customers had entered and called out a warm welcome to them. Welcome to Dawn Restra- You froze. Behind four highly weapon-equipped guys, followed Butterfly. We need a table away from other customers. The lead guy said lowly from behind a black, half-faced mask as it covered his nose and mouth. Oh, certainly, you said quickly, turning and leading them to a five-top round table near the back of the restaurant. 
The boss is expecting you. I believe he has a special meal arranged for you all. You said politely with a bow. Good. The leader replied. I like a polite girl who aims to please. You're ticking all my boxes right now. Said as his grey eyes watched you intently. Look after us well and I'll make sure you are handsomely rewarded. You were taken aback by his statement and a defiant side swelled within you. Don't talk to me like that. I'm not some pushover. Do you know who I am? The leader said as he towered over you. No, and I don't care, you shot back, crossing your arms across your chest and scowling up at him. He scoffed a little beneath his mask. You know what? Maybe I do like a little bit of defiance. You ignored him and turned your attention to the other guys that had sat down. Pardon my rudeness in not attending to your needs earlier. What can I get for you all to drink? You asked sweetly with a bright smile. The guys each gave you a drink name and you turned and walked off again, completely ignoring the flirtatious guy with the mask on who thought he was Kingpin. Man, what the heck is up with the dude in the mask? You huffed as you walked up to the boss. Which one? He asked, looking up and out the door. The guy with Butterfly and the others, you said with a head jerk in the direction of the player that you were talking about. You looked out the door and squinted to see the player's name that was illuminated above his head. Uh, Swiftkill, you said. His name is Swiftkill. Oh, him, the boss replied with a smirk. You mean to tell me your panties haven't dropped at his name? Excuse me, you scoffed. Why would my panties be dropping for that overinflated ego? He is good with the ladies, the boss replied with a shrug. All of the girls think he's sexy. Well, I don't. He's rude and condescending, you snorted. Well, anyway, it's nice to know they're here now. I start their dinner. Let them know their food will be out in about uh, 20 minutes. Oh, and give them this bread for entree, the boss said, pointing his knife at the basket of bread nearby. Okay, you replied, picking it up and heading over to the bar to get the drinks before heading back to the table. Thanks, baby. Swift Kill said in a silky smooth voice as you put the bread down on the table. You ignored him and handed the drinks out to the other players, giving them a sweet smile as you did. You had purposefully forgotten Swiftkill's drink and left as soon as you had handed out the other beverages. This hotshot needed to be taught a lesson. He seemed amused that you had forgotten his drink and when you came back to refill some of the other players he grabbed you by the waist. You're cute. He said lowly. I think I like the way you play. Turn my hair on. I'll take good care of you. Let go of me, you growled yanking yourself away and trying to escape him, but he held on and stood up. Come, come now. No need to fight me. He said lowly with mischief in his eyes. I'm just doing what's best for you. You were about to start throwing punches when Butterfly stood up and reached across the table and grabbed Swiftkill's wrist. Let her go. Now, he said lowly. Oh, you want a jewel, Butterfly boy? Swift kill shot angrily. Fight me if you want her. I don't want her. I want you to leave her alone, he responded. I'll leave her alone if you beat me in a duel. Swift kill replied coolly. Outside, right now. Let's go. Swift kill let go of you and turned to face Butterfly. Fine, but it's going to be your loss. Butterfly replied casually as he walked past Swiftkill and out the door. Hey, um, sorry, you don't need to fight him because of me. I'm fine. I can hold my own, you said quickly to Butterfly as he passed you. I don't like how he's treating you. I'll teach him a lesson, Butterfly replied, not looking at you. Your heart fluttered slightly. What a gentleman. Swiftkill followed Butterfly outside and they walked to a cleared area. A few people that were still outside at night all stopped to watch the pending duel. You ready to step down from the number one player spot? Swiftkill asked Butterfly loudly as he swiped the menu open on his holographic screen, inviting Butterfly to a duel. Butterfly didn't even honor Swiftkill with a, res with a response, but just reached out and pressed the accept button on the screen. Prepare to die. 
Swiftkill called menacingly as he pulled out two small daggers. Oh, he's a dual wielder, a girl from nearby said. What's that? You asked, looking at her. It means he uses two attack weapons at the same time. That's so cool. She sighed dreamily. Oh, found the panty dropper, you thought with an eye roll. You looked back at Butterfly, who was just standing still, sword in hand and a s small circular shield in the other. He didn't look like he was ready for a fight at all. He bent forward slightly, his footing shifting, then suddenly shot forwards and disappeared, reappearing behind Swiftkill and straightening as his whip retracted back to a sword shape. What the? he whispered. Suddenly a big red, defeated sign appeared above Swift Swiftkill's head and he burst into a million crystals and evaporated. Side note, he did not die, he just gets sent back to the last save spot in the game, which is probably back in his inn or something. Everyone watching was shocked. Whisk whispers could be heard throughout the crowd. Some people were awestruck, some disappointed that they didn't get to see a flashy fight, while others were calling Butterfly a cheater. You were definitely in the awestruck category. How the heck did he move so fast? Butterfly turned and walked back to the restaurant, ignoring comments and questions as he headed back inside. As he neared you and walked past you, you hesitantly reached out and wrapped your fingers around his arm. He stopped and turned his still hood-covered head slightly towards you to show that he ha you had his attention. Uh, I'm sorry you had to do that because of me, you said softly. He has been looking for a reason to fight me, On, and he knew treating a woman disrespectfully would get to me, Butterfly said calmly. You, you know my name? My online name? You said, surprised. I've met you twice now. I do take note of these things, he said before turning his head away. Anyway, no need to thank me. I didn't do anything. You didn't know how to respond to that, so you just let him go and whispered a, well, you did help me, so thank you, as he walked back inside. The rest of the night, you found it hard to concentrate on serving people because you kept sneaking glances at Butterfly. He was intriguing you more and more. He seemed kind, but somewhat reserved. Was it arrogance or shyness? You were leaning more towards the shyness. At the end of your shift, you handed the apron back to the boss and collected your $25 of mahi. Awesome! It's not much more, but it's something. Maybe I can do a few more shifts over the next few days and get some more income that way, you thought. You were so deep in thought as you climbed the stairs to the accommodation and to your room that you didn't notice a sudden presence behind you. Stop, a voice said lowly in your ear, and you jumped violently and screamed. The person quickly covered your mouth from behind and you struggled to get free, spinning on your heels to see who it was. Butterfly? The top player had a firm grip on your wrist as they kept their head down. Are you a spy? Answer my question. M me You gasped. No way! You're following me, Butterfly replied. No, I'm not. I'm staying here because it's the cheapest inn and I have no money. Well, barely enough to get by, he replied defensively. Why were you watching me all night? He asked, slowly raising his head as he let your wrist go. I, uh... You were super flustered at being caught sneaking peeks at this intriguing character. How are you going to explain that you thought he was cool and you just couldn't keep your eyes off him? Um, I... I just think you're really cool and... Don't say it yet. I couldn't keep my eyes off you. God damn it. What did I just say? Butterfly froze, and his head jerked slightly in surprise. He slowly pushed his hood off and looked at you. Damn, he was handsome. Sure, it probably wasn't what he looked like in real life, but he had jet black hair, half spiked, and deep navy blue eyes. You think I'm cool? He asked, his steadfast gaze locking you in place. Uh, y yeah? You replied, fiddling with your hands as you looked down. There was silence. You took a deep breath in and looked up to say something else, but he'd completely vanished. You looked around wildly, wondering where he'd gone. From behind one of the room doors, Butterfly stood panting, clutching his chest. Sh she thinks I'm cool? He gasped nervously internally. If she knew who I was in real life, she de definitely wouldn't think I'm cool. But here, I, I can be whoever I want to be. Here, I don't need to be scared or shy. In this world, the anxiety flies away, just like a butterfly. Unable to see where the mysterious butterfly had gone, 
You went to your room and lay down on the bed to log out. As you returned to reality, you looked at the time. 4.05 a.m., you groaned. Man, I'm going to be so wasted tomorrow. Again. And true to form, you were. You entered the classroom like a zombie and slumped down in your chair, your forehead hitting the desk with a solid thud. Whoa there, your best friend laughed. You need to stop studying so hard. Mm, you groaned in response. I studied a bit, and then I played RFO, your bestie said proudly. Your interest peaked. What level are you now? You asked without thinking. Level 6, she replied enthusiastically. When I get to level 10, I want to become a beast tamer. There are some really cute foxes on level 3, and I want one as my pet. Level 3, huh? I haven't been past... You stopped. Her eyes widened. No, no, no I, I was meaning when I played on your account, I never went past the gates on the main city thing, you said, trying to make it sound like you didn't really know anything about the game. She settled and let out a sharp exhale. Man, I thought you were going to tell me you'd actually bought the game and are playing it. I almost died. You laughed hollowly. Yeah, nah, haven't got it, you lied. There are a few people in class who play. Did you know? She added. Who? You asked. Just then the teacher walked in and you were forced to terminate the conversation. I'd love to know who else plays and what they are. Imagine if I met them in game, you thought. Or imagine if I met Butterfly and he was in my class. Your heavy lidded eyes scanned the classroom. <laughs> nah, no one here could be Butterfly. You laughed internally. That night you were back in RFO again determined to get the last 21 mahi to pay the player back. You got up off the bed and grabbed your basket, walking out the door and heading downstairs to go to the woods to get some more mushrooms. As you left the inn, your health bar beeped again. It had dropped below 25 out of 50 and the colour of the bar had gone from green to orange. Ugh, I need to fuel up a bit, you thought. You sighed as you went to the furthest end of the field, scanning the ground for mushrooms. You were so intent on what you were looking at that you didn't see a viper snake drop from a branch. Before you walked within strike range of the snake, it was swiftly decapitated by a chain whipsword. You gasped when the evaporating crystals of the defeated creature caught your eye and you turned around to see who had killed the snake. You shouldn't be out here with your health bar so low, Butterfly said as he approached you. He had his hood on again. I don't really have a choice. I don't have any money to spare for food and I'm only just getting by as it is, he replied flatly. Here, Butterfly said, reaching into his pocket and handing you a green potion. What is it? you asked, taking the potion from him. It's called an elixir. It will revive your health bar and permanently raise your health by 50%. So you'll go from 50 to 75, putting another 25, which is half of 50, onto your 50 to make it 75 he said in a soft, casual tone. Are you sure I can have this? But what about you? Don't you need it? Wait, 50%? Wouldn't it be better to use it on someone like yourself that has a higher health bar? And how much do I owe you? Man, I'm going to be picking food forever to pay people back, you sighed. Um, you talk a lot and no charge. I don't need it, he replied, looking down. Ah, uh, okay, you replied, tapping your finger on the bottle. A little icon popped up that described everything Butterfly had just said and had two options, drink or discard. You pressed drink and the bottle lid opened, allowing you to raise it to your lips and swallow the sweet nectar down. Wow, that was actually yummy, you said with surprise. You looked at your health bar. It was refilling rapidly and the bar increased to 75 as the top limit instead of 50. Why are you helping me though, you asked the mysterious player. Because you're nice, he said softly, and I feel I can trust you. I can't trust a lot of people in this game, but you're different. You were surprised at first, but then nodded. Yeah, well, I guess I don't pose a threat to you, and there would be a lot of people challenging you for your title, you replied with a smile. Well, it's nice. You've helped me twice now, though. I feel bad, but I can't help you back because I'm only a level one nothing. What do you want to be? He asked as he pushed his hood off, revealing his face to you. I, uh, I want to be a merchant, you said, your eyes travelling his face. But so far, all I've succeeded in doing is losing health and picking up useless foods. I have been getting better though. I've only been playing for like three days. 
You really do talk a lot, he said with a slight smile. I'm sorry, I just have no one in the real world to talk to about this. I, I kind of don't want anyone in my real life to know that I play this game. Same here, he said. Then he looked down sadly. If you knew me in real life, you'd definitely think I wasn't cool. Well, if you knew me in real life, you'd probably think I was just as stupid as I am in this game. So, yeah, nothing to hide, really. You laughed with embarrassment as you scratched the back of your head. I don't think you're stupid at all, Butterfly said, looking back across to you curiously. Does she have insecurities like me? He wondered. Oh, I am. Trust me. If I wasn't stupid, I'd have figured out how to at least get some points and money in this game, he replied with a laugh. You didn't attend the tutorial at the beginning of the game? Butterfly asked with a slight head tilt. Your heart sank. What tutorial? The one where they give you money and basic equipment to get by. Everyone goes to the tutorial place on the first day. You let your head flop forwards and you groaned. Uh, are you serious? Have you been playing without any tutorial help? He asked. You just nodded with your head down. Um, well, I'm impressed that you're still alive then, he said, trying to be nice. I can help you a bit. I've been playing ever since the game started, so... I'd really appreciate it, you said quickly, looking up at him with pleading eyes. Okay, well, first of all you need to get some experience points, or EXP, and some more money. So let's farm some rats, he said, like he'd done it many times before. A uh, butterfly? What's experience points and farming? And also, I want to be a merchant. I don't want a rat farm. What the heck? You laughed. Oh, sorry, I forgot you're still new. You don't know gaming terms, do you? Nope, sorry, you'll have to start at the ground and work your way up with me, you said with an embarrassed laugh. God, Yin, how stupid can you make yourself look in front of the number one player in this game? Right, Butterfly said getting a serious look on his face. Experience points are earned when you repeat an action over and over. In this case, it's going to be hunting rats, or farming, as it's called in the game. Experience points help you level up. You nodded. Okay, kind of get it, but not, but please continue. He raised an eyebrow, but continued. So farming just means hunting. We're gonna kill rats. But I don't have any weapons. You have hands, don't you? Well, yeah, wait, do I have to strangle them? No, punch. Punch? Yeah. I'm punching rats for experience points. Yes, he said flatly. But don't worry, I'll tank them and take their aggro, then you can attack them. Um, sorry you lost me, he said with a deadpan expression. Where did you get lost? he asked patiently. Okay, I'll be honest, the minute I stepped into this game, you replied. Uh, I don't know how to help you with that one, he said innocently, looking slightly defeated. Okay, no, don't worry, just go back to the part about German tanks and aggro the puppet off Sesame Street. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, what? T tank and aggro, you simplified. Oh, okay, tanking is where I'll take the attack. I'll be the decoy to draw the monster or rat's attention and keep it focused on me and allow you to attack it. That's the aggro part. Won't you get hurt though? You asked quizzically. Butterfly laughed. No, I'll be fine. Okay, let's give it a try then, you said, eyeing him suspiciously. Where are the rats? They'll come. They're more likely to be out in the field, so let's go there, he said, turning to lead the way out of the woods. You followed him out onto the field and then over to a patch of longer grass. Suddenly he lurched back as if something had jumped at him. He turned to face you with a rat latched onto his arm, its sharp teeth digging into his wrist. You screamed. It's okay on, calm down and punch it, he said calmly. Punch it? You screeched. Yes, just punch it. I've got it covered, I'm taking its aggro, he said calmly once again. You took a deep breath in and shut your eyes, balling your fist up and throwing a punch in the direction of where you thought his arm and the rat would be. You missed, but you felt the back of your hand graze the rat's fur on its back as you stumbled past Butterfly with the momentum of your punch. You let out another scream. I touched it! You opened your eyes and spun around to face Butterfly and the rat and screamed again when you saw he had two other rats latched onto his leg now. They're gonna eat you alive! You wailed. 
Butterfly laughed. It was the most adorable laugh he'd ever heard. You froze and looked at him. He was smiling. I'm okay, On. Go on, punch them. You can do it. Spurred on by his calmness, he walked up and gingerly punched the rat on his arm. You recoiled in fright. Oh my god, I hit it! He squealed. Harder, On, he called. Punch harder! You frowned in concentration and took another step forward, punching harder this time. It worked and the rat exploded into a million crystals. While it did so, a little menu bar popped up. Rat defeated. Experience points? Three. Mahi? Three. <gasps> I did it! You cheered. Well done, Butterfly praised. Now punch these two, he said, presenting his leg that was still being chewed on by the other two rats. You punched one and then the other, each rat giving you another three experience points and three mahi. Oh, what's this? You asked, pointing to a little information icon above the second rat that you had punched. What's items dropped? One rat fur? You now have rat fur, Butterfly said happily. Yeah, but what do I do with it? You asked flatly, not seeing the reason for the excitement. Well, you can sell it and get more mahi, or you can collect them, save them up and have something like a coat or other clothing item made out of them, he said. Oh, okay, I might just save them for now, you muttered. Want to keep grinding? Butterfly asked innocently. Your face flushed. G grinding? L l like? You paused. Your mind imagining the two of you dirty dancing up against each other, your hips grinding into each other. Uh, I... Oh, grinding is where you keep doing a repeat action over and over, Butterfly said quickly. In this case, it would be punching rats. P punching... Oh, oh my god, of course, you said with relief. I thought you... Oh, never mind, he added quickly. He tilted his head curiously as you shook your own head. Suddenly you felt a slight pain in your le leg and you looked down. There was a rat attached to your ankle, its sharp teeth embedded into your VR flesh. <gasps> Butterfly! You shrieked, shaking your leg and jumping around. On, it's okay, he said with his hands outstretched defensively. You can defeat it, just punch it. It's biting me! It hurts! Why does it hurt? This is a game! You screamed as you ran around in a circle, flapping your leg occasionally. On, just calm down and punch it. Quickly before it depletes your health, he urged, trying to keep out of your way as he sprinted erratically around, hopping and kicking wildly. Butterfly! You cried as you ran towards him. On! On! he called, trying to get your attention, but you were panic stricken. You were so busy looking down that you bowled straight into him, the two of you hitting the ground with a thud. Butterfly managed to grab you at the last minute and pulled you against himself to cushion your fall, and you felt his warm arms envelop you as you toppled over. Butterfly kicked at the rat that was attached to your leg as his back hit the ground and it burst into a million crystals before evaporating. The pain disappeared immediately and you opened your eyes, looking deeply into his as the glittering crystals of the defeated rat floated past. You felt like you knew this person. There was just something about Butterfly that felt familiar. Butterfly? You asked softly as you still lay atop of him. Do I know you in real life? I feel something familiar with you. He blushed deeply and averted his eyes as he sat up, still holding you gently. Um, no, I don't think so, and I mean no offence when I say this, but I wouldn't want you to know me in real life, because I'm not who you think I am. What do you mean by that? You asked with confusion, as he gently let go of you. I'm, I'm not cool in real life, he said sadly as he looked down. In this game, I feel like I can be the best version of myself. I'm strong, confident in my qu skills, he corrected quickly, hoping you didn't notice his slip. And no one would believe that I play this game anyway, even if I did say something. Well, I'm a bit the same, as far as the playing this game part goes. No one would believe I play this game, he said with a laugh. Do you go to school? Which school do you go to? Um, on if it's okay, let's not talk about the real world when we're here. I like the escape he said softly, still looking away slightly. Oh, yeah, of course. Sorry, butterfly, he said. He turned and looked back at you. Your face is pretty close together still. You blushed and pulled back shyly. Gosh, he's adorable, isn't he? You thought. Oh, I just remembered, you said quickly, changing the subject. Why the heck do I feel pain here? Why can I taste food? 
Why can I feel the texture of items? I'm so confused. That's because it's a full dive system, Butterfly said, getting up and helping you up as well. It links into your brain and limbic system, so you can experience all your senses here. That's why this game is so popular. It's at the frontier of gaming. Wow. Okay, but it's not real, right? Like, I'm not going to have a rat hickey on my leg tomorrow at school, am I? He chuckled softly. No, it's just a sensation. It's not real. Thank God, you said gratefully. So, do you want to keep grinding? He asked, rubbing the back of his head shyly. Yes, please, he replied. By the end of the next four hours, you had successfully punched about 144 rats and earned yourself 432 mahi, as well as a heap more rat furs. I can't believe how much we grinded. Gra ground? What word do you use? You said with excitement, followed by confusion, as you and Butterfly finished up for the day. Farmed, he said with a smile. Grinding and farmed are kind of the same thing. Farm just sounds more appropriate in this sentence. Oh, right, I see, you said happily. Well, I think I'd better head back to the inn and log off. It's... You swiped the holographic menu down to see the real world time and made the silent scream face. It's 5.30am, you said in a horror-stricken voice as your dead eyes met butterflies. Oh, is that the time, he said. I need to go too. Um, on... W would you mind if we shared a room at the inn? I'll pay. You looked at him dubiously. What do you mean? You asked. Well, um, we both stay in the same room when we log out. Our avatars or characters will stay together while we're offline in the real world. Then the only reason I suggested it is that you can save your hard-earned mahi, he said shyly. Yeah, that's, that's fine, Butterfly. I trust that you wouldn't do anything to my character while I'm gone, he said with a smile. And same goes for me, On, he replied softly. You both went back to the inn and bought a room that was about 120 mahi. Why didn't you just get the cheapest room? You asked as you followed him up the stairs. I thought you deserved the upgrade, he said, not looking back at you. Well, here it is, he said as he reached for the room door, putting the key in and turning the door open. Oh wow, you said. This is nice, he said as he stood back and ushered you in first. It will do, he said. You walked over to the bed and sat down. Butterfly stretched and unbuttoned his coat, taking it off and hanging it up on the coat rack that was behind the door. You could feel your heartbeat increasing. This felt kind of intimate. He turned and walked over to where you were sitting on the bed and walked around the other side and then lay down and rested his head on the pillow. Lie down on, he said gently as he patted the bed beside him. You swallowed and lay down gingerly, rolling on your side to face him. He was on his back and his arms were up above his head and you studied his side profile before he rolled his head to the side to look at you, his deep navy blue eyes taking you in. Th thanks for today, he said softly with a small smile. You're welcome, On, he replied. See you tomorrow? Yes, I'll be back on around 4pm real time, you said happily. Okay, I'll see you then, he said with a smile. Bye. Bye, butterfly, he said softly as he swiped your menu open watching as he did the same. You clicked log off and you saw his form evaporate as yours did at the same time. All of a sudden you were back in your room, lying on your bed. You just lay there for a bit thinking about everything that had happened. Man, I really like this butterfly guy, you thought. Okay, listen, if you come to school looking like death again, I'm gonna murder you to put you out of your misery, your best friend said upon seeing you slumped er unceremoniously in your chair hair slightly wild with killer bags under your eyes. Please, you begged. Please just shoot me. After lunch, she promised. I'll shoot you after you get your last meal. Lunchtime came and you dragged yourself to the cafeteria and sat down in the booth table. I'll get you a coffee, your best friend said as she hopped up. Bless you, kind soul, you mumbled with tears in your eyes. As she disappeared off to get you a coffee, Mirio and his two best friends walked past. Yin! Mirio yelled when he saw your almost corpse-like state. You look terrible! Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm just dying, he replied flatly. Nijiri and Tamaki gave you a sympathetic look. The saviour is here! You heard your best friend call as she returned from her coffee run. Oh, thank goodness, Mirio replied happily. I was starting to worry about Yin here. 
She's good, she just needs to be shot, that's all, your best friend replied casually. He took a sip of the coffee and nearly wept at how wonderful it tasted. Oh, Mario said suddenly, after everyone had spent enough time watching you pull all kinds of orgasmic faces from sipping the delicious latte-coloured nectar. Bestie, he said, addressing your best friend, I bought our RFO. You nearly snorted the coffee out your nose and quickly covered your face and looked away as you choked pitifully on the liquid. You did, your best friend replied, eyeing your strange reaction from where she sat across from you. Yeah, it's amazing, he said, sliding into the booth next to your best friend. Tamaki sat down gingerly beside him as Mirio patted the seat to invite the shy boy to sit, and Nadiri slid in next to you, rubbing your back to help you regain your composure from inhaling the coffee. How long have you been on? your best friend asked Mirio. Oh, about a week now. I'm level five, he said proudly. You had just taken another sip of coffee and almost spat it again. Y Yin, are, are you okay? Tamaki's soft, concerned voice asked upon seeing you choke for the second time in just a few minutes. You nodded and waved your hand dismissively to show that he shouldn't be worried at all. He just nodded and looked down at the table, his lips quivering nervously. Oh, such a sweet, shy boy, you gushed internally, still looking at Tamaki. As Mirio and your best friend discussed different things about RFO, you felt more and more dejected. They seemed to just find the game easy and fun. Why has everything been so hard for me? Maybe I should just give up, you thought as a sad look crossed your face. No, but I want to see Butterfly again. I want to be a combat mage, Mirio said. You were immediately brought back to the present conversation. Oh wow, that's so cool, your best friend commented. We should meet up in the game tonight. Okay, note to self, avoid any beast tamers and combat mages in the future, you noted mentally. Tamaki, Nijiri, you two should join up as well. We could all play, Mirio said enthusiastically. Tamaki's soul nearly left his body. Nijiri laughed. Gosh, can you imagine me playing Rapid Fate? I'd be terrible. You can't be worse than me, you sighed internally. I bet Tamaki would be amazing at it, Mirio said excitedly. I can see you being a good gamer for some reason, he said, turning to the shy boy beside him. Tamaki hung his head, the tips of his ears going bright red. Uh, 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 I don't know, he whispered. You won't know unless you try, Mirio said encouragingly. What would I be? Tamaki whispered again, his head still lowered. Hmm... I don't know, Mirio replied, thinking hard. Your best friend, Nigeria and Mirio all discussed different things about Tamaki that he'd be good at, finally settling on Butterfly Tamer as a new class that they had made up, which was supposedly a high level of Beast Tamer. I'm pretty sure that class doesn't even exist on any gaming platform, you thought. Hey, wait, um, sorry, I'm a little slow today, but why Butterfly Tamer and not some other animal, you asked. Because Tamaki loves butterflies, that's why, Nijiri replied. Your eyes widened. Do you like butterflies, Tamaki? You asked him as his soft eyes slowly looked up at you. He nodded. Just the mention of butterflies was enough to bring him out of his shell a bit. Butterfly. Butterfly? No, surely not, you thought as you scanned his pretty face. Um, hey, the... You stopped. You were about to say... There's a player in RFO named Butterfly, but then you remembered that you weren't supposed to know anything about RFO, so you just bit your tongue. Everyone was looking at you. Suddenly you felt embarrassed and you blushed heavily. Oh, s sorry, d don't mind me. I'm tired. Continue your conversation, you said quickly, taking another sip of coffee so that you had your mouth full and wouldn't be able to answer any potential questions. Slowly, Mirio and your best friend went back to discussing the game and you sighed with relief internally. After school, you raced home to see Butterfly again. I mean, play RFO again. You lay down on your bed and placed the nerve gear on your head, smiling as you logged in. As your eyes slowly opened, you focused on Butterfly's empty avatar lying beside you. You had logged out when you were lying on your side yesterday and you smiled again. He looked so peaceful sleeping there beside you. You studied his face for a while before becoming curious to see if you could feel what his skin felt like. Gingerly, you reached a hand out and poked his cheek gently. Soft, you thought. You touched him again with the tips of your fingers, letting them trace gently from his cheekbone to his ear. I can even feel warmth, you thought. Just then he woke up and you jumped violently, quickly ripping your hand away. He looked across at you. 
Hi, On, he said with a smile. Then his face fell as concern took over. Are you okay? You look a little red in the face. Oh, no, 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 I'm fine, he said quickly, freaking out that he may have felt you touching him. Want to farm some harder monsters today? He asked hopefully. Oh, sure, he said, quickly sitting up, realising that he hadn't felt you at all. We'll go into the forest today, but first, would you like to buy a dagger to use? It could come in handy, he asked as he sat up as well. Um, okay, and also I need to pay that nice player back who works downstairs too, you said. I definitely have enough money now. I'm glad, he replied, getting off the bed and putting his cloak on before flicking the wide hood up and over his head. Let's go. You smiled and followed him out of the room. Butterfly opened the door to the restaurant downstairs and let you in first before following and standing off to the side to wait for you to talk to the player who had lent you mahi for the first night's stay. Thankfully, she was there. You paid her the 95 mahi and thanked her profusely for her kindness. She was grateful you repaid her, but she kept glancing over your shoulder at the cloaked figure by the door. Hey, is that Butterfly? She asked, jerking her head in a small upwards motion in his direction. Yeah, it is, he said with a smile, not looking over your shoulder. Oh, he's so cool. Do you two know each other? She asked. Uh, no, not in real life. I met him a few days ago. He's helping me get a handle on this game. Oh, you're so lucky, she whispered. I'm a huge fan of his. I've seen him fight before and he's so flippant amazing. Like, I just can't. I've only ever seen one fight of his and I didn't even see him move. It was that quick, he replied. Right? She hissed in awe. Oh, what I wouldn't let his character do to mine, she said suggestively with a slight groan. You could feel your cheeks heating up. Oh, what do you mean? You do know that you can get it on in RFO, she said plainly as she looked back at you. You can take your clothes off and get to touching and stuff. Uh, y yeah, but you can't like, uh, you know, uh, you did some interpretive hand signals. Do that, can you? She gave you a sly smirk. You want to make a bet that you can't? Oh my god, you gasped. VR sex is possible? Of course it's possible, she laughed. I don't know if it would feel the same as in real life, though. Well, I'm not planning on doing any of that anyway, so... She smirked again. Mm-hmm, sure. You gave her a look and turned away. Anyway, thank you again, you said quickly as you walked away. Use protection, she yelled to you as you headed back to Butterfly. You went bright red. What did she mean by use protection? He asked innocently from beneath his hood as you approached him. She meant buy protective gear, you blurted out with embarrassment. Oh, that's not necessary, On. You have me. I'll protect you, he said calmly. Oh, God bless his innocence, you thought. Oh, thanks, Butterfly, you replied quickly as you grabbed his wrist and led him out of the restaurant, face still glowing red from embarrassment. Okay, we need a small dagger. Butterfly said as he took the lead and dragged you with him, your hands still wrapped around his wrist. He took you to the closest blacksmith's store and entered. The owner of the store had a green cursor above his head so you knew he was a fellow player. Sir, Butterfly addressed the blacksmith, we need one of your daggers. Nothing flashy, just lightweight, easy to use and store. Certainly, Butterfly, the ba blacksmith replied, walking around from his bench and taking the hooded top player to a dagger cabinet. You let the two boys discuss daggers while you looked around the shop. Whoa, this is really cool, you thought, looking at all the different types of knives, swords, chains and other weapons. Do you own this shop? You asked the blacksmith as he picked a dagger out of the cabinet and handed it to Butterfly to test. Yes, I do. I make all the items here myself, he replied proudly. That's really cool, you told him. You're a blacksmith, right? How do you become a blacksmith? Well... I started as a merchant and changed classes when I had gained enough experience, he replied. You need to be level 10 to change classes. You started as a merchant? You asked excitedly, stepping out of the way as Butterfly tried different moves with the dagger. Here on, try this dagger. Tell me if it's comfortable and light enough for you to use, Butterfly said to you as he held the dagger out to you. Uh, okay, you said, taking it awkwardly in hand and waving it around like you were waving a flag. The blacksmith and butterfly just stared at you. You looked at each of them before doing a few tentative fencing type lunges with the dagger out the front. 
ugh, kill me now. I have no idea what I'm doing. What I do know is I'm making an absolute fool of myself in front of two very capable people, you thought. The two perplexed spectators continued to watch you as you waved the dagger around like a gymnast with a ribbon. Yeah, this is fine, you finally said nonchalantly as you handed the dagger back to Butterfly. Okay, he replied, taking the dagger while watching you dubiously from under his hood. Sir, we'll take this one, he said, turning to the blacksmith who was still quite concerned and worried about you in particular handling the dagger. As long as you're teaching her, Butterfly, I have no concerns, he said, eyeing you as he took the dagger back over to the counter and scanned it. That will be 90 mahi for the dagger. I've got it, you said excitedly, pulling your arm out to stop Butterfly, who was about to pay for it. You swiped your menu open and typed in the amount of mahi you wished to withdraw and pulled a small pouch of coins out from what seemed like your armpit. Where the heck did they come from? You thought as you handed the mahi over. You bent your head back down and raised your arm, looking to see where that pouch had come from. Uh, miss? The blacksmith asked after he cleared his throat. You looked back at him. Yes? Oh, dagger. Yes, thank you, you said quickly, taking it from him and holding onto it awkwardly. The blacksmith just looked so done by now, and you and Butterfly left the shop, much to his relief. What a weird girl, he thought, as he shook his head and went back to work. On, let's stop here for a second, Butterfly said, pointing to a seamstress's shop. Ten minutes later, you and Butterfly emerged from the shop, with you sporting a dagger pouch around your waist, made from some of the rat's fur that you had collected on your hunt yesterday. I feel like a pro, you said happily, walking beside him. Well, you eyed his very expensive looking chain whip sword that was strapped to his hip. Maybe not pro, you added. Hey, that reminds me. Why did you pick that particular sword? It looks hard to use. My qu- uh, uh, I just find it easy to use, he said, not looking at you. Was he going to say quirk? Is his quirk to be able to produce bendy swords from his hands or body? That'd make sense, you thought. You walked on in silence for a bit as you headed out of the city and across the field to the forest nearby. There are monsters here that have a higher EXP experience and will give you more mahi, so you'll be able to level up a bit faster, Butterfly said to you as you both entered the tree line. Use your dagger like a pin and make sure the tip is the first point of impact, he added. Like popping a balloon? you asked. Yes, he replied, keeping an eye out for any monster attacks. Here comes a viper on. Draw your dagger. He stepped back and reached one hand to his sword in case he might need it. You grabbed your dagger and looked in the direction that he was looking and spotted a viper snake in the foliage of a tree nearby, its beady red eyes glaring at you, with the red cursor showing ominously above its head. Uh, how do I attack it? You called to Butterfly from over your shoulder as you raised your dagger with both hands and held it up in front of you, tip pointed directly at the snake. Step forward on. Butterfly encouraged. You took a shaky step forward and kept your dagger pointed at the snake. The snake's tongue flicked out of its mouth as it slid closer to you while raising its head. It's engaged with you now on, Butterfly narrated from behind you. When it's within strike range, just jump forward and jab it with the tip of your dagger. Okay, you replied hesitantly as the snake got closer. No, on, don't step back, Butterfly called. Instinctively, you had taken a step back in fear. Sorry, you called and stepped forward as a little scared squeak escaped your lips. That's it on, jump now, Butterfly called. You lunged forward and jabbed the snake with the tip of your dagger just as it went to open its mouth to bite you. Suddenly it burst into a million crystals and evaporated. I did it, you hollered, jumping up and down. Viper defeated, a sign popped up. Experience, eight. Mahi, ten. Items dropped, one snake skin. Oh, a snakeskin. I could get lots of things made from snakeskin, you said excitedly. And 10 mahi. If I kill 10 snakes, I can make 100 mahi in a day. No time to celebrate now on. There are more, Butterfly said calmly. You whipped around, holding the dagger up again. The vipers seemed to be coming in swarms, and as soon as you killed one, another one would appear. Butterfly had to jump in a few times and finish off one that was sliding in to take a bite from the side of you, but before long you had almost reached your ten snake goal. You were about to take out another viper when Butterfly quickly whipped his chain out and shattered the snake instantly. Butterfly, why did you... 
Get behind me on and stay close, he said suddenly and lowly. Why, what is it? you asked. Just then you heard a growl and looked over to the bushes nearby. You could see the red eyes of a wolf. Is that a wolf? you asked as you sidled in behind Butterfly. Yes, and there are a few, he replied quietly, still looking around. You glanced to your left and right, then behind you. Um, Butterfly, I think we're surrounded, you said in a shaky voice. Don't be afraid, On, he said gently, placing his left hand around behind him to hold you against his back, his sword in his right hand. I won't let anything happen to you. You gripped your hands into Butterfly's cloak and pulled yourself against his back. Come, Butterfly suddenly commanded, and almost as if on cue the first wolf jumped out. It charged straight for Butterfly, but was decapitated instantly, so the next two wolves tried their luck and got the same treatment. All the while, Butterfly kept his left arm wrapped around behind himself, holding your body against his back as he fought a pack of wolves single-handedly. Butterfly behind you! You screamed as you looked back and saw five wolves stalking up behind the two of you. He stepped lightly around you and in one strike had taken out all five wolves. Wow, okay, so now I know how he leveled up so quickly, you thought as he effortlessly took out multiple wolves at once. At last, the last wolf was taken care of and Butterfly let you go and turned to face you, lifting his hood so he could look you over properly. Are you okay on? He asked as his eyes scanned your health bar, then your face. I'm 100% fine, thanks to you, you replied dreamily. God, I think I'm in love, you thought. Can I just say, that was so amazing. You just took out a pack of wolves single-handedly, like actually single-handedly, as in with one hand. Butterfly blushed. Oh, it's not that amazing, he replied with a small smile. I beg to differ, you replied with a snort. Uh, anyway, On, it's getting late. We should maybe head back now. What time is it in the real world? You checked your menu. It's 8pm, you announced. Would you like to get dinner with me? Butterfly asked. We can eat at Dawn Restaurant. Sure, you replied happily. I have enough money for food. Um, I was going to buy you dinner, he said averting his eyes and scratching his cheek shyly. So, uh, like, um, kind of like a in-game, uh, date? You asked shyly. Uh, yeah, if that's okay. Butterfly replied softly. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, a date with Butterfly! Yes, you said bluntly. You didn't know what else to say. R really? Butterfly responded, slightly shocked. That's great. Um, okay, let's go. You smiled stupidly and followed him out of the forest and back across the field to the inn. Hey, um, I'm curious though, you said as you trotted a little to catch up beside him. Why would you want to have a date with me? Well, he said softly, I haven't had this much fun in a long time. It's been refreshing to hang out with you. I just wanted to show you how much I like you before I have to go. Go? You asked, your heart sinking. What do you mean by go? I have to go back to level 43 and take on a particularly hard boss to unlock the next level, he said sadly. We were meeting down here a few days ago to discuss how best to tackle the monster. Oh, yeah, I remember, you said glumly. The lead guild is called Overthrow of Fate. Swiftkill is their leader. Ah, oh, yes, I remember that asshole. you said coldly. Wait, hang on, that guild, what do they call it for short? Um, Overthrow F, Butterfly replied. No, no, the acronym would be OOF, wouldn't it? You said with a smirk. Butterfly grimaced. Yeah, they, they don't like being called OOF, hence why they call themselves Overthrow F. You cackled. Oh, this is just too good. So, is Swiftkill going to come back and get you before the fight with the monster? God, I hope so. I am so going to give him a hard time about being the leader of Oof. I don't like him either, but I have to work with him, unfortunately, Butterfly said sadly. Please don't make it any harder for me. Okay, okay, for your sake I won't say anything, you said, looking at him with a smile. He looked back at you and smiled gently. Thank you, On. Everyone watched as you and Butterfly entered the restaurant, and the boss gave you a raised eyebrow when he saw you with the player who had caught your interest. You poked your tongue out at him playfully and he smirked. 
You and Butterfly had a lovely meal together and chatted about RFO mainly. You found out that he had chosen the name Butterfly with a 3 on the end because the original username he wanted wasn't available. He didn't really elaborate any further. You told him you would decided that you wanted to become a merchant with your own shop, then swapped to blacksmith when you had gotten to a higher level. Butterfly's eyes lit up. That would be really great if you became a blacksmith, he said happily. I would use you for the maintenance of my equipment. What level are you now? Uh, I don't know. I did get notifications, but I just closed them without reading them, you replied sheepishly. He walked around the table to beside you, and you swiped your menu open, allowing him to scan through your details. Oh, you've just hit level 4, he said. At level 10 you can become a merchant, and then at level 40 you can swap to blacksmith. Mm-hmm. You mumbled as you nodded your head with a blush dusting your cheeks. He's so close to me, I can't even look at him. He continued to look through your items, mumbling things to himself. You glanced at him hesitantly from the corner of your eye, and he turned his head slightly as his eyes met yours. He paused, and then quickly pulled back. Oh, sorry, On. He mumbled hurriedly as he walked back around to his side of the table, his face going slightly red. Would you like some dessert? The waitress asked as she arrived at the table, interrupting the awkward moment. Thankfully, it wasn't that friendly player who lent you Mahi the first night in RFO. If it were her, you were pretty sure that she would have made some kind of suggestive comment. On? Butterfly asked. Oh, oh, no, I'm fine. Thank you, though, Butterfly. He asked for the bill and then dismissed the waitress before turning back to you. What time will you be on again tomorrow? He asked. 4pm, the usual, he said with a smile. Oh, I might already be gone by then. Butterfly replied sadly. I don't know how long I'll be away for, but if I can, I'll come back to see you. I'll be waiting, you replied with a grin. I'm not going anywhere. Okay, he replied, giving you a soft look. The waitress returned with the bill, and he paid before you both left and headed upstairs. Oh, um, On, you use this room, and I'll go back down and pay for another room, he said shyly. Oh, why? you asked curiously. Um, well, I like you and I just don't want you to think that I'd do anything to you, he said with a cheek scratch and averted eyes. It's only characters in a game, he said with a laugh. It's not my real body. Plus, you're too polite to do anything like that to my avatar. No, I insist on being the gentleman, he said, stepping towards you and taking your hand gently in his. His hand was warm and his hold was tender. You blushed. Until I see you again, he said softly as he stepped forward, closing the gap between you two. You braced. Is he about to kiss me? He leaned in towards your cheek and kissed you lightly. You felt his soft lips touch you, and the blush deepened. Oh, oh, you whispered as he pulled back and looked at you. Suddenly he realised that he had just kissed you on the cheek and panicked. I, uh, bye, he yelled before rapidly swiping his menu open and logging out in the middle of the hallway. Butterfly, wait! You yelled, but it was too late. His empty avatar collapsed, and you just managed to catch him in your arms. Oh, I knew that would happen, you grunted as you turned and unlocked the inn door with difficulty, dragging Butterfly into your room and pulling him across to the bed. You lay him down as gently as possible and sighed before touching your cheek. He just kissed me on my cheek. Wait, why am I so excited about this? It's just a character that kissed my character. It's not real. But... The emotions behind it are... You sat down next to Butterfly, and then lay down next to him before smiling and logging out. <gasps> I kissed her! Tamaki Yamajiki screamed internally as he woke up in his room. He sat up quickly, with the Nerve Gear headset still on. I can't believe I was bold enough to do that, but I really do like her. He took the gear off his head and ruffled his hair, looking across to his mirror to check and see how he looked. I know we're just playing as characters in a game, but I really like the person behind the avatar. He got up from the bed and stretched. Time for dinner, I guess. Wait! He paused. I just logged out of RFO in the middle of the hallway. He hung his head and walked stiffly to the corner of his room, resting his head gingerly against the wall as his bottom lip quivered. I'm such an idiot. His mind ran wild with all the possible things that could be happening to his avatar that could have been left crumpled on the floor outside your in-room door. I have to go back and put Butterfly in a room. He put his head off the wall and walked back to the bed and lay down, 
putting the nerve gear back on and logging in. As he opened his eyes in the game, he realised that he was already in a room and he looked to his right. Your empty avatar was sleeping peacefully beside him and he smiled. She must have pulled me in here when I collapsed from logging out. Satisfied with where he was, he logged out again and went downstairs for dinner. As he ate quietly, he thought about how far he had come in RFO. When he'd heard about its release, he was curious to find out what a full dive system entailed, so he bought it after seeing some reviews online. The one review that caught his eye was from a gamer who claimed that he was painfully shy and felt like he was a nobody, but when he was in diving, in RFO, he felt like a different person. Tamaki wanted to experience this. What would it be like to have confidence and no anxieties? The first time RFO had asked for a character name, he almost triggered the nerve gear to disconnect because of the rapid spike in heart rate, so not all his anxieties had been cured immediately. It would be a work in progress. He had wanted the name Butterfly, as it's usually spelled, but somebody else had already taken it. Utterly heartbroken, he had walked to the corner of the character selection box and placed his head on the virtual wall for a good 10 minutes until the system asked if he was going to continue. After mentally going over different ways to spell Butterfly, he settled on the I-3 on the end, considering that he was one of the big three in UA's third class year. He entered the name and held his breath, releasing it as a sharp exhale when the name Butterfly with the IE was accepted. From there he farmed rats until he was confident with his one small dagger and then went straight for the bosses in hidden places that he had read in reviews. Naturally he had to grind a lot and got killed by monsters multiple times but he didn't give up, finally hitting the jackpot with getting his cloak and then unlocking the chain whip sword from another underground level off 38. Fortunately for him, at this point he was already level 51 and thus could unlock the sword instantly otherwise he would have had to keep it in his storage until he was a high enough level to unlock it. He loved the chain whip sword because it was easy to use since his own quirk required him to be able to control a relatively uncontrollable object, octopus limbs, and he found them similar. He never thought that by playing RFO he would bump into another player who he would find himself genuinely romantically attracted to. What if she's not actually a female in real life, he thought. What if she's a 50 year old man with a handlebar moustache named Steve? This thought spiked his anxiety so much he had to stop eating for a minute to calm himself down again. No, she can't be an old man in real life. There's just too much about her that's consistent with a girl around my age. His heart rate slowed and he was able to eat again after rationally going over all the little things that you'd said and did. I wonder if I should ask her some things about herself, about her real self. He thought as he ate some of the takoyaki in front of him. No, I can't do that. I already told her I didn't want to talk about my real self. But what if we were to meet someday? His mind reeled with the possibilities. What if she doesn't like how I look in real life? Or doesn't like the fact that I'm not as confident in person as I am in RFO? He sighed. I guess I don't need to worry too much, as I'm leaving for the front lines tomorrow, so I won't see her for a while. The next day at school, you were very sprightly, bounding into class with a big smile plastered on your face. Okay, what happened? Your best friend asked when she saw how suspiciously awake you looked. I got eight hours of sleep, you said with excitement. She laughed. <laughs> well, okay, let's just celebrate the little things in life, hey? Yo, this is a big deal. I haven't had this much sleep since like a week ago, two weeks ago. Since you started studying round the clock, she prompted. Oh, yeah, right, right, uh, study. She narrowed her eyes at you. So you're going to absolutely cream this next test next week then, yeah? We we have a test next week, you asked. Oh my god, she groaned. Have you been that zonked out that you didn't hear the announcement? They told us yesterday. Oh, damn, you snapped. I need to stop. You paused. Her eyes bore into you and she raised an eyebrow slowly. Uh, I mean, okay, Yen, what the hell is going on? I knew you wouldn't be studying around the clock. What's happened? What are you not telling me? She said. You panicked. I have a boyfriend, you said. What? She yelled. Shh, you hushed her sharply. Oh my gosh, woman, keep it down. Sorry, she whisper screamed. But what the hell? Okay, okay, you replied in a harsh whisper. We're not official official, but we've had like a date and he said he liked me and I like him. So when 
did this happen? She whispered in a strained voice back. Um... You panicked again. You weren't ready to tell her that you were playing RFO and it was a fellow RFO player that you'd fallen for. Again, she whispered. I'm supposed to be your best friend. Why have you not told me any of this? I know, I know. I just... It's all happened really quickly, you said back to her. Um, guys, I can, like, hear your whole entire conversation, one of the girls at the front of the class said in a bored, bitchy tone as she turned slowly to look at you both. Uh, yeah, that's because your quirk is to do with super hearing, your best friend shot back in the most so-done voice you'd ever heard her use. Okay, well, we'll talk later, yeah? You whispered to your best friend as she turned her head back towards you after rolling her eyes at the rude classmate at the front. She just gave you a thumbs up and looked down at book. Just then the teacher walked in and class started. It was advanced quirk class this morning and you'd been loving the class because it was giving you a chance to come up with some special moves that would put you at the apex of your quirk game. You had mastered your quirk quite well and used it confidently, but you still felt like there was room for improvement, so you'd been racking your brain trying to find a new application for it. Well, what if I looked into the speed aspect of my quirk, you thought. It's not really a speed-dependent quirk, but maybe I could use it to switch places with someone and switch back before that person even realised I've used my quirk? That could be helpful in situations when we need to see what someone's looking at, like a message on their phone or something. You pondered it as you jotted notes down in your book, coming up with some names to call this special move. Subliminal switch? Blink switch? You looked up and around the room. Maybe I should try it on someone and see if I can do it fast enough so that they don't know that I've used it. Your eyes roamed a few classmates. Jiri? Nah. Bestie? Nah. Who's someone here that I'm curious to see what they're looking at? Your eyes scanned to your right, and against the wall, a row ahead of you, was Tamaki Amatiki. He had his head down, pen in hand, looking really intently at something in his book, but it looked like he was in the back of his book. Is Tamaki drawing something? I wonder what he's drawing. You turned your face towards him and took a deep breath in, feeling your quirk build just beneath the surface. Okay, Yin. You just need to do this super quickly, otherwise he'll be able to tell that you've used your quirk on him. Just switch in and switch out as fast as you can, but also pay attention to what it is that he's drawing. You braced and activated your quirk. As quickly as you activated it, you looked down and then deactivated. Ah, crap, that was too slow. You berated yourself, hesitating a glance back towards Tamaki. He was looking around the room in confusion and his eyes met yours. You quickly looked away and he did as well blushing and hiding his face when he realised that you two had made eye contact. Damn it, he knew it was me. Ah oh well, now I just need to remember what he was drawing. You closed your eyes and thought back to the image in his book. Stats? Combo moves? Is he playing a game or something? These words look like they're from a computer game. Was there a sword drawn there too? Is Tamaki a secret gamer like me? Wow, I would not have picked it. He must really like games too, writing down moves to use on stuff. You smiled to yourself, thinking about how you two are similar in that regard. That afternoon, back at home, you logged on to RFO as quickly as possible so that you might happen to catch Butterfly before he left to go to the front lines, but he had gone. The spot on the bed beside you was empty, and your heart sank when you realised you were alone. You were going to log out, but then remembered that he had said he'd come back to see you when he'd finished taking on the boss of that level. I want to show him how far I've come when he comes back. I'd like to have a shop by then too. I know how to grind it out for experience points now, so I have no excuse. Setting your face with determination, you hopped off the bed and picked up the dagger in the rat fur pouch that was beside the bedside table and headed for the door. Over the next few weeks, you farmed rats, vipers, and even moved on to wolves, crocodiles, and these giant vine Venus flytrap looking plants that had unfortunately gotten a taste of human flesh and wanted more. You actually liked taking on the Venus flytraps, because although they didn't give a huge amount of mahi or experience, they gave really cool item drops, and you had a decent stash of paralysis poison potions, teleportation crystals, and a few other items that you didn't quite know what to do with or how to use them, so you kept them, just in case they came in handy in the future. Sometimes you would find yourself researching things about the game in your spare time at school, or home, and decided to follow advice from an ex sao player named Kirito, who said to keep a teleportation crystal on board when taking on a new monster so you can get out quickly to avoid being killed. 
You took his advice and always had one handy. If you used it, you'd be sent straight back to the city square. Another piece of advice you found was to watch the monster's health bar and your own during a fight. And if your health bar was depleting faster than the monster's, get out. Soon you had reached level 10 and proudly got your merchant license and bought a small shop down the back alley that had a small apartment on the second floor. This is perfect because I could live here now and not have to pay 95 mahi a night. You moved yourself, your wicker basket, fishing pole and dagger into the upstairs part of the shop and smiled happily. There was a bed but no other furniture but you had enough mahi now to be able to splurge a little and you did a little happy dance when you swiped your menu bar open and looked at your savings. Mahi, 10,050, experience points, 8,500, and level 10. Yes, bitches, look at me go. If only I could use this money in real life, you thought sadly as you compared this mahi to the money you had in your savings account back home. That afternoon, you went to a few shops nearby and bought yourself a lounge, chair, a few small cooking essentials, plates, cutlery, etc. Just enough to get by for the time being. Funnily enough, when you'd bought stuff, you thought of buying things that would be appropriate for two people. A lounge big enough for two, two plates, two bowls, two sets of cutlery, etc. Butterfly was still heavily on your mind, obviously. Over the next week, you opened the shop and placed a few of the items of your own from the storage stash out on the shelves for people to buy. No one came. You were disappointed. You went next door and made friends with the other shopkeepers, who were also fellow players, so that you could get your name out there and slowly but surely people ventured to your shop. Some came to have a look and others bought one or two items. Each day in the afternoon you'd go out and farm some more monsters to get items for your store and each day your business built. It was mid-afternoon one day around a month and a bit since you opened that a masked man appeared in your doorway. Hello, you called cheerfully, although he looked a bit suspicious. Can I help you? I'm assuming you're on, the male player said. Yep, that's me. Why? you asked. He walked in and handed you a 3D diamond crystal. This is a message for you, he said. You'll know who it is when you listen to it. I've been sent especially to drop it to you. If you wish to reply, I'll return tomorrow and pick it up so that you can get a message back to them. And with that, the player turned and left the shop. You looked down at the small item and turned it over in your hand before you saw the red button. Curiously, you pressed it and the diamond glowed and then floated up from your palm. Hi, On. This is Butterfly, the voice recording said. I, um, I really miss you and you're the reason I'm fighting so hard on the front lines so I can finish up here and get back to you as soon as I can. I hope all is well. I would love to hear from you. I I'd, I'd better go now. I haven't forgotten you. I'll be back soon. And then the recording clicked off. A little icon popped up that asked if you'd like to reply and you pressed yes. Please record your message after the tone. There is a timer that will count down the length of time left for the message. Once the timer hits zero, this device will stop recording. The automated voice dictated. Suddenly a tone beeped and a timer flashed up above the recording symbol. Oh, it's recording. Um, hi, Butterfly. I'm not going to lie. I miss you too. And I can't wait to see you again. I have a shop now. Uh, it's, it's inside Dawn City. I live in the upstairs part. Um, I've got plenty of room for you here. Uh, if you want to stay with me when you get back, you cringed. Uh, okay, sorry. That sounded really nitty and weird. I'm sorry. I said to... Suddenly you were cut off by the timer hitting zero. Thank you for your message, the automated voice said. Then the diamond recording device shut down. God damn it you sighed you put the little device in your pocket then went out to farm some venus fly traps before logging out for the day the next day in rfo the mysterious man was back to pick up your message hey um do do you see butterfly often you asked the guy yeah i do he partied with our guild to take on the level 43 boss he replied oh you're from oof you replied with a smug look on your face the guy's eyes went from lively to dead in a split second. Uh, no, we call ourselves Overthrow F, he replied in a hollow tone. No, I'm pretty sure it's off, he replied with a smirk. The guy looked equal parts embarrassed and disappointed in all of his life decisions up until that point, and you cackled with laughter. I'm sorry, your leader is such a jackass, I just couldn't help but have a dig. You know Swiftkill, he replied. Yes, unfortunately, I had a bit of a run-in with him, but Butterfly sorted him out for me, you said proudly. 
Butterfly really likes you, the guy said. I've seen him fight a few times now, and he always takes it seriously, but this time's a bit different, and I think it's because he has a new purpose for fighting. You blushed, thinking back to his message. He's really cool, he said. Anyway, I'd better go. I'll tell him you're doing well, the guy said before turning and leaving. Thank you, you called out after him. The next day at school, your best friend was pestering you about your boyfriend. You two were sitting out on the grass enjoying the sun. So when do I get to meet this officially not official man of yours? Um, well, when it becomes official, I guess. I don't want to scare him off, you replied. Where did you meet him again? She asked as she picked a blade of grass. Uh, online, you said vaguely. Where? On a chat site? Your bestie asked. Uh, yeah, I guess. You're not being very helpful, she said with a laugh. Do you even know the guy? Uh, to be honest, no, you said with a hollow laugh. It's still early days, just give me some time. Girly, do you even know his name? I know his online name, you said. She deadpanned. So let me get this right. You like him, he likes you, you went on a date, but you don't know his name or anything about him except his online name? Hmm, basically, he replied. But like I have said 50 times already, it's still early days. Ugh, okay, fine, she said with an exaggerated sigh and eye roll. Hey, changing subjects, I was mucking around with my quirk a few weeks ago, and I stumbled upon something really interesting. I think Tamaki's a secret gamer. But don't say anything, hey, the poor guy would have a heart attack if anyone knew. He's so shy. Tamaki is gorgeous, your bestie said. He's really good looking and shy. Which is really attractive, don't you think? Yeah, I definitely agree, he replied. Oh, bitch, you plan, she suddenly yelled. What? You stammered in reply, shocked by her sudden outburst. You got a man and you're crushing on Tamaki. I never said I was crushing on him. I just agreed with you, you shot back defensively. Plus, I don't technically have a man yet. Anyways, what makes you say he's a gamer? What did you find out? Oh, well, I was doing a quick switch with him, but I wasn't fast enough, and I'm pretty sure that he knows it was me that did it. But anyway, he was writing down fighting combos in the back of his book, and he had drawn a sword. Hmm, I wonder what game it's from, she said, idly fiddling with more blades of grass. Not sure. One combo was called Whip Sting or something like that, which doesn't make sense if he drew a sword, he mused. I wonder if us talking about Arifo has gotten him curious about the game, your bestie mused. Mm, Dunno, you replied, looking up across the grassed area and watching as Miro, Nigeria and Tamaki all walk together during the break. You still seriously have to get onto Arifo. It's awesome! I'm a beast tamer now and Miro is still grinding away to become a combat mage, but we've met up in games a few times and it's really fun, your bestie said excitedly. You smiled secretly to yourself. That night in game, you were just about to close up shop when the neighbouring shop owner came bounding through the doors. Did you hear? He said excitedly. Hear what? You asked, packing some of the display away. Level 43 has just been cleared. Seriously, they beat the boss? You said excitedly. That's awesome. Yeah, and I also heard that the minute that the boss was de defeated, Butterfly flew away, he said poetically raising his hand up in grand gesture as if to imitate something disappearing into the sky. <gasps> really? You gasped excitedly. You were hoping that that meant Butterfly was coming to you as soon as possible. You thanked the neighbouring owner, and he left you to pack up with a big grin on your face. What time is it now? Should I stay online until he arrives? Does he know where I am? Should I go looking for him? You mulled over what to do, deciding to go out briefly to the field to grind a bit before coming back to the shop. You gathered a few rats and such, and then back to the shop you went, wondering if you should prepare and make something for the two of you to eat, should he arrive. You had just gotten back and had gone upstairs to put some things away when you heard the door downstairs open. On, are you here? A gentle, medium voice called. Your heart skipped a beat. Butterfly! You turned and raced downstairs. Butterfly had just stepped inside and had closed the door behind him, pushing his hood off and giving you a beautiful smile. You ran towards him and he opened his arms to catch you as you jumped into them. He buried his head into your neck and kissed you softly as he spun you around. 
I missed you on, he said softly as he pulled back from you and looked into your eyes. I missed you too, butterfly. It's been so long since I saw you last. He smiled again and glanced at your lips as your arms hung onto him around his neck. There was a moment where you thought he might actually kiss you on the lips, but instead he blushed and looked away, looking around the shop and taking in all the interior that, as you studied his side profile. This is a very nice shop you have on, he said softly before looking back at you. Oh, thank you. I'm pretty pleased with it, you replied happily, releasing your arms from around his neck and stepping back. Did you want to come upstairs? I can make us some dinner and we can catch up on what's happened since we last saw each other. I'd really like that, he replied, following you to the stairs. As you reached the base of the stairs, he reached out and took your hand. Surprised, you turned your head back to ask if everything was okay, and that's when he stumbled forward and kissed you half on the lips, half on the cheek. Not expecting such a move, you squeaked in surprise, and your flustered noise made him jump back. Wait, butterfly, don't log out. It's okay. I, I really wanted the, the kiss, you replied frantically, waving your arms to calm him down when you saw the panicked look on his face. I'm sorry, that was really bold of me, but, but then I missed and, and... Not as sharp with your kissing skills as you are with your sword skills, hey butterfly? You teased with a wink. He went bright red. Well, no, I've never kissed anyone before. His bashful gaze dropped to the floor. What happened to confident butterfly? You tutted playfully, reaching a hand to his cheek so you could caress it gently. The man who just whipped level 43's boss's ass and shut down swift kill in one swipe? Butterfly's eyes met yours, and a collected look washed over his features as confidence swelled within him. Purposefully now, he stepped up to you and gently slipped an arm around your back, leaning his face gently towards yours but giving you enough time to close that gap towards him as your eyelids shut softly and your lips met his. He kissed you confidently as he held you in his arms. You never felt such confidence radiate from someone before. Was that better? He asked as he pulled back from the kiss. You could feel your knees had gone slightly weak now and you nodded sheepishly. Really nice, you whispered with a light blush dusting your cheeks. Thank you, On, for reminding me that I can be confident in this game, he said with a soft smile. You smiled dreamily back. No problem. Slowly Butterfly let you go and you turned and practically floated up the stairs to your apartment above giving him a very disjointed tour of the place as your head remained in the clouds from that kiss. Butterfly stayed close to you as you showed him around the place and you could tell he just liked being with you again, almost as much as you were enjoying him being beside you once more. Happily, you made a small dinner for the two of you and set out the two plates, two glasses and two sets of cutlery and he noticed that those were the only sets that you owned. She must have really been thinking about me staying with her, he thought happily. While you ate, Butterfly told you a little of his adventures while he was away and you filled him in on your grinding experiences. On, I was wondering if you'd party with me, he said after dinner. Um, where? Like, now? Is there a club in this game? You asked, confused. Uh, I'm sorry? He asked with a slight tilt of his head. You want me to have a party with you? You asked. I would like you to party with me, yes, he confirmed, still feeling like he didn't quite get what he was meaning. Deciding to take the next step himself, he swiped his menu open and pressed something. Suddenly a request bar popped up in front of you, and you looked down at it. Butterfly has requested to party up with him. Yes? No? You clicked yes, and Butterfly's name and health bar popped up under where yours were located on the left top of your vision. What does this mean? you asked, still slightly bewildered. It means that we're now a team. Any experience or mahi I earn, you'll get a portion of it, and vice versa. Oh, wow, really? You said excitedly. I'm going to be level 40 in no time being partied with you. You can level up so quickly with your chain whip sword because it's so good at reaching and you can take out multiple monsters at once. Suddenly you paused, looking down as you thought, wait, chain whip sword. You looked back up at Butterfly. He was looking at you curiously. But Butterfly, do you have a move with your sword called whip sting or something like that? Yes, I do, he replied curiously. How did you know that? That's a finishing move I use, but no one knows the name of that move because it's a secret skill I've unlocked. Your eyes widened and you just stared at him. Wait, no. This can't be right, can it? Is Butterfly to Maki Amajiki from my class? That was the name of one of the moves he'd written in the back of his book that day. 
on, Butterfly said softly, trying to encourage you to speak again as you'd gone strongly silent. What do I say? Do I ask him right now? Or should I think about this and gather more information first? On, how do you know that move name? He pressed, getting more and more anxious the longer it took for you to reply. Uh, I, I actually read about it online, you lied. I was doing some research and found it. Oh, they have that kind of information online? He asked curiously. Um, yeah, they pretty much have everything online, he said with a forced laugh. Anyway, sorry about that. I won't tell anyone. Promise. I trust you, On, he replied with a smile. The rest of the night was filled with some genuine conversation, interspersed with you peering at him intently, fighting the urge to just ask him straight out if he was indeed Tamaki from your class. He felt slightly uncomfortable at certain points due to your sudden bouts of silent pondering, or you stared into his soul, but he was really happy to be back with you again, and just tried to ignore the feeling that you'd suddenly discovered something. It's getting late on, we should log out, he finally said after a long while. True, you replied getting up and walking over to the bed in the corner. Come and lie down, butterfly, we can log out together. He smiled and followed you to the bed, lying down beside you and holding your hand as you lay side by side. You smiled back at him and he squeezed your hand. I'm really happy you're back. Same on, he said as he opened his menu. See you tomorrow, 4pm. I'll be here, you said happily as you opened your menu and pressed log out. Both your forms evaporated, and you opened your eyes back in your own room and stared at the ceiling. Holy hell, now what? I mean, I've got little bits of evidence, you thought as you lay there. Tamaki likes butterflies, he was drawing gaming stuff in the back of his book, and he wrote out his secret move. His friends even play RFO. But how can I be sure it's him without blowing it? Also, I've fallen for butterfly. Do I like Tamaki as much as I like his online persona? If it's even him? He rolled over on the bed and face planted into the pillow, letting out a low, wailing groan as if your whole life had been thrown on its head. Well, in all technicalities, it had. That's if Tamaki was actually Butterfly. Not wanting to jump to conclusions too quickly, you decided to observe Tamaki a little bit more at school to see if you could find any other similarities or pieces of evidence before approaching him about it. Hey, let's have lunch with Muro, Nijiri and Tamaki today, you said to your bestie as you both headed out into the hall and down to the cafe. Random, but okay, she said with a laugh. Any particular reason? Uh, nope, just thought you and Muro would want to talk about RFO. I always want to talk about RFO, but it's weird that you're initiating it, she replied suspiciously. Meh, you gave a dismissive hand wave. Just accept my gracious offer. She snorted with amusement, but didn't question you further. Hey, Magada! Your bestie addressed Mirio, using his RFO username. Yin requested that we all have lunch together. Awesome! Mirio replied, smiling at you. Thankfully, he didn't ask why. He didn't even look suspicious. He just had that ray of sunshine smile plastered on his face like he always did, as he made room at the table for you and your bestie to sit down. God bless this hunk of blonde sunshine, you wailed internally, doing your best to suppress the heart-squeezed expression that threatened to erupt across your features as you sat down. The minute your backside hit the seat, you looked up, straight across to Tamaki, who was looking at you shyly. You grinned at him, so he gave you a small, shy smile in return before looking back down at his plate of food and wrinkling his bottom lip nervously. So, Yin, have you bought RFO yet? Mirio asked suddenly. Me? Uh, no, no, I haven't, you lied, glancing at Tamaki, who was still looking down at his food. What about you, Tamaki? you asked, turning the question to him. He flinched and looked up, looked up at you, and you gave him a smile in return and waited patiently. I, I, I... We've already been over this, Yin. He's a level 30 butterfly tamer, Nijiri quipped playfully, giving Tamaki an out. You played along with it, but deep down you were really wanting Tamaki to say something, anything, that would give you that next bit of information. All through lunch you kept glancing across at the shy elf boy, and the more you watched him, the more you found him attractive. He even hesitated to say a few things to add to the conversations, which you thought was very cute. After lunch you were heading to your locker to grab some extra textbooks for the next class, 
As you rounded the corner, you came face to face with Tamaki. Seizing the moment, you quickly grabbed him by the arm and pulled him into the nearest empty classroom to chat. Hey, sorry, I need to apologise to you, you started. Tamaki looked at you softly with his head slightly lowered, hands pushed deeply into his pockets to stop his hands from trembling. You took a few deep breaths in and continued. A few weeks back, I was trying something new with my quirk and I used it on you, without your permission. You paused to give him time to remember the event. I, uh, I saw what you had drawn in the back of your book. Tamaki tilted his head slightly and then his eyes widened. They were gaming terms and a sword that you drew, yes? You prompted. Tamaki opened his mouth to say something, but then disclosed it again and nodded silently. It's okay, I won't tell anyone. I was happy and surprised when I saw it. Because you're like me, you said with a ginger smile. What do you mean? He asked gently. We're both secret gamers, he said with a smile. Do you game as well? Yeah, I do, he replied. But don't tell anyone, okay? It's our secret. He nodded and smiled slightly. What game do you play? He asked curiously. You first, you encouraged. What game do you play? He was about to answer when Mirio phased just his face through the wall beside you both, scaring the life out of the two of you. Hey! He greeted brightly amid your terrified screams. I was wondering where... Yin, Tamaki, it's just me. Stop screaming. I was wondering where you two went. You'll be late for class. Please stop. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. After clutching your chest and hyperventilating for another good minute, you finally calmed down enough to follow Mirio, after he had phased the rest of his body through the wall, and Tamaki out of the empty classroom and back down the hall. Oh, I forgot something in my locker. You two go on ahead. I'll catch up in a second, you said quickly, before turning and running down the hall. Okay, so I still don't know for sure that Butterfly is Tamaki, but... I should try and be as normal in-game as possible, you thought as you ran. What a mind blow this is going to be if I am right. That afternoon at 4pm, you logged onto RFO, blinking as you focused on the ceiling of your in-game apartment. You looked beside you to where Butterfly's avatar was lying, then looked down at your hand that was still intertwined with his. Suddenly he woke up and looked at you and you smiled. What do you want to do today? you asked him. I can shut the shop if you like. Then we can go and do something together? Oh, okay. Well, I'd love to help out in the shop a little first. Then I want to take you somewhere, he said as he squeezed your hand in his. Sounds good, you replied brightly. He rolled on his side, facing you, and caressed your cheek fondly with his hand before leaning in for a kiss. Your lips connected and you felt the warmth of his mouth as it connected with yours. It's weird kissing in game. It doesn't feel like a real kiss, but it still feels nice. That warmth against my lips is comforting, he thought. You smiled and he pulled back from you. Let's go, you said enthusiastically, once you'd spent a moment silently smiling at each other. He sat up and helped you off the bed, holding your hand as he led you down the stairs to your shop. Now that we're partied together, I can share some of my items across to you. I have some things in my inventory that people would be really interested to buy, he said happily. They'll really help you. Happily, he swiped his menu open and started selecting items in his storage. Once he'd gone through the list of items that he wanted to send to you, you got a notification message that told you Butterfly wanted to give you some things. Clicking the accept button, you watched as one by one they appeared in your storage list. Uh, pardon my ignorance, but what are these? You asked sheepishly. Oh, just some things I had lying around, he said as he looked up and around the shop. Would you like me to help lay them out? Yes, please, he replied, extracting the items from storage and handing them to him to put on the shelves. You had placed a few new items out when a customer walked in. Hi, welcome. Can I help you with anything? You asked brightly, turning and walking over to them. Uh, not sure, they replied, glancing around. I'm just... Holy crap, is that a blood ember? You turned, following their gaze, and saw that they were looking at a kind of red flame item on the shelf behind you. It was one of Butterfly's items. Uh, maybe? He replied cautiously, unsure if it was or not. It is, Butterfly said confidently as he turned to look at the customer. Where the hell did you get a blood ember from? The player asked in awe. Dungeon on level 30. It was an item dropped from the dragon boss, Butterfly replied casually. Damn, son, I need that, the player said. 
You walked over and picked the item up and the information bar popped up immediately. Blood Ember allows player to deal double damage for five consecutive hits to a target. Cost, 2,000 mahi. Rarity, rare. 2,000 mahi? You and the player screeched in unison when you saw the price. Why are you surprised? The guy yelled at you. You're the merchant. Yeah, I know, but I've never seen one of these before. You screeched back. Butterfly just looked on with amusement in the background, while the two of you just looked at each other with wild confusion. Um, well, do you want to buy it, or...? You asked hesitantly. That would be so flippin' helpful in a boss fight, the player groaned. Wait, let me see how much I have. The player looked at his account and sighed. Ugh, okay, I'll be back tomorrow, yeah? Just need to grind a bit more before I can buy it. Can I put a down payment or something on it so you keep it aside for me? Sure, you replied emphatically. A thousand mahi will do. Okay, perfect. Thanks heaps, he replied, handing over the mahi before taking off out the door. I'll be back tomorrow. You waved as he left and then turned to Butterfly. I didn't realise you had such a coveted item in your midst, you said with an impressed smirk. Don't you need these for yourself? No, not really. I have duplicates, so it doesn't matter, he replied with a smile. And if it helps your shop, then I'm happy. You blushed and looked away, hiding your smile. Thank you, Butterfly. You're really sweet. Just then another customer entered the shop and he looked like he was on a mission. Hi, welcome to... Hey, sorry, I heard there's a blood ember here. I know it's on hold for a friend of mine, he added quickly. But do you have another one? Uh, you turned to Butterfly. Holy fudge balls! is that a ring of agility? The player yelled, running over to the shelf and picking up a small silvery white ring with a ruby gem in the middle of it. Yes, it is, Butterfly replied. I got it from a dungeon boss drop on level 40. A black cricket-looking thing, very fast. Almost didn't beat it. The player looked at Butterfly, then looked up above his head and saw his name. The colour drained from his face. B butterfly Hello, Butterfly greeted sheepishly, rubbing the back of his head. What are you doing on level 1? You're the top player. Oh, I'm here to see my... His voice trailed off as he looked at you and blushed. My, uh... You waited to see what he would say. Oh, yeah, I get it, the player replied smugly. And down here, no one will try and kidnap her or whatever to throw you off your game. Smart. Neither you nor Butterfly replied, and the player just kept talking. Man, but that's so cool. I need to get an Agi ring. How much is it? You walked over and took the item from the player, and again the information flashed up immediately. Ring of Agility. Increases agility stats by 20 points. Cost, 10,000 mahi. Rarity, rare. You nearly choked again. Yeah, fair enough. Kind of expected it, the player said calmly. I don't have that kind of mahi though. Maybe next time. But boy, do you have some amazing items here. I'll have to tell my friends. You beamed from ear to ear. As planned, you and Butterfly finished up with the shop early and he eagerly waited for you at the shop entrance to take you to the place that he had been wanting to show you. As you left for the day and headed to the city, he asked you if you had heard of the game Sword Art Online. You replied that you had, but it was only stuff on the news that you'd heard. I see. Well, parts of RFO are the same as Sayo because they were made by the same company and there's a level I want to show you. He led you to the teleportation stand at the centre of Dawn Square and you both stood on the platform, immediately teleporting to what seemed like the most picturesque place you'd ever seen. There was a beautiful lake before you, and a wooden boardwalk that led around it, so you and Butterfly strolled happily down the deck-type beans, hand in hand, eager to explore. It's gorgeous here, he said with a gentle sigh. What level is this? It's level 22, a very peaceful place, Butterfly replied as he smiled softly down at you. As you walked, you could see two people in the distance walking hand in hand towards you, and you smiled at them as they got closer. Hi, you called cheerfully to the couple when they were within earshot. Are you both enjoying the getaway? The female of the pair asked after returning your greeting. Yes, it's lovely here, you replied happily. I agree. That's why we live on this level, the female player replied. It's such a lovely level. You can buy houses here? You asked with excitement. Of course, she replied. There's a house for sale right next to ours. Come and have a look if you like. 
Asuna, we should probably get going soon. Don't get too carried away, the male of the pair said. It's okay, Kirito. I have a bit more time, Asuna replied him before excitedly beckoning for you and Butterfly to follow her. Wait, he said suddenly as he recognised the name. Kirito? He looked up above his head to double check his name, and sure enough it was him. Same black fidget spinner outfit too. He cocked his head at you, waiting for you to continue. To be honest, everyone was waiting for you to speak again, as you just seemed to be in shock about something. Sorry, you suddenly blurted out. Your name just sounds familiar. I think I read something that you wrote online. I think it was called something like Handy Tips When Diving in RFO, and it said that you were an ex Sayo player. Kirito and Asuna here beat the game. They ended the saga of Sayo, Butterfly said calmly. Whoa, really? You gasped. So you guys are like, famous? Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't say that, Asuna said with a sweat-dropped look. We're just happy to be alive, and that Sayo is in the past. But we were stuck in the game for two years, so it's hard to give it up completely. Hence why we're back in this full dive system. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you both, he said politely. Say, Butterfly, Kirito said, turning his attention to your man. I hear your name around a lot. You're currently top rank, correct? Uh, yes, Butterfly replied hesitantly, but definitely not as good as you. Oh, come on, you can't say that without actually having a duel, Kirito replied playfully. In game we let the swords decide. Kirito, Asuna groaned. Can you just leave it for once in your life? Let me have this one, Asuna. It's been ages since I had a good duel, he replied as he looked from his girl back to Butterfly with a wry smile pulling at his lips. What do you say, Butterfly? Uh, uh, okay. Awesome. We'll let the girls go and chat then, hey? Then we can have some fun, he said, swinging his arms around a bit and rolling his shoulders to loosen them up. Uh, come with me, Asuna looked above your head to see your name. On, I'll show you the house next to ours, and then we can sit and chat while these boys play with their toys. Asuna gave Kirito a wink, and he gave her a cheeky smile in return, as well as the peace sign as he stretched. Then you two walked up to the house. Is it a good idea to let them fight? You asked Asuna as you both walked away. Oh, they'll be fine. Kirito probably just wants to suss out your uh, boyfriend. Um, well, we're not official yet. Like, we have kissed a few times and he's admitted he likes me and I like him. But we haven't actually talked about making anything official, he replied sheepishly. Why not make it official? Asuna asked. Well, I only know him in-game. I don't know who he is in real life. I will let you in on a secret, though. I think... I think I do actually know him in real life, and I think he's in my class at school. <gasps> How exciting! Asuna squealed. So are you going to talk to him in real life and see if he's the same person here in game? Um, well, I'm a bit hesitant to ask, just in case he doesn't actually like me back in real life and only likes me in game, which I know sounds kind of weird, he said with a grimaced look on your face. No, not weird at all. Kirito and I fell in love and married in Sayo before we had even met in real life. But the thing with Sayo was we were playing the game as ourselves. We looked exactly like we did in real life, so when Kirito and I met in the real world, we knew who each other was straight away because we looked the same. This game would be a bit different though. Wait, you married in Sayo? You asked incredulously. Yes, Asuna replied dreamily. You can marry in RFO too. I... I think I need to meet Butterfly in real life first though and start dating there, then maybe take the ne next steps in RFO, he replied. I understand, she said with a smile. Before I show you the house, did you want to watch our boys in action? I love watching Kirito fight. He looks so cool. Well, I've only ever seen Butterfly duel once and he ended it so quickly I didn't even see him use his whip sword. Butterfly wields a chain whip sword? Asuna gasped with awe. Yes, is that a bad thing? You asked. No, 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 not at all, but I really want to see this duel now. Kirito is very quick, but can he predict the movements of a chain whip sword? Uh, I'm not sure, you mused. I'd like to see Kirito fight too, seeing as you two fought and ended Sayo. Let's sit up here though, I don't want to be a distraction to them, 
Asuna said as she led you to a clearing that had both boys in plain sight. Hey, um, I'm still very new to gaming, so you might need to tell me what's going on, you said shyly. Sorry if I come across as a complete noob. You're not a noob. Noobs think they know everything when they don't. But you know that you're new and are willing to learn. That's what we call a noob. Noob and noobs are different. And noobs are way better than noobs, she said with a grin. You're an arsonist's attention were then drawn to the voices of Butterfly and Kirito as they prepared for a battle. You ready for this fight to be over in three seconds? Kirito asked with playful smugness in his voice. Oh, that's longer than I expected. I'll have it ended in two, Butterfly replied as he pulled his hood over his head, a smirk just visible from underneath. Ho ho! I like your confidence, Kirito replied with a chuckle. This is going to be fun. Asuna groaned and softly with a smile. These two boys are evenly matched already. You can tell? Even without them having drawn their weapons yet? You asked. The battle begins with the exchange of words before the duel commences, Asuna said knowingly as a twinkle flickered in her eyes. Watch on, they're about to start. You looked back at the boys and saw that Kirito had drawn his sword, his left hand up in front while he held his black sword back in his right hand, as if he were preparing for a swing attack. Butterfly reached his right arm across his body and held his hand on the hilt of his sword, keeping it sheathed while he summoned a small round shield from his storage unit to his left arm. You saw Kirito lean forward ever so slightly, then he shot forwards and disappeared, moving at lightning speed towards his opponent. At the same time as Kirito moved, Butterfly unsheathed his sword and a loud whip crack sounded, coupled with a blinding light that engulfed the dueling players. Whoa, you gasped. What was that? Kirito reappeared behind Butterfly and swiped his sword before turning slowly to observe the damage he had dealt to his opponent. Butterfly was still standing with his back to Kirito, and he let out a small chuckle. Almost got you, Butterfly said as he turned to face Kirito again. I would have been more surprised if I'd had gotten you on the first go. You have a good reaction time, Kirito commented as he prepared for another attack, sliding one leg back slightly so he could use it to launch. Butterfly held his sword back like Kirito had done on his first attack, and waited for the black swordsman to move. Kirito smirked. I see you've decided on broadening your AoE, but will that be enough? Come and see, Butterfly replied lowly, his hood covering his face almost completely. What's AoE? you whispered to Asuna. It means area of effect, she replied. Butterfly must have done a targeted attack on the first time, and because Kirito dodged it, he's going for an attack that's a bit broader. An AoE attack is usually used to hit multiple targets within a specified area. But let's face it, with Kirito's speed, he may as well be multiple targets, Asuna said with a soft chuckle. This Kirito must be amazing, you thought. He's quick, as far as I can tell, but I could guess that he'd have to have developed a lot of skill being stuck in an RPG game for two years. Suddenly, Kirito shot forward again, and a lengthy duel ensued. Your eyes could only just keep up with their back and forth attacks, and you could see that Butterfly was only just keeping Kirito far enough away so as not to sustain any damage to his body. Butterfly seemed to be using his shield to block Kirito's attacks when his whip had been used and had let him, left him wide open before he could retract it and strike again. And Kirito seemed to be changing his attack pattern regularly, so much so that you couldn't see any consistency in his movements, which would have made fighting him very difficult. Kirito jumped back and opened his menu briefly before holding his left hand back over his shoulder. As he did so, another sword materialised in a second sheath across his shoulder blades, and he drew it quickly. Hang on, wait, what? You said when you saw that he had a sword in each hand now. He has two swords. Why two swords? Doesn't he need a shield? Kirito's a dual wielder, Asuna commented. He's able to fight with both swords. Is, is that cheating? You asked. Asuna laughed. No, but it does make him a difficult opponent. I bet, you mused emphatically. Getting serious? Butterfly commented upon seeing Kirito summon his second sword. Sorry, but it's long past three seconds now and I did say I was going to end this duel, Kirito quipped as he ducked slightly and readied both swords for an attack. He lunged forwards and disappeared. The only thing you saw was a heap of sparks and then he reappeared on the other side of Butterfly. Both you and Asuna were still watching Kirito when you heard Butterfly groan. 
He looked quickly at him and saw his chain whip sword had been snapped in two places, but Butterfly himself was unharmed. I forfeit, Butterfly said, raising his hands. That was an awesome duel, Kirito said as he straightened and turned around to face Butterfly, swiping his swords one after the other before resheathing them. The only weak points are the links in your sword. You'll need to reinforce them with either ingot of crystallite or black diamond. I see, replied Butterfly. I can get those, but I'd need to, a good blacksmith to forge them for me. Hmm. The blacksmith would have to be a level 12 blacksmith or above, Kirito mused. What does your, uh, girlfriend do? Just a quick side note so that there's no confusion. When you level up to, when you get to level 10, you can change to whatever class you want to be. And then once you're in that class, you get a leveling up uh, stats thing for that class. So you need to be a level 10 to get to just say Yin wants to be merchant. And then as she gains experience as a merchant, she levels up from merchant level one, merchant level two. So if she's a merchant level two, just in general experience, she will be a experience level of 12. Um, so Kirito is saying that the blacksmith would have to be a level 12 or above. They would probably have far more experience, just general experience. But in his specific chosen field of expertise, as a blacksmith, it would need to be blacksmith level 12 blacksmith. And back to the story we go. Oh, um, we're, we're not official, but yes, I, I really like her. She's a merchant at the moment, but she did seem interested in blacksmithery. Have you partied with her? Kirito asked as he walked over and picked up the broken bits of Butterfly's sword. Yes, I have, so I can level her up quickly, Butterfly replied. Good, Kirito said. For now, get the sword fixed at your usual place, but my suggestion still stands for the upgrade. I'll definitely do that once I get the materials and level her up, Butterfly replied. Thank you for your help and for that duel. That was an amazing experience. You're welcome. It's been a while since I dueled, Kirito said with a smile, extending his hand for a handshake. Come up to the house, he added as they shook hands. Although I highly doubt anyone else would have the skill to pinpoint the links in my chain and target them mid-fight, Butterfly smirked, I can see why you're indeed the legendary top fighter in any RPG. You're not bad yourself, Kirito replied. You handle that chain whip sword extremely well. It's a hard weapon to master. Thank you, Kirito, Butterfly said happily. You and Asuna quickly got up and ran to the house to make it look like that you hadn't just been watching one of the most amazing fights you'd ever witnessed, and Asuna put the kettle on to make some tea. How'd you do? You asked Butterfly as he entered the house. Well, I learned some things, that's for sure, he replied with a smile. I am grateful to have been able to cross swords with such a legendary player. Kirito walked over and kissed Asuna on the lips. I saw you watching, he said lowly in her ear as he pulled her body against his. You still like to watch me in action? I can never tire of it, she replied as she rubbed her nose playfully against his. You squealed internally. These two are so cute. I wonder if Butterfly, I mean Tamaki and I, would ever be like this. You glanced across at him and blushed when you found him looking lovingly back at you. The rest of the afternoon was spent relaxing in the little log cabin, chatting about RPGs and sharing adventure stories. You got to know that both Kirito and Asuna had been through many different RPG games, but they were finding RFO the nicest so far since it had deeper connections with their original platform, Sayo. And after having some tea and food, you all went next door to have a look at the house that was for sale. 500,000 mahi, you screeched when you saw the for sale sign. Butterfly didn't seem phased at all and just happily looked around. Would it be weird to date in-game, but not know a thing about each other in real life? What if we did end up marrying in here? I should probably do my best to find out if Butterfly really is to market before anything else progresses between us, you thought. What did you think of the house? Butterfly asked as the two of you walked back to the teleportation site after saying goodbye to Asuna and Kirito. It's lovely, but expensive, you said with a grimace as you walked beside him. He chuckled lightly. I actually have enough to buy it, he stated calmly, remaining a little silent for a bit as he collected his next sentence. Would you maybe like to live there with me? You looked at him. 
He was seriously contemplating making that home for the two of you. Um, Butterfly, I've been thinking, he said as he looked back down the broadwalk. His face fell. We're in a bit of an odd situation, you started. I really, really like you, and we've kissed and stuff already, but we're not officially anything yet. We can change that if you like. It would be an honour to be your boyfriend, he said with a smile. Um, well, I'd like that too, but where does that leave us in real life? Like, would it be weird that we're dating in here, but we don't even know each other in real life? He fell silent, contemplating what you'd said. He was still really nervous about you knowing him in real life. He was worried you wouldn't accept the real him. I... On... What if I'm not who you thought you knew in real life? He asked quietly. I could ask you the same question of me too, you replied. But I know this part of you in game is still a part of your real personality, so it's not a problem for me, he said. And then that's my answer to your question, he replied gently with a smile. Can I have a week or so to gather the courage to tell you about myself in real life? He asked shyly. Sure, butterfly. But just the fact that you're willing to take such a big step tells me how committed you are to us, so I'm not worried. I really, really like you, On, he said bashfully, as he reached for your hand and held it as you both stepped up onto the teleportation stand. I like you a lot too, Butterfly, he replied with a smile as you both evaporated and transported back to Dawn City and your shop. Over the next two days in game, you both worked in the shop, stealing kisses and holding hands whenever there weren't any customers which was becoming less common as word spread quickly that there was a merchant shop on level 1 that was selling a heap of rare items. Butterfly was still thinking about whether or not he was going to reveal himself to you before making anything official, and he knew his one week time limit was rapidly coming to an end. Back in real life, you continued to watch Tamaki for signs that you could link him with Butterfly, but there wasn't much to go off and you two would only talk very briefly because he was so shy. Then one day, it happened. Friday morning, last day of the week, the teacher sprung a surprise on the class. We are going to have a class exercise today, he announced excitedly. This exercise is going to assess your collective efforts at taking on a villain. The villain will be played by none other than Gang Orca. Half the class gasped, while the other half cheered. You were in the gasp, half. Gang Orca playing a villain? Holy hell, how are we supposed to bring him down? Gang Orca was a giant of a hero, standing at 202 centimetres tall, that's well over 6 feet tall, and currently ranked number 11 on the hero chart and number 3 on the heroes that look like villains chart. Oh, I guess as a class we could take him on, but we'd need to strategize. The teacher talked about how each of you would be marked based on how you would perform individually in the test as well as how you performed as a team. Ultimately, you'd be given two marks at the end of the test. We will give you time to strategize before the test commences, he added. So talk now and the test will begin in a half hour. The teacher left the room and everyone looked at each other, trying to figure out the best plan of attack. Okay, Mirio said, standing up and assuming the leadership role. Game plans. What are some ideas we have? He walked to the front of the room and picked up a whiteboard marker, holding it up to the whiteboard and waiting for people to start throwing ideas. You furrowed your brows and thought about everyone's quirks and where they would be most useful. Some students started outlining Gang Orca's weaknesses and pointing out how to exploit them, while others talked about who should be in the front lines of attacks. You got up from your seat and walked closer to the board, studying the things that were already written there, and Tamaki came up beside you, obviously wanting to get a better look as well. Mm, we need tankers up front, people to take Gang Orca's aggro, you muttered to yourself. I agree, Tamaki replied softly. Your head snapped towards him and you stared, but he was too busy in his own head that he didn't realise that he had just responded to your gaming terms. Can you tank, Tamaki? you asked, wanting to see if he continued to answer without thinking. Yes, I can. My quirk makes for a good distraction, he added as he pondered how best to apply his skill. True, you said. You have a large AoE. He nodded, still deep in thought. Okay, so he's definitely a gamer. Do these terms apply to RFO though, or are they from any RPG, you thought. Mirio, you called. Let's have groups. 
people up front who can either take Gangwalker on or distract him, and then the next group who do deals out the damage, and then a third group who are back up, who can switch in and help whenever they see their quirk is needed. Good, Yin, Mirio praised. Okay, groups. He spent some time organising similar or synergistic quirks into groups, and then it came down to you. Uh, Yin, you're a bit of an anomaly. Where would you like to go? You have the most versatile quirk, being able to switch places with anyone. Maybe you can confuse Gang Orca by constantly switching with him just before he's about to take someone out? Hmm, that could work, you replied thoughtfully. But that would also confuse all of you guys too, and I might end up getting seriously hurt if I switch him out just as one of you are about to activate your quirk. Mirio thought for a bit. That's true. Well, what if you paired up with someone and you and them work together as a team so you can move them to better attack positions with your quirk? Oh, that's perfect, you replied. In that case, I pick Tamaki, you added, looking at him as he stood beside you. M me he stammered, his cheeks and tips of ears immediately going red as his lip began to tremble. Yes, you, you said cheerfully. You and I will make a good team. How can you be so sure? He asked shyly. I have a feeling, that's how, he said with a smile. Come on, let's chat about how best to work this test. You motioned for him to follow you and he did, trailing behind you to the back of the room with his head down and his hands in his pockets like he usually did. You talked a little about how you would signal each other if anything was going wrong and then came up with other basic plans of attack. Tamaki seemed to be more relaxed when talking about attack strategies and was quite thoughtful when it came to putting together a plan that would work and keep the two of you as safe as possible. I guess he's used to this, having had a lot of experience on the front lines in RFO as Butterfly. If he is Butterfly, that is, you thought. All too soon, the teacher returned and announced that time was up and you were directed to change into your hero costumes and head to the indoor battle arena. You almost gasped when Tamaki arrived in his Sun Eater costume. The resemblance of his outfit to Butterfly's cloak was uncanny, and he even seemed to exude that same confident aura. You ready? You asked him as he came up beside you. Let's do this, he replied lowly, and your heart skipped a beat. Whoop, there it is, you thought. You nodded and waited for further instruction from the teacher. The teacher gave a brief talk and introduced Gang Orca, who walked in from a side door dressed in his own hero costume. Everyone clapped politely and he bowed in greeting. I look forward to working with all of you today, he said in a loud voice. You are the future heroes and I'm excited to see what you have in store for today's exercise. The teacher then gave the rules before exiting from the arena and everyone took their positions. You watched as Tamaki walked around to the other side of Gang Orca so he could see you and you nodded at him, which he returned, signalling that you were both set. There was a loud buzzer sound and then Gang Orca attacked without warning, sending out a straight line of hypersonic waves and paralysing a number of your classmates instantly. Whoa, no warning. That was quick. That was a very quick start to the test, you thought. You looked over to Tamaki again and your heart skipped a beat. He was standing in a slight attack position with his right arm across his body, holding what looked like an imaginary sword. Your mind did an immediate comparison to Butterfly and instantly matched the two as the same image. As Gangwalker turned towards Tamaki, he threw his arm out and released his quirk, octopus tentacles erupting from his fingertips. Again, your mind did a comparison and compared his moves and quirk with Butterfly and his sword technique, and it came up as a match. He's Butterfly! I knew it! They move the same, the quirk and sword skills are the same, everything is the same, it has to be him! You watched him fight a little longer, convinced that you had enough evidence that he and Butterfly were the same person before putting your plan in motion. Shifting your weight, you turned to your left and ran, keeping your eyes on Tamaki before activating your quirk and switching places with him. The minute you switched, Tamaki attacked Gangwalker from his other side. The giant hero was confused for a second and spun around to look for Tamaki. So far, the plan was working perfectly. Over and over again, you were able to place Tamaki right in the perfect attack spot, and his skills from fighting in RFO came to the forefront. Just towards the end of the test, you found yourself in a sticky situation and tried to switch out, but the surrounding classmates' quirks hindered you from doing so and you froze in a panic. Right before you got hit, a tentacle came out of nowhere and Tamaki whisked you out of harm's way. Just then, Gang Orca was defeated and the buzzer announced the end of the test. Are you okay, Yin? Tamaki asked as he pulled you into his embrace and held you close so you had a chance to catch your breath. Yeah, 
he panted. That was close. Thank you for saving me there. It's no problem. Can you stand? He asked, feeling you resting your weight against him. Ah, uh, I think so, you huffed, chest still rising and falling rapidly. I can sit down though. I'll be okay. No, it's okay. I can hold you, he said softly. You looked up at him. Thank you, butterfly. He froze, his eyes darting down to yours. What, what did you call me? He asked, the anxiety in his voice becoming evident. You butterfly, you said softly. I know you butterfly. He stumbled back and let you go, his chest rising and falling rapidly as panic set in. Tamaki, it's okay. I. He turned and fled, running from the arena. Tamaki, you called out after him, but he had gone. Ah, oh, damn. Now what, you thought as you collapsed onto the ground. He doesn't know who I am though, so I need to tell him at some point. You tried to find him after you had changed into your school clothes again, but it looked like he had left the school grounds already. What do I do now? Do I tell him who I am in game tonight, or should I just tell him in real life? You thought about your options as you walked home that evening, deciding to woman up and tell him who you were in real life. Man, what a day though. I need a drink of some kind, you thought. You were heading past a small cafe and decided to stop in and grab something before heading home to play RFO. Pushing the doors open, you looked around the small cafe and nearly died. Tamaki was sitting at a booth at the back of the shop, engrossed in his phone. Your heart started pounding in your chest. Should you run or face him now? You stood frozen. Almost as if he sensed you were there, he looked up and you saw him jump nervously when he recognised you. Tamaki, you said in an even tone as you walked towards him. He stood up, looking around wildly as if he wanted to make another run for it, like a cat caught in the corner of a room. Tamaki, wait, can we please talk? He quickly sat down and sank down in the seat, covering his face with his hands. You walked over and sat down across from him. There's no need to be shy, Tamaki. Can we please talk about this, though? It's important. H how did you know? He asked in a quivering voice from behind his hands. Know that you're Butterfly? You asked. Because I've spent a lot of time around you. In RFO. You have? He asked, removing his hands so that he could look at you. Who are you, then? Um, your heartbeat started beating faster. Uh, well, we meet every day at 4pm, you said, almost breathlessly as your vision pounded from the sudden spike in your heart rate. 4pm? His eyes suddenly widened. On? You nodded. Hi. Tamaki just gawked at you as you both sat there awkwardly, not knowing what to say. Um, I know it's kind of a bit awkward source right now, but I just had to say something. It's also a bit unfair of me to ask you to make your mind up about what you want to do, you rambled, because I've been watching you. Wait, okay, no, that sounds weird. Like, okay, let me rephrase that, you flubbed, touching your fingertips to your temple and closing your eyes for a second before continuing. I had a feeling that you might have been Butterfly. No, actually, maybe I was hoping it was you. So anyway, I was watching you in-game and real life to gather some information, but in doing that I caught deeper feelings and I know that I like you both in real life and online. You paused, hoping he would say something, but he just blushed and sank down in his seat again, covering his mouth and chin with the crook of his arm as it lay resting on the tabletop. So, um, I, I, I like you a lot, Tamaki, both as Tamaki and as Butterfly, you said, looking down at your hands nervously. Okay, I'm going to go now, you added when he didn't say anything in return. I'll be online as usual. You stood quickly and left in a hurry. Tamaki was too shocked to say anything and regretfully let you leave, watching you run to the door and then out down the street. The cool air, afternoon air felt colder as you ran down the street, hot tears pricking at your eyes before cascading down your cheeks. Does he not feel the same way about me now that he knows that it's me? That thought cut your heart like a hot knife and a lump formed in your throat as you ran. This whole thing is screwed. I shouldn't have said anything. You sniffed heavily as your feet pounded the pavement. I'll still go on RFO tonight though, but if he doesn't come then I'll know my answer. You opened your eyes in your apartment in RFO and looked to your left. Butterfly's empty avatar was still asleep beside you and you were holding hands as usual. You squeezed his hand and lay there for a bit refusing to let go just in case this was the last time you'd ever get to hold it. After about 20 minutes you got up. 
You were feeling heavier and heavier the longer it was taking for him to come online and eventually you went downstairs to your shop and opened up for the customers. They smiled eagerly as you approached the door and bustled in the minute that you unlocked it. Hey, you greeted flatly, come in. A small group swarmed your store as you stepped aside and you watched them all mill around before sighing and putting the sign out the front and setting up the display. Hey On, can you help me decide which item would be best for me? One customer asked excitedly. Yeah, okay, he replied in a dull voice as you dragged yourself back inside the shop. You okay? The customer asked, noticing that you weren't as chipper as usual. You seem kind of flat. Yeah, today is just... sucks balls, let's be honest. He sighed dejectedly as he stared down at the floor. Uh, sorry, the customer said. I'm sorry today's been bad. It's fine, I'll just go die in a hole after I'm done here, he replied. Uh, okay, go have fun with that, the customer replied. For now though, I know it's a bad time and all, but can you help me? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. What was it you needed help with again? For the rest of the time in RFO, you spent it trying not to cry as you helped people and interspersed that with looking at the stairs that led to your apartment, hoping that Butterfly would come down and tell you that he still liked you back and that he wanted to date you in RFO and in real life, but unfortunately it was looking like you weren't going to be that lucky. You logged out early that night. Butterfly's avatar hadn't moved from where you'd left it, and you felt like it wouldn't be right for you to lie down next to him on the bed again, so you sat on the couch to log out. I swear to God, if I log back in tomorrow and my stupid ass avatar has fallen face first on the ground with its ass in the air, I'm going to scream, but right now I do not give a damn. Once logged out, you rolled over in bed and put the Nerve Gear headset on the table beside you. Well, all those fun times are over now, I guess, you sighed heavily, before crying yourself to sleep. Thankfully, because the gang orca test and the whole Tamaki butterfly thing had happened on Friday, you had the whole weekend to alternate between crying and eating food. You had locked back into RFO each day over the weekend, but butterfly hadn't been on at all. This made you really sad. Monday came around all too quickly, and your anxiety skyrocketed as you entered the classroom. Tamaki was there in his usual seat, and your heart skipped a beat as your eyes met his. He blushed and quickly looked away at the wall, and you looked down and hastily walked to your chair before sitting down and staring at your desk. You hesitated a look in his direction, and he did the same as well, his nervous eyes meeting yours once again before you both quickly looked away. Why is he looking at me? You thought as you glanced over at him again. All throughout class you caught him sneaking peeks at you and because he was in the row in front of you and to your right any time he moved it would catch your eye and you counted a good 12 times in that morning class that he had tried to look at you. I asked this question before but I'm ask it again. Why is the shy bean looking at me? You thought. During lunchtime you and your bestie sat at the table by yourselves but you just so happened to be sitting in a position where if you looked over your best friend's shoulder you had a clear view of Tamaki and it appeared that he had discovered the same thing as well. Yo, Looney Tune, are you listening to me? Your bestie shot jealously. You've been looking over my shoulder all lunch, who is it? I, I have, no, no I haven't, sorry, no it's nothing, you replied, flip-flopping between apologising and denying it. You have a boyfriend. Who are you undressing with your eyes? She asked accusingly. I'm not undressing anyone with my eye. Okay, it's Tamaki. I can't stop thinking about him. I'm going insane, you wailed. Your bestie gasped. What about your boyfriend? Uh, okay. I have some serious explaining to do, you said with a sigh. You're cheating with Tamaki, aren't you? She gasped. I have always said you got to watch those quiet ones. God, Yin, you're such a player. What's he like in the sack? Is he all like secret dom or something? No, wait. He's into some kinky weird stuff, hey? Like using his tentacle quirk on you? Oh my God, hentai. He's hentai or die senpai, isn't he? I knew it. Are you done yet? You asked in a bored tone, giving her a half-littered done look while she rambled. Definitely hentai, she said again. It's kind of hot though, isn't it? Seriously, what do I do with you? You asked with faux exasperation as you shook your head. Are you going to let me talk or are you just going to sit there and fantasise about Tamaki and tentacle porn? Well, if you give me the options, she replied cheekily. Okay, no. No, you listen to me. I'm the captain now, you said, copying the meme before taking a deep breath in, getting ready to launch into your secret life online. Oh, no, I can't say that we met in RFO because that gives her secret away too, you suddenly thought. You paused, then continued. Um, okay, so you know how I met this guy online. 
Well, turns out it's actually Tamaki, but now that he knows it's me, he's been talking to, he's been ghosting me IRL and it hurts. But having said that, all day today he's been sneaking looks at me and I don't know what to make of it, you cried, slumping dramatically forwards on the table. That bitch, your bestie exclaimed. He better man up and tell you he likes you IRL or I'm gonna slice his ass off, kiss it, punch it and sew it back on upside down see if he likes that. You just stared at her for a good three seconds, impressed and mortified at her threat. Okay, that was super weird, but I love you, so I'm going to let that slide, you said with a straight face. Love you too, babe, she replied calmly, stuffing her face with a cream bun. You snorted with amusement. As you opened your locker that afternoon at the end of school, a note fell out and you picked it up to read it. 4pm, the usual, it read. You gasped and shoved it in your pocket before grabbing your things, changing your shoes and then racing for home. Having basically jumped from the front door up the stairs and into your room and up onto the bed the second you entered your room, you grabbed the Nerve Gear headset and then jammed it on your head and lay down quickly. Frickin' Link Stud Baby! You screamed into the headset. Thankfully it understood what you wanted and connected you to the game immediately. You blinked a few times as your apartment came back into view and you looked over at the bed from the couch where you had looked out from yesterday. Butterfly was sitting up on the side of the bed, looking down at the floor. Hey, you greeted softly, and he looked up at you startled. Hi, On, I mean, Yin, he said softly, and the hair on the back of your neck stood up as, as an excited tingle shot through your body. It feels really weird hearing you say my name in RFO. Tamaki, he replied with a sheepish grin. It does, doesn't it? He replied as he got up and walked over to you. Can I apologise to you first? He sat down beside you on the lounge. I'm so sorry I didn't stop you from leaving on Friday. No, that's okay. It was a lot to take in, you said. Well, it was a bit of a surprise. Yeah, he said. But, Yin, On... I've actually thought you were pretty cute for a long time now, but I've never had the guts to tell you. What? You said. You you think I'm cute? He nodded. But I didn't think I ever had a chance with you, so I forced myself to try and forget about you. Then I met this, well, you, in RFO and I thought I'd finally moved on, but it's you. You laughed at his really adorable explanation and gingerly reached a hand out and placed it on his hand as it rested on the couch. So does this mean we're okay? He nodded. Yin, would you be my girlfriend in real life and would you be my girlfriend as on in RFO? You grinned from ear to ear. I would love that, Tamaki Butterfly. He smiled up big and leaned in towards you, kissing you happily on the lips. I'm so sorry it took me a while to process everything, he apologised again. It's all okay now, Tamaki. There's no need for any more apologies, okay? Okay, he said as he leaned in and hugged you. Do you want to go and work in the shop now? I've missed helping you in-game. Yes, please. People have been asking me things. I've no idea what they're on about. Tuesday morning, Tamaki was waiting for you at your locker at school. Hi, Yin, he greeted softly as you approached him. Hi, Tamaki, he replied happily. You opened your locker and put your stuff inside and turned to face him to say something, but he was midway through leaning in for a kiss and he had his eyes closed, so you quickly moved your face to connect with him and felt him jump slightly when your lips touched. Tamaki, you giggled as you pulled back. You need to give me a little more warning when you want to kiss. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I've never had a girlfriend before, he said shyly, pushing his hands into his pocket and looking down. I'm trying to be confident. And you're doing an amazing job, you said encouragingly. He reached a hand out and rubbed his arm tenderly and he blushed madly at your touch. Can I hold your hand, Tamaki? You asked gently and he nodded, removing his hand from his pocket of the arm that you had just rubbed and held your hand with his. He looked equal parts elated and freaked out as your fingers intertwined and you thought it was just so cute. Once you were comfortably hand in hand, you walked down the hallway and entered the classroom together. Mirio was the first to notice. Oh wow, go Tamaki, he yelled. Tamaki just went bright red and hung his head, his whole body shaking with nerves. Mirio, don't call him out like that, you chided, but couldn't hide the giant grin on your face. Others in the class turned to see what all the fuss was about, and soon all were asking a ton of questions and congratulating you both. You separated as class commenced, but kept looking at each other throughout the lesson, very clearly smitten with each other. 
can't wait to spend more time with him in Arapo tonight, he thought happily. For the next week or so, Hugh and Tamaki got closer in real life and spent a lot of time together in Arafo. Tamaki was still just as shy in real life as ever, but he was doing his best to channel his inner butterfly whenever he was around you. In Arafo, you were levelling up quickly due to being partied with Butterfly, who would help you and grind in the afternoons after you closed up the shop for the day. You were on easy street with the amount of mahi you had, thanks to being able to sell his expensive rare items in your shop, and life was good. Your shop had a pretty good reputation now and was always accumulating customers who'd come from all levels to buy what you had in stock. Hey, I'm getting really close to leveling up, you said to Butterfly one afternoon. I'm almost a level 10 merchant. Really? He asked. That's great. Let's go and grind a bit more this afternoon so you can get to the level 10 by the end of today. Okay, you replied enthusiastically. The time came to close up shop and you and Butterfly left together and headed for the city gates and then to the fields beyond. Anywhere in particular you want to go? Butterfly asked as you walked beside him. Um, no, not really. Anywhere's fine. Actually, I wanted to pick some mushrooms for our dinner tonight. Okay, we'll go towards the woods then, Butterfly said, taking a hold of your hand and raising it to his lips so he could kiss the back of it. I really like your cooking on. You giggled. Thanks, Tamaki. Whoops, I mean, Butterfly. You came across a boar out in the open, and you let Butterfly defeat it. The minute it evaporated, your EXP bar jumped a bit, and a notification bar popped up in front of your vision. Congratulations! Level up! You squealed with delight. Butterfly! I just leveled up! You called to him. He turned and gave you a big grin. That's wonderful! Do you have any new skills along with leveling up? You opened your menu and scrolled through. Yes, I do! Just then a rat appeared nearby and Butterfly eyed it as you looked at your new skill. What's your new skill? Can you use it on this rat? He asked as he glanced from the rat to you. I uh, don't know, you replied with furrowed brows as your finger hovered over the skill. Mammonite? You mumbled. What's Mammonite? Wait, Butterfly called. Did, did you just say Mammonite? Yes, why? You asked as you looked up at him. Just then the rat locked onto you and charged. Without thinking, your finger hit activate skill and your hand involuntarily reached inside your coat pocket. Oh no! Butterfly cried, stretching a hand out towards you as if trying to reach out to stop you. What the? You gasped. Your hand retrieved a pouch of money from inside your coat and threw it at the charging rat. Oh my god! You screamed as your precious mahi was tossed unceremoniously at the rat. Once that pouch had been lobbed, your other hand reached into your other pocket and retrieved another bag of mahi. No, stop! You screamed as the pouch bounced off the rat and the mahi exploded out of it and evaporated into thin air. My mahi! Three more times, your arms involuntarily threw pouches of mahi at the rat until finally you defeated it and it burst into crystals and evaporated into the sky. My mahi! You sobbed as you collapsed onto the ground. Poor butterfly had to witness you hurling your hard-earned mahi at the rat and listen to you sob and scream for the skill to stop. He walked over to you once your new skill had come to completion and knelt down in front of you. I'm so sorry, On. I should have warned you about that skill much earlier, he said as he hugged your broken form. Who the hell is in charge of this game? What kind of skill is that? You raged suddenly. Um, well, you're a merchant, so your skills will mostly be based around money, buying and selling, Butterfly said softly. Stupid! Why are you stupid? You yelled at the clouds as they floated by in, in the soft RFO sky. Why, why are you yelling up there? Butterfly asked, confused, looking up to see what you were raging at. That's where the controls of this game live, right up in the sky, looking down on us? You asked Butterfly. Curse you stupid game designers! You hollered back up at the clouds. On, oh, it's okay, I have plenty more mahi, Butterfly said softly. I even have enough to comfortably buy that house next to Kirito and Asuna on level 22. You do? You asked. He nodded with a soft smile. Would you like to live there with me? He asked bashfully. Of course! He squealed. What a beautiful place to live. I'm so happy you said yes, On. I've been thinking about how it would all work out. I have some ideas for our future together. If you want to talk about them over dinner tonight, he said with a gorgeous little smile. That'd be lovely, you replied, leaning in and giving him a kiss on the nose. Okay, let's get food for dinner, then we can talk, he said, helping you up by the hand. 
Butterfly helped you pick up some berries and mushrooms for dinner, and he even caught a fish from a little pond nearby. Then you both headed back to your apartment. So, you said after you'd made a meal for the two of you, what were you thinking for us in the future? Well, he said, cutting a piece of fish and putting it in his mouth. I was thinking that we could buy a wagon and you could be a travelling merchant while we made our way up to level 22. We can't just teleport up there with all our stuff, you asked. No, unfortunately. You can only transport humans, animals and small items. So if we want to take everything from this apartment and the shop, we'll need to take the long way and use a wagon. Well, it does sound like a fun adventure, you said as you took a sip of the berry juice you'd made. Everything's fun with you on, he replied bashfully. You smiled. Same goes for me too, Butterfly. After dinner, you talked more about when the move would happen and decided to make it for three weeks' time. That would give you enough time to pack and let people know where you were going, then close up and sell the shop. One day at school, you and Tamaki were lying on the grass together, just talking about RFO and other random things, when you noticed he was becoming increasingly flustered and blushing a lot. Tamaki, what is it? You asked, when he looked away for the third time. He was lying on his back on the grass with his arms up behind his head, and you were lying on your stomach, propped up on your elbows beside him. I... I... He stuttered, blinking a lot as he kept his eyes averted from yours. What? You giggled. Yin, I can see... See what? You asked with another confused giggle. He glanced back at you, and you saw his eyes dart to your chest before he hurriedly looked away again. You looked down and saw that he could see directly down your school shirt, and you gasped before throwing your hands up to cover the opening. Tamaki, you chided playfully. Looking down my top, how cheeky! No, 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 Yin, I'm, I'm so sorry, he stammered nervously, covering his face with his hands. I d didn't see anything, I promise. Tamaki, you sang in a soft voice, and he slowly uncovered his face and looked at you. Don't you lie to me, you sang again. This caused him to turn bright red, and you giggled as he covered his face once more. I'm your girlfriend, Tamaki. You're allowed to be interested in my body, you said with a smile. But, but you're so special to me, and I don't want to do anything to defile you, he replied tenderly, with a little nervous quiver in his voice. At hearing the word defile, your brain immediately screamed, TENTACLE PORN! at you, and lurid images of Tamaki followed. You swallowed a scream that threatened to escape your throat and blushed. Too innocent for me, you whispered in horror, and he gave you a weird look. I think you're just amazing, Tamaki, you added quickly, still trying to dissolve the images in your head. Leaning in, you kissed his cheek, and he turned his head further towards you, non-verbally asking for another kiss, which you happily planted on his lips. I wonder if he'd like to try a bit of tongue, you thought, as you kissed his lips again, brushing your tongue against his lower lip. He gently parted his lips and his tongue gingerly met yours for a split second before he pulled away and sat up, pulling his legs up to his body and wrapping his arms around his knees. Oh, I'm sorry, Tamaki, that was bold of me. You apologised as you pushed yourself up onto your hands and knees and then knelt back. No, I really liked that, he whispered into his knees. I just, I liked it a bit too much. He shifted slightly and reached one hand down to adjust something in his pants. Did he just... Did I just give him a boner? Oh my god! Shy Ben with a heart on! You blushed and covered your mouth to stop your little smile of achievement from showing. Sorry, I won't do that again unless you initiate it, you promised. He nodded and looked at you. I really like you, Yin. Hey, Butterfly, you called from the storage room at the back of your store in RFO. If I clear out some of my virtual storage, could I pack some things in there so we don't have too much in the wagon? Yeah, he called back. If you have space to move items, then do so. You pondered as you opened the menu and clicked storage, scrolling through to see what things you could use or immediately get rid of. And as you scrolled, your finger hovered over the plethora of rat skins that you'd accumulated from defeating rats while grinding. Do I really need all these rats fur? You thought. Oh wait, I could get a nice warm coat or something made out of them for the trip. You closed the menu down and skipped back out to the shop. Hey, I'm just going down to the tailor store to get something made. I'll be back, okay? You said to Butterfly as you pecked him on the cheek. Okay, on, I'll see you soon, he said with a smile. You trotted happily out of the store and headed down the cobblestone road to the tailor shop nearby. Hi, you greeted the lady as you entered her shop. I was wondering if I could get an outfit made? Sure, hon, she replied with a smile. What can I make for you? 
You clicked your menu open and scrolled to storage, highlighting the pile of rat's fur and pulling them out. A huge pile materialized on the tailor's bench and her eyes flew open. I uh, have a lot of these fur, you said sheepishly. Would you be able to make me some kind of coat or something? She picked up a few and looked them over. Definitely, she nodded. Give me 20 minutes and I'll have something made for you. Oh, thanks, she replied happily. Um, how much will that cost? Mm, 300 mahi, she replied as she looked over how much material you had given her. Okay, thanks, she said, handing over the money before leaving the shop. 20 minutes later, you returned. Hey, how did you go? You asked the lady as you entered her shop. You'll love it, she replied enthusiastically. She handed you a package and you took it gratefully. I'm going to go back to the shop and try it on now, you said as you thanked her and left. It's finished, you squealed as you entered your own shop and smiled at Butterfly. I'm going to go upstairs and try it on. Can you help me? Sure, he replied, following you upstairs. Okay, now how do I do this, you asked as you scrolled through your menu. Clothing, undress. I'm assuming that's the one. Your finger hovered over the button and suddenly your clothes disappeared from your body and you screamed as you stood before Butterfly in bra and undies. No, don't look, you screeched. Butterfly quickly covered his face with embarrassment and turned away. Help me, you squealed to, at him. On, oh, I, I can't not look and help you at the same time, he said as he turned back and peeked through his fingers at you. Pass me the package, please, you wailed and he did so. You quickly pulled the outfit on, which ended up being a onesie, and looked at yourself in the mirror. Your face fell. It's a rat. I'm in a rat onesie. A flippin' rat onesie. I'm a giant rat! I think you look cute, Butterfly said with an adorable head tilt. I look like a ratatouille cosplay gone wrong, you wailed. I can't wear this. No, no, on. I really do think it's cute. Look at those ears on top of the hoodie. He pointed to them. And look, you have a tail. I can grow a tail too, in real life, if I eat something with a tail. His gaze fell bashfully. I like it because it's like you're wearing my quirk. He looked down quickly. Sorry, that was weird. No, it's adorable. I can see what you're trying to say. Okay, I'll wear it. It's actually pretty comfy, to be honest. But I swear to God, if I get teased in it, I'm out, you warned. He nodded and walked over to you, placing a hand gently on your head and rubbing it slightly between the rat ears. His face went red and he had to turn away. What? What is it? You asked. It's so cute, he replied with a strained voice. His body still turned slightly away from you. Okay, okay, maybe I should take this off. You're getting a little too excited there, butterfly. You laughed. He hunched his shoulders and put his face in his hands. I'm so embarrassed, he mumbled. It's okay, you laughed. Your reaction is super cute. Um, On, do you want to grind a bit more this afternoon? We'll be leaving next week, so it's best to get as much experience points as possible before we move on to harder levels, he said, hesitantly glancing back at you. Yes, please, you replied. I'll test out my rat onesie in public too, see what people think. Later, as planned, you both headed out to the fields to farm more monsters. People gave you some odd looks when you passed them in the rat onesie, but no one actually said anything. You were more interested in Butterfly, though, who seemed to be absolutely smitten with you in an animal costume. You defeated a few more rats and the odd grass snake here and there. You even caught a few rabbits, which would do nicely for dinner, then decided to head back home. On the way back, you came across a giant toad. What the hell's that? You yelped as the toad jumped directly in your path. Ugh, oh my god, gross, a huge toad, kill it, butterfly, you screeched. It's okay, On, they're easy to defeat, Butterfly replied calmly. You can do it. Ew, no, I don't want to touch it, you wailed. It'll get my dagger dirty. Okay, what if I hold it still and you kick it, he offered. You need to overcome this because giant toads are everywhere on level 2 and 3, so you need to get used to them. It's odd that one would be down here on level 1, though. Okay, if you promise to hold it still, you said with a hesitant grimace on your face. He nodded and turned his attention to the giant toad that was still sitting in the middle of the track like an idiot, just looking at you. He slid a foot back and launched towards the toad, disappearing at lightning speed and reappearing behind it and grabbing hold of it. The toad struggled to get free but Butterfly held it fast. Now on, he encouraged. You just stood there and screamed. No, no, don't scream, just kick it, he called. I can't! Yes, you can. 
You can do anything you put your mind to, he called back. This pep talk would be so much cooler if it wasn't over kicking a toad, you yelled. Kick on, he called urgently. Hurry! You balled your fist up and took a few running steps towards Butterfly and the toad, still screaming as you prepared to attack. Throwing yourself forward, you jumped and did a flying kick straight through the toad that exploded and evaporated easily and into Butterfly's crotch, your foot connecting heavily between his legs. He went down backwards like a ton of bricks, collapsing in a heap as you stood motionless over the top of him, too mortified to do or say anything at that point. Is that a rat? You heard a voice say from nearby, and you looked. Two travellers were heading towards Dawn City, and had just seen you take down Butterfly by the balls. Yeah, I think it is. Wait, was that the top player? Butterfly? That just got kicked in the balls by a rat? Yep. Man, that rat is OP. Keep away from rats on this level, hey, damn. You look back down at Butterfly, who is still cradling his jewels, and you burst into a barrage of apologies. I'm so sorry, are you okay? That was terrible. I'm a horrible person. Please don't hate me. Do you hate me? I know, I didn't know the toad was going to evaporate that quickly. Forgive me. Butterfly grunted and tried to sit up, and you stood back and offered him your hand before helping him to his feet and grabbing him into a hug. Are you okay? Those people think I'm a rat and that I defeated you. I'm so sorry. I've tarnished your name. You cried. It's okay, On. It's okay. He wheezed, still hunched a little. I'll be fine. He gingerly returned your hug, nuzzling into your neck and raising a hand to caress your rat ears. Is that guy hugging a giant rat? You heard yet another passerby ask. Oh, seriously? I'm taking this stupid onesie off. You growled. No, please, On. I like it. Butterfly mumbled into you. Okay, fine. For you, I'll keep it on, you said, letting him pat your head and stroke your ears. The fated day finally came and you were loading the last of the things into the wagon for your departure, still in your rat onesie. And while you put some things in the back of the tray, movement out of the corner of your eye caught your attention, and you looked to see what it was. Oh, it's you on, one of your regular customers said with relief. Why, who did you think it was? you asked, confused. I had no idea. All I saw was this giant rat putting stuff in a wagon, and I got curious. This rat onesie is going to be the death of me, you wailed. I'm only keeping it on because Butterfly likes it and it's comfy. But why did it have to be a rat? Well, you did give the tailor rats fur, right? The customer said with a chuckle. Okay, I'm going to farm foxes or something next and get an upgrade to a fox onesie as soon as I can. You replied with determination. The customer laughed. Hey, but also, you do know that there are rumours going around that a super strong rat took out the top player, yeah? Seriously? You deadpanned and people are actually believing it. Well, yeah, because there were eyewitnesses, she chuckled. What have I done? You wailed, slapping your hands to your cheeks and dragging them down your jawline, disfiguring your face. Oh, don't worry. I'll just tell them it's the local merchant dressed up as a rat, she replied. And that will work? You asked dubiously. Should do, she replied with a shrug. Good luck on your trip. We'll miss you. Thanks, he replied with a smile, packing the last of your supplies in the back of the wagon. Butterfly returned, leading a horse that he had just bought to pull the wagon, and hitched it up quickly. You ready to go? he asked with a smile. Definitely, he replied brightly. You said your last goodbyes to the customer, and climbed up onto the bench at the front of the wagon next to Butterfly. See you later, you called to the customer, and waved as Butterfly clicked his tongue to get the horse moving. You were off! Your smile grew and grew the further you travelled from the city gates and your bright eyes watched the scenery around you. Have you ever been outside level 1? Butterfly asked as you headed deeper into the woods. Only with you to level 22, but that's about it, you replied with a grin. I see. Well, just a word of warning. We will run into monsters and bosses, but I won't let anything happen to you. It's a good way to grind while we travel so we can level up on the go. Oh, okay. Do I have to find any of them though? You asked hesitantly. No on. I'll take them on. But you need to stay nearby so I can make sure they don't get to you. And also so that you can get a share of the EXP if you stay close while I take them out. Okay, I trust you. You said, putting a hand on his arm as he held the reins. We will need to stop at inns along the way to log out too. We don't want to be logging out in the back of the wagon where players could find our avatars and either PK or steal our items. PK? You asked. Player kill, he replied. 
Some people in this game just want to take out other players. Rude, you snorted. You chatted together as the wagon moved steadily along the track, getting closer and closer to level two. Okay, there'll be a boss, field boss coming up soon, Butterfly said suddenly. If I remember correctly, it's a giant wasp. Oh, fun, you remarked sarcastically. A few more minutes passed and you could hear faint buzzing that was steadily getting louder. Here it comes, Butterfly said, pulling the wagon to a stop and hopping off. Stay here, On. I'll only be a minute. You scanned the surrounding trees and grasslands, trying to catch a glimpse of the incoming foe when it all of a sudden appeared in front of Butterfly. You gasped when you saw the size of it. It was indeed a very large wasp and you pressed your back against the wagon's seat in fear. Butterfly was ahead of you in front of the wagon and he seemed as unfazed as ever as he drew his sword, holding it back on his, in his right hand like you'd seen him do in his duel with Kirito. Your man made the first move and in three swift strikes he had defeated the wasp. You made that look easy, he said with a smile as he ended the fight. I defeated the stronger one before, Butterfly said as he resheathed his sword and turned back around to you. This wasp is still classified as a boss, but when you defeat the original one, another respawns in its place, but it's weaker. Oh, okay, you replied. It's weird, but I actually understand what you're saying now. He smiled. Is it okay if we aim to get to level 5 by tonight? These first few levels are all quite similar, and they have similar animals, so there's nothing much to show you, Butterfly said as he hopped up back onto the wagon seat. Yeah, it's no worries, you said happily. I'm just excited to be with you. You travelled quickly through level 2, which looked much the same as level 1 but with giant insects and toads, then made your way past the next mini boss to level 3. The entry to level 3 was guarded by a big black fox with two tails, and the level itself had a very woodlands vibe to it with deer, foxes, weasels and porcupines as the field monsters. You spent a bit of time on level 3, grinding for your fox onesie and managed to get enough fox pelts to get your upgrade, which you were super excited about. Then came level 4, and as you both emerged through the forest after defeating the mini-boss, a lion-snake hybrid, it's not like you could see anything was wrong, but you just felt like something was off. It was very quiet as you approached the main town, and you saw a few players strewn out through the fields just outside the gates with their health bars dangerously low. What's going on? You whispered to Butterfly, who was on high alert and wary of his surroundings. I don't know, he replied to you softly. He followed the track into the main town and pulled up at the gates to talk to the guards there. What's happened? He asked the closest guard as he dismounted from the wagon bench. Butterfly! The guard gasped with excitement. It's so good to have you here. What's the problem? Butterfly asked again. Why are all the injured players in the field and why is no one going out to help them? We don't know what's going on but a red bear appeared and attacked everyone it came across, the guard said. We don't know where it went so no one in is game enough to leave the city to get the players but it's still out there somewhere. A red bear? Butterfly replied. But red bears are only on level 7. No, this one was down on this level, the guard replied. Some of the players aren't strong enough to take on a level 7 monster, so it's been wrecking havoc here. But it couldn't have been a red bear, Butterfly said again. It's not possible. Look, I don't know, okay? I don't know how or why it's here, but it's here. Can you please take care of it for us? The guard pleaded. Yes, okay, Butterfly replied thoughtfully. We'll also restore the health of the players out there and bring them to safety. Thank you so much, Butterfly, the guard said gratefully. And, uh, he looked past Butterfly to you and paused when he saw you in your rat onesie. Uh, this is my girlfriend, On. She's a merchant, Butterfly announced proudly. Ah, a rat merchant, the guard said happily. Your face fell. You and Butterfly quickly gathered things from the cart before heading over to the first lot of casualties. Are you okay? You asked the first injured player that you came across. Yeah, he grunted. I just feel really weak. That thing came out of nowhere. You knelt down beside him and lifted his head up so that you could help him have a drink of healing potion. The guard said it was a red bear? Yeah, that's right. Red bear. Acting strange too. Front legs glitched a bit every now and again. It's not supposed to be on this level so maybe it's a game fault. He said as his health bar refilled and he sat up. Oh, I feel good again now. Thanks heaps. He smiled. No problem, just get to safety now, okay? He said, pointing to the city gates. Will do, he replied as he hopped up and ran off. 
you quickly went to the next person and helped them the same way, giving out health potions that you had and asking for their take on what happened. Suddenly you heard a loud roar from your right and quickly looked over to see what it was. The red bear had appeared again from the nearby trees and had raised itself to full height on its hind legs. Your blood ran cold as it opened its mouth and let out a loud bellow. Oh no. It looked around and saw a player, still on the ground nearby, and dropped down on all fours again, ambling over to the player before leaning its head down and crunching right through the petrified player's abdomen, shattering him instantly. You gasped and covered your mouth to muffle a scream and froze where you were crouched on the ground beside the trembling player that you had just nursed back to health. Butterfly, where's Butterfly? You suddenly thought, whipping your head back and forth as you looked around for him. He was nowhere to be seen. Where is he? You paused for a moment, contemplating whether or not to call out for him, as making any noise right now could mean certain death. Your eyes found the bear again, and you realised, with horror, that it had spotted you and was looking directly at you. Oh no. No, 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 this is bad. The bear started stalking purposefully towards you, making terrifying grunting noises as it approached, its front leg glitching and the cursor above its head a definite monster red. Butterfly? Butterfly? You called nervously. The bear roared. Butterfly? You screamed. Just then there was a flash of navy blue and Butterfly flew in from the side, plunging his sword deep into the bear's shoulder. The beast bellowed out and staggered away at the impact, then turned its wrath on Butterfly. On, get the injured player's way! Butterfly called as he turned the bear's attention on himself. You quickly helped the healed player up and instructed him to grab other players nearby and drag them out of the way to somewhere safe behind the bear. While you worked, Butterfly coaxed the bear away from all the casualties and kept its focus on him while you hurried to heal as many people on the spot as you could and then asking them to help move the other injured ones. Occasionally you'd glance up to see how Butterfly was doing and it looked like he had the situation well and truly under control, just toying with the bear enough to keep its attention fixed on him. Once you had moved everyone out of the way, you yelled to Butterfly. We're good now, you hollered to him, and within a few seconds and a few well-placed strikes, Butterfly finished the bear off. A crowd had gathered at the city gates and all cheered wildly when they saw the terrifying red bear had been defeated. You smiled when you saw them cheering for your man, and he seemed almost embarrassed to have such a large gathering watching his performance. My hero, you said proudly as he approached you. The only person I'd ever want to be hero to, he said, looking lovingly down at you. You both walked over to the city gates and were engulfed by people thanking and praising your efforts. Butterfly and the lovely rat merchant, if you need somewhere to stay tonight, please consider my inn, one lady addressed you. You'll be given free accommodation and food for saving my husband's life, she added. I'm indebted to you both. That's very kind of you, Butterfly said softly. We will accept your gracious offer. You were smiling on the outside, but dying on the inside. The lovely rat merchant. Really? So, what's your take on it? You asked Butterfly as you and he walked up the hall to your room for the night at the inn. The red bear incident? He asked. You nodded. I'm not sure, but I think it might be a glitch in the game, he mused thoughtfully, putting the key in the in-room door and opening it. There was that toad on level 1, and now this bear on level 4. You nodded. A few players I spoke to said they thought the same thing, that it was a game fault. I hope the game masters fix the glitch soon, because it could become cause a lot of problems if it keeps happening. Entering the room, Butterfly removed his coat and hung it up before sitting down on the bed. Well... It could be that, or it could be that someone has brought it down to this level, but I doubt that would be the case because it had a red monster cursor and not a green cursor. If it had a green one, it would indicate that it's a beast tamer's pet. Can a beast tamer release a pet? You asked. No, not in RFO. Once you have a pet, it's yours until it dies. You then have the option of reviving it or taming another animal, he said as you hopped up on the bed beside him, kneeling there. He reached out a hand and patted your head gently, and you leaned in and kissed his cheek. He blushed and moved away to lie down on the bed. Come here, he said timidly with his arms open. You obeyed and crawled over the top of him, gently lowering yourself down onto his body. His face went bright red as his hands caressed your sides, one hand running down your back and smoothing out your tail gently. Are you okay there? you asked with a little giggle. This is the best day of my life, he squeaked his body trembling from excitement. 
He chuckled and rolled off him and then snuggled into his side. You need to cool down a bit before the nerve gear disconnects you from the game due to high heart rate, you laughed. 4pm the next day, you and Butterfly entered RFO again. Where to today? You asked him as you lay next to him on the bed, stroking the side of his face. I'd like to get to level 8 by today since we had a bit of a setback yesterday, he replied, turning his head to gaze into your eyes. What's level 8 like? You asked as he kissed your nose. Um, it's okay, I guess. Nothing too interesting. Just a lot of sand and palm trees, he said thoughtfully. But I really want to show you level 5. It's really beautiful. Well, I'm excited, you replied enthusiastically as you sat up and leaned over to kiss him on his lips. Let's go! Just one more cuddle, he asked shyly, his eyes averting from yours as he glanced away with embarrassment. No, of course, butterfly, you cooed as you lay your top half over his and let him pat you. Thank you so much again for having us, you said with a polite bow to the innkeeper as you and Butterfly prepared to leave the level. You are always welcome here, Rat Merchant and Butterfly, she replied with a warm smile. You cried internally. Why this nickname? Why? Many people came to see you off as you climbed aboard the wagon and made your way through the town to the other side. And we're off again, you commented excitedly. It was another lovely day in RFO and you followed the track up the side of a mountain, heading for level 5. The track was well worn and cut into the side of the mountain, which gave you a beautiful view of the landscape below you as your wagon plodded along slowly. As you rounded a corner you saw a very fast flowing river ahead, and Butterfly pulled on the reins of the horse a fair way back from it, before calling the steed to halt. What is it? you asked your man. The boss is in that river, he said, pointing ahead. It's a fearsome water stallion and I don't want to spook the horse, so I'm stopping back here. Oh, okay, he replied hesitantly, watching as he hopped down from the wagon and started to head to the river. As he got closer, the waters suddenly rose up and melted into the shape of a large horse, its eyes red in colour. You watched intently as Butterfly worked to defeat it, and once the horse had backed down and turned back into the river, he returned to the wagon, and you were on your way again. Once through the river, you came out on the other side and descended into a very misty valley, it started getting colder and you felt slightly uneasy, but Butterfly noticed and put his arm around you, holding the reins in his left hand. It's okay on, this place is fine. You gave him a little smile and looked around, looking for what made this level so beautiful. As the mist cleared, you descended a little more into the level. You saw a heap of lakes, small lakes and streams with majestic waterfalls filling them from all sides. Whoa, you breathed. Something moved in the corner of your eye, and you looked to see what it was, but nothing was there. Odd, you thought. You kept going deeper into level 5, and every few minutes you thought you saw something from the corner of your eye, but again, when you took a proper look, nothing was there. You can see them? Butterfly asked softly. So there is something there, you replied. I keep thinking I can see something, but then when I look, nothing's there. They're called whispers, he said as he looked around. They're the field monsters on this level but they don't bother you. If you want to take them on, you have to go searching for them. Eerie, you whispered with a shudder. Have you fought them before? Yes, a few. They drop good items, Butterfly said. They're difficult to fight when you're looking directly at them, so you need to fight them from the corner of your eye, standing 45 degrees to them. That definitely sounds hard, you agreed. Good practice for fighting monsters that come at you from all sides. If you practice striking while not looking directly at them, it really improves your skills. Ah, so that's why he's a cut above the rest, you thought with a smile. Butterfly didn't stop on his way through level 5, but you got a good chance to look around as you travelled, and then you headed on over across a natural rock bridge and headed into level 6, then through to level 7. This is the level of the red bears? you asked Butterfly as you entered the level. He nodded. I'd like to stop on this level in town and ask the people some questions. Okay, you nodded. You entered the town and stopped at the first inn you came to. Would you like some food? Butterfly asked. We can eat in here at the restaurant. Sounds good, you replied, jumping down from the wagon. Butterfly was wary as he ate his food, and you wondered why he was acting a bit uptight, but he didn't say anything. You are a game to show your face here, a player said gruffly from behind Butterfly as he approached your man. Butterfly reached for his sword and drew it quickly, Flicking it up as he spun to face the player who had just spoken to him, the tip of the sword just missing the player's throat as he pointed it at him. You squealed with surprise, 
This was an uncharacteristic side of the usual butterfly that you knew. I dare you to take me on again, Butterfly replied in a raspy low voice, his hood hanging low over his face. Oh, he looks so damn cool right now, you thought. Uh, hi, um, is everything okay? You asked sheepishly from where you sat opposite Butterfly. This player in his guild made fun of my username when I came through this level the first time, Butterfly replied to you without looking. His sword still pointed at the player's neck. The player in question looked past Butterfly to you, and Butterfly growled, Say one word about my girl and I'll end your day right now. The player raised his hands in surrender and shook his head. Wouldn't dream of it, buddy. You prove yourself. Last thing I ever want to do is offend you or upset you again. Butterfly didn't relax. He just kept his head down with his full attention on the player. What do you want? Your man asked slowly. Listen, Butterfly. We need your help, the player said. We hear rumours about one of our red bears on level 4. So it was yours then? Butterfly asked sharply. No, n not one of ours exactly, but we think it might have belonged to one of our beast tamers, the player said. Butterfly lowered his sword. Go on. Uh, can we talk in private? The player asked. You can pick the place if you don't trust me. I'll do that, Butterfly replied curtly. You and then he turned to you. Would you like to come as well on? I'd prefer to keep you close. I don't particularly trust people on this level. The player sighed as Butterfly shot him a look. Hey, I'm sorry, okay? What we did was wrong, but we're not like that anymore, the player said sadly. What happened? You asked as you walked around the table and up beside Butterfly. I am ashamed, to be honest, the player said as he looked at the ground. When Butterfly first came through this level, we thought his username was Vic. We decided to take him out simply because of his name. I'm part of a beast tamer guild. We are all tamers, and all on red bears each. You nodded and glanced at Butterfly, who was looking down at the ground too. Anyway, we acted friendly with him, invited him to our guild. He came. When he got there, we surrounded him with our bears and paid him out. We said some pretty mean things, actually. I still regret to this day, the player said with a sigh. Long story short, he whipped our bears' asses, and then ours. He's not weak at all. You smiled. You refrained from saying what you so badly wanted to say, but internally your brain was screaming, Suck on them apples, bitches! Serves you and your punk asses right for picking on my tamaki. So, um, yeah. The player said as he stayed looking at the floor. I'm very sorry for what we did and what happened, Butterfly. Take me to your guild HQ, Butterfly said without batting an eye. You sure you want to go there? The player asked hesitantly. Yes, Butterfly replied. I want to talk to Grizzly. Is he still the Red Paw leader? Yeah, he is. I'm concerned you still remember his name, the player said with a sweat-dropped look. I just want to talk, Butterfly replied calmly, in not the most reassuring tone, and you stifled yet another smirk when you saw the look on the player's face. Are you going to hand their asses to them again? You whispered to Butterfly, as you and he followed the player out of the restaurant. No, I'm not, but I want to show that I mean business, Butterfly whispered back, and you giggled softly. The player led the two of you off down a side alley and into the nearby forest picking his way along a track that led deeper and deeper into the dense trees and bracken. Suddenly the path widened and you were face to face with the mouth of a cave. Two guards with large red bears guarded the entrance and you balked a little as you approached. I, uh, have some visitors, the player said to the guards. State their business, one guard barked sharply. Butterfly stepped forwards and pushed the hood off his, of his cape off his head and both guards were immediately on high alert upon seeing the top player that had laid their asses out to dry before them. Do you come to duel? The other guard asked as he reached for his sword, his hand visibly shaking. No, I'm here on a matter of business with one of your players here, Butterfly said, motioning to the player that had brought you to the headquarters. It's regarding the Red Bear on level 4. The guard who had reached for his sword relaxed slightly and looked across to his companion. You may enter, he said finally, 
and stepped back and allowed all three of you to head into the mouth of the cave. You and Butterfly, with the player just ahead of you, walked down a long path lit with wicker torches that had been evenly spaced out along the cave walls. Voices, deeper inside the cave, could be heard and they got louder the closer that you got to them. Hey, you're back! Someone called as the player ahead of you stepped off the path and headed towards the group of guild members and their bears. And you brought some friends with you? Uh, kinda, the player replied sheepishly, and he stepped to the side so that the other members could see Butterfly. There was a moment of silence before all of the players reacted in some way. Most of them put their arms out in front of their bears as if trying to protect their bear from another attack. Some turned and ran, while others drew their swords and stood there shaking uncontrollably, whimpering things like, Don't kill us again! in the direction of where you and Butterfly stood. What a pathetic bunch, you sighed internally. Wait, are you a tamer now? One player called to Butterfly. There's a rat behind you. Quick as a flash, Butterfly drew his sword and extended it into the chain whip, the tip of it just licking the nose of the player, who had dared to call you an actual rat. She is my girlfriend, Butterfly corrected in a deep growl. The guy was frozen in place with a glowing red scar on the tip of his nose where the sword had just nicked him. She's wearing a rat onesie, but she's human, he added, just in case the idiot didn't know that you're indeed a human and not an actual rat. The player who just got his nose swiped nodded furiously, not saying another word. Um, is a grizzly in? The player who had just led you to the headquarters asked the group of terrified tamers. Yeah, inside, another said from the back of the group. Okay, thanks. The player replied, motioning for you to both follow him. You and Butterfly, led by the player, walked inside two large doors and went to Grizzly's room. He was sitting at a table, not doing anything in particular really. Boss, I have someone here who wants to speak to you, the player said upon entering. Who's it? Grizzly asked. Then he saw Butterfly and his face darkened. What do you want? he growled. I want to talk about the Red Bear on level 4, Butterfly said calmly. I'm not here for revenge. I've already had it. Grizzly stood up. He was a giant of a man with a heavy beard and a scar across his right eye. The perfect look for a boss of a bear taming clan. Wasn't ours, Grizzly said gruffly. But I think I know whose it was. Go on, Butterfly coaxed. Grizzly motioned for you, Butterfly, and the player to have a seat. About three weeks ago, Guy came in here claiming to be a tamer. Wanted to join a strong guild, so we told him to get a bear and come back. He did. With a red bear, I assume? Butterfly confirmed. Grizzly nodded. Something strange about the red bear, though. Cursor kept flicking between red and green. Strange, Butterfly mused, crossing his arms across his chest. What do you make of it? Dunno, Grizzly replied. Didn't know what to make of it, but the guy started getting restless. Asked him when we were going to clean this place up. Clean this place up? Butterfly asked. Yeah, Grizzly grunted. Started getting fanatical, claiming we were fakes, sitting on our asses, not doing what we should be doing. Had no idea what the hell he was on about, so we kicked him out. And then? Butterfly pressed. Then we hear about a rogue bear on level 4, Grizzly said. I just got this feeling it's his, yeah? What level beast tamer was this player? Butterfly asked. Do you remember his name? Did he have any special skills? Level 15 beast tamer. Name was Anarchy Lord. No special skills we knew about. The fact is, the bear was unusually aggressive was concerning. Interesting, Butterfly mused. And his whereabouts? Unknown, Grizzly said. We've been looking for him too. We can't find him. Oh, okay, thank you. I'll keep an eye out for him as we travel, Butterfly said as he stood up with you standing too, following his cue. If I see or hear anything, I'll contact you. Appreciate it, Grizzly grunted with a head nod. Butterfly nodded to you, and you both left. Okay, so what's going on? You asked Butterfly when you'd made it back to the town. Sounds like we have a player who has some kind of control over the animals but maybe not full control? Or maybe he's using a strange technique to tame them and it's causing the game to glitch and allows him to re release them again as monsters. I'm not sure, Butterfly replied, but either way we need to find out what's going on.
Ewan Butterfly ended up moving on to level 8 that afternoon and staying there the night instead of staying at an inn on level 7. Although he had the fear and respect of the Red Paw Guild, he still didn't like being near them. The next day, once you and he had entered RFO, you pressed on to the next few levels. Butterfly wanted to get to level 12 because he said it was a really nice city there and it was beautifully kept and a little more modern than the other ones that you'd been to. You were just excited to be seeing all these new things with your man. You easily passed through level 9, 10 and 11 and were heading along the track to level 12 when you met a hooded figure coming towards you, heading back to level 11. You noticed the traveller but didn't really pay him much attention until Butterfly slowed the wagon and pulled up in front of him. Hello traveller. How is the road ahead? Butterfly asked. I would strongly advise avoiding the city on the next level, if you value your life, the traveller replied ominously, not lifting his head to look at Butterfly. And what makes you say that? Butterfly asked innocently. You had been looking off into the bush during the first part of the conversation, but upon hearing the traveller's fairly brash warning, you looked at him. Naturally, you were about to say something, but then froze when you saw the traveller's name above his hooded head, Anarchy Lord. You jumped slightly in your seat, and Butterfly placed a reassuring hand on your knee as he awaited the traveller's reply. That city has what's coming for them. They don't deserve to live so frivolously. Butterfly stiffened. And would you have anything to do with what's about to happen to them? He asked the traveller pointedly. Anarchy Lord raised his head to look at Butterfly, and his whole demeanour changed in an instant upon seeing Butterfly's name. My lord, he gasped, dropping to the ground on one knee. What the heck? You snorted internally. It is an honour to be in your presence, Anarchy said. You, and you alone, are the only worthy person in this game. Ooh, this is so cringe right now. What the hell's going on? Butterfly was, understandably, speechless and just stared at Anarchy as he remained kneeling on one knee on the ground. My lord, I shall detain you no longer on your righteous quest, Anarchy said as he raised himself back up to standing and bowed himself backwards out of the way of the wagon. King of Tips Fedora Club, am I right? You mused to yourself. What on earth was he on about? You asked Butterfly as he urged the horse to pull the wagon onwards. And isn't that the guy we're looking for? Yes, it is, Butterfly replied without looking at you. But I'm a little more concerned about what's going to happen on level 12 at the moment. I'll send Grizzly a message and let him know where Anarchy is headed, but for now I have a feeling there's going to be a rogue monster let loose up ahead. Oh, uh, not another one, you groaned softly. Another bear? Butterfly shook his head. No, it won't be a bear, but I have a feeling it will either be a dragon, giant black pig, or a bronze snake, and we need to stop it. Ugh, I really don't like the sound of any of those, you said dejectedly. We'll soon be on level 12. I'm assuming Anarchy has already beat the mini-boss on his way back down to level 11, so we won't need to stop to fight. Okay, well, that's a one plus then, you said as the wagon bumped along. There's the city on, Butterfly pointed as the wagon crested the hill. Can you see anything unusual yet? No, not yet. But that's a nice city, you said, quite impressed with how it looked. It used to be the main party city when people were trying to level up through 13 and 14. When their day of trying to beat the level bosses was over, they'd come back to this level to party. It's still quite a happening place as far as I know, Butterfly remarked. Just then you both heard a fierce roar come from inside the city gates, followed by terrified screaming. Damn. That's annoying that it's inside the city this time, Butterfly muttered. Inside? You asked as the wagon picked up speed. Yes, up until this point the rogue monsters have been outside the city walls. True, you said thoughtfully, as you grabbed for the side of the wagon so as not to fall off. What monster is it this time, can you tell? It definitely sounds like a dragon. Level 20 have blue dragons that spit fire, and level 24 have black dragons that spit lightning. Ah, two of my most favourite things, you said sarcastically. Are you going to take it on? Yes, of course. I doubt anyone on this level would be able to take on a level 20 or level 24 dragon. The wagon sped towards the city gates, and as you entered you could hear loud screaming and saw a flash of black hide through the gaps between the buildings. Oh no, you said softly to Butterfly. It's the level 24 one, right, that spits lightning? Butterfly nodded. Yes, on. 
I want you to try and get people away from it as much as possible, and I'll try and lure it out of the city, but I may have to fight it right where I find it. Ugh, okay, uh, just be careful, please, you begged as he pulled up in a side street. I don't plan on dying on. I need to get to our house on level 22 so I can propose to you. And with that, he gave you a quick kiss on the cheek and jumped off the wagon, heading in the direction the dragon had gone. He, what? You gasped to yourself, hands up over your mouth. Propose to me? You tried to shake the exciting news from your mind as you jumped from the wagon as well and ran through the streets, directing people away from where you could hear the dragon bellowing. Most people were quite happy to be running in the opposite direction of the foe, so this made your job ten times easier. It glitches! Someone screamed at you as they came tearing towards you. No one can defeat it! Attacks just go straight through it! Your heart sank and you quickly told the player to head away as far as they could before turning and running towards the sound of the dragon. Please be okay, you begged to yourself as you ran, praying Butterfly was still standing. You rounded the corner, then immediately shrank back, hiding just behind the edge of the building. The black dragon and butterfly were facing off and butterfly had his sword drawn, ready to fight. As you watched from where you hid, you could see the dragon was indeed glitching heavily at times and you waited to see what your man would do. Butterfly moved slightly, then shot forwards at lightning speed. You only just caught a glimpse of him before his chain whip wrapped around the beast's front leg and he yanked it back hard, but the dragon's leg glitched at that point and the chain whip sword slipped right through where the leg would have been causing zero damage to the formidable foe. The dragon, upon seeing Butterfly right next to him, swung his head down and shot a bolt of lightning from his mouth, just narrowly missing Butterfly, who jumped back just in time. Butterfly readied himself again and lunged forwards, aiming for the dragon's neck, but the body glitched this time and Butterfly flew straight through the black, scaly opponent. The dragon, angered now, whipped around and shot another lightning bolt at Butterfly, who didn't quite dodge it in time, and the bolt struck his sword, conducting the lightning perfectly and scorching Butterfly's hand. You gasped and covered your mouth in fear when you saw Butterfly's charred skin, your anxieties increasing when you saw just how much health had been drained from Butterfly in just that one attack. If he keeps getting hit like that, it will only take seven or eight goes before that dragon drains all his health. That's if he doesn't stop to use health potions, but I don't think he has time to stop and revive. You watched helplessly as Butterfly tried a few more tactics, but each time his attack got thwarted by the dragon's glitch. Finally, Butterfly drew back and opened his menu quickly, swiping and clicking on something before closing the tabs back down. Another sword materialised on his left hip, and you looked at it curiously. What is that? Another sword? Is Butterfly a dual wielder like Kirito? You were so engrossed in your own curiosities that you didn't hear a female player sneak up behind you. Oh yes, she suddenly said as her head popped past yours to lean around the corner. I haven't missed a fight. What the heck, you whisper screamed. Where the hell did you come from? Get out of here, it's dangerous. <laughs> like hell I'm leaving now. Butterfly's about to fight and I want to see it. Yeah, but it's not safe here. You need to go, you replied emphatically. And what about you? You're here. Shouldn't you be going? She shot back in a snarky tone. I'm his girlfriend. I ain't going nowhere, you retorted. Oh, damn, seriously? Lucky bitch. I'd kill to be dating Butterfly, the female player sighed. Kill? You questioned suspiciously. Figure of speech, babes. Chill, yeah? She replied flippantly, turning her attention back to your man. Oh, hell yeah, he's going to use the rapier, she squealed in a hushed tone. The what? You asked in a deadpan voice. Rapier? You know thin stabby sword thing he doesn't use it often but he's fucking badass when he does holy he's going to dual wield hell yeah okay you need to calm down you said with slight amusement you know a lot about butterfly and his fighting habits yeah i'm a huge fan the guy's a legend uh that's my man you're talking about you replied smugly okay no need to rub it in she replied in a repulsed tone eyeing you from the corner of her eye a loud roar drew both your attention back to the fight and you watched as Butterfly stood in a very open stance with the chain whip sword in his right hand and rapier in his left. The dragon shot another ream of lightning at Butterfly and the bolt connected with the chain whip sword, sparks flying from the middle. You shut your eyes at the light and then opened them to see what had happened to your man but he wasn't where you last saw him. Where'd he go? Yes, bitch! The enthusiastic player hollered from beside you. He got him! 
Yu shushed her heavily and then looked back at the dragon. Butterfly had managed to place a hit across the dragon's left shoulder and was now behind the beast. Whoa, what happened there? I didn't see it, Yu asked puzzled. He's using one sword as a decoy, your female companion squealed excitedly. What? How? What? The confusion was evident in your voice. Seriously? She deadpanned. Watch him closely. You turned your attention back to Butterfly, who had now shot forwards and misplacing another hit on the glitching dragon as he passed him, and was now back in front of the fearsome creature. He bent down and picked up the chain whip sword that he had dropped previously, and held, held both swords out either side of him again. This time, when the dragon spat more lightning, he used his chain whip to attack, wrapping it around the dragon's left leg and shattering it into a million crystals. The dragon roared and went down on his side, allowing Butterfly to execute a few more well-placed hits, finally defeating the beast and bursting it into a flurry of million brilliant crystals. I still don't understand what happened, you whispered to the player, who was silently fangirling beside you. The dragon was targeting his sword because it learned that metal conducted electricity and increased the damage done to Butterfly. So Butterfly called another sword forward, so he had it as an attack item. When the dragon targeted one sword, he dropped it at the last second and used the other one to attack. It momentarily caught the dragon's attention and allowed Butterfly to op an opening, which he used perfectly, she gushed. I don't think the dragon glitches when it attacks either. What's with this dragon, hey? It has a strange algorithm. They don't usually learn attack patterns. Maybe that's why it's glitching because it's an AI or it's become sentient. Ugh, sentient dragons, no thanks. Okay, wow, that was a lot of information to take in. You said slightly shocked. So, in short, butterfly's amazing and dragon is possibly sentient? Nah, not sure about the dragon, but butterfly is a god, yes. The player said to you before turning her attention to butterfly and calling out to him. Oh my god, butterfly, that was amazing, I love you! She suddenly shouted as she stepped out from hiding. Butterfly whipped around in surprise. He hadn't thought that anyone had been watching him. Oh, um, thank you, he replied to her humbly, putting his rapier back in virtual storage. Where did you come from? Are you okay? Oh, I was hiding with your girlfriend in the rat suit, she said casually. Rat kink, huh? I can get behind that. Butterfly blushed. Oh, um, I like animals, he said softly. Well, that was flippin' amazing, the player continued to fangirl. You literally saved our asses right now. Me and my friends going clubbing tonight. You want to come with? She added her proposal with a sly wink. I don't think so, you said as you walked past her and stood beside Butterfly. We have better things to do. Like what? She shot at you. Like... You paused and looked down at Butterfly's arm. <gasps> oh my god, your arm. Holy heck, it's worse closer up. You gently held the blackened, charred hand up that had been holding the sword when the lightning from the dragon's attack had hit it and looked it over. I'll heal that in just a second, you commented. Then we're heading to our dream home that we've just bought and then getting engaged, you said smugly. Ugh, damn it. Well, congratulations, I guess, the fan girl player huffed. I own a shop here, so if there's anything I can do to repay you, butterfly. Very kind of you. He said politely. What shop do you own? A seamstress shop, she replied proudly. So if you want me to make a brand new dope-ass cloak, you just say the word. Actually, Butterfly said as he looked at you, there is something you can make for me. Well, not me exactly, but for my lovely girlfriend here. The player's face fell. What do you want? She said as she narrowed her eyes at you. Uh, I don't know, he replied confused looking at Butterfly for an explanation. There's a certain onesie you've been wanting, isn't there, On? Onesie? Oh my god, yes! A fox onesie! I have enough pelts too! You squealed, bouncing up and down on the spot. Please, could you make it for me? Please! You begged the female player. Ugh. Fine, but only because it's for Butterfly, in a roundabout way. In another half an hour, you had entered her shop and then emerged from her shop, wearing the cutest fox onesie you'd ever seen in your life. Look! You squealed excitedly as he exited the shop and ran towards Butterfly. He blushed and had a nosebleed right there on the spot. Butterfly! Oh my god, you're bleeding! I didn't even know that was possible! You gasped. How did that happen? Well, um, 
he mumbled, covering his nose instantly. I saw you in the fox onesie, and I... I... No, no, I, I don't need to know how the nosebleed happened, you laughed. I was just more asking, how does the game allow nosebleeds? Well, the nerve gear taps into my emotional system in the brain and can determine what emotions that I'm feeling and registers it to my face, so it must know that I'm... that I... Okay, okay, say no more, you said, frantically waving your arms for him to stop talking. I really like the fox onesie, he added softly, his eyes almost love heart shaped as he oogled you. So do I, you said excitedly, but for slightly different reasons to you, I think. Butterfly was so captivated that he didn't even reply your statement, just choosing to stare instead, and you turned and made your way back to where he had left the wagon. So, onwards and forwards, you asked as you hopped up onto the wagon seat. Um, there's been a slight change in plans, he replied hesitantly as he hopped up onto the wagon seat beside you. Grizzly replied my message about Anarchy Lord, and it's been said that he's going back through each level now, acting like a prophet and standing on street corners, preaching warnings about how players need to change their ways, or they'll get the wrath of the game lords poured out onto them. You rolled your eyes. Seriously? Who does this guy think he is? And then what? He just pulls some random monsters from higher levels and destroys people in cities? That's not fair. No, it's not fair. I agree. And it's making me angry. I have to put a stop to him, Butterfly said with an almost growl in his voice. And you're the only one who can, too, you gushed, leaning in and kissing him on his cheek. Let's go sort this asshole out. He nodded with a smile. Thank you for being so supportive, On. Boy, I would follow you to the ends of the earth to pick a flower. I'm just happy to be with you, he replied emphatically with a grin. He chuckled softly. You're funny, On. I like that. He pulled on the reins and turned the horse and wagon around, then back out the gate, heading to level 11 where he had last seen Anarchy go. The trip back to level 11 went very quickly, and you started getting a little anxious about the meeting between Anarchy Lord and Butterfly. I mean, uh, things could end quite peacefully, really. Anarchy seems to think highly of Butterfly, so he might just back down and stop bringing monsters in. Or he could turn Major Douche and go completely insane. Somehow you were leaning on the more insane part. Butterfly was getting updates from Grizzly via the in-game messaging app and thankfully Anarchy was still on level 11. He had set himself up on the main street and was yelling about repentance and retribution and silently you were hoping to get a good punch in on this guy too if the opportunity presented itself. As you approached the furthest end of the city you could hear a commotion inside and Butterfly stopped the wagon to talk to someone passing by. What's going on up ahead? Butterfly asked. Uh, just some nut job who thinks his purpose is to convert people, but we have no idea what he's going on about. When, he, uh, when we asked him what we're supposed to be repenting for, he always replies with, repent for defiling the game? I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Hmm, Butterfly replied with a wrinkled brow. Okay, thank you. I'll talk to him. Ha! <laughs> Good luck, the passerby snorted. Butterfly urged the wagon on, and you could see an angry crowd had gathered around Anarchy, who was still screaming from their midst. Anarchy Lord, we need to talk, Butterfly called loudly over the crowd. At the sound of Butterfly's voice, the throng of people fell silent. Many of the players recognised Butterfly's username immediately, and stepped back to make room. Anarchy looked up and called out with joy when he saw Butterfly. Our Lord has arrived. He will bring divine retribution on you all. Butterfly looked confused, and a whisper went through the crowd of spectators. Um, Anarchy Lord, I don't know what you're talking about, but if I may have a word with you in private? Butterfly asked, glancing hesitantly at the odd looks he was getting from the people nearest him. There is no need to hide your words from these people. Anarchy called loudly, making a grand sweeping gesture with his arm. Let your true wishes be known. Anarchy Lord, I must insist, Butterfly said, his tone starting to show signs of his, imp his patience running thin. Anarchy must have picked up on this because with a huff, he pushed through the people towards where Butterfly was still perched up on the wagon seat and looked up at him. Make it quick, the fanatical player said sharply. I have important business to attend to. Butterfly handed you the reins and jumped down beside Anarchy. And I have a duty to stop that important business. Your man said lowly, looking past Anarchy as he spoke. 
follow me. He headed off down the streets on foot, with Anarchy following, and he turned to the wagon and followed the pair a short way behind. Anarchy, Butterfly called over his shoulder to the male player, I know that you've been releasing monsters on levels that they don't belong on. Anarchy let out a low, eerie chuckle as he walked a bit faster and came up beside Butterfly. It's all going to plan, my lord, he said with a sneer. Butterfly shot his arm out across Anarchy's chest and then spun to face the deluded player. Why are you doing this? Why do you talk like I'm part of this? What is your goal here? Butterfly asked slowly as he stood facing off with the mysterious man. Anarchy looked confused at Butterfly's question and furrowed his brows. I thought this would please you. You of all people would understand this the most, he said with a slightly angry yet perplexed look on his face. I do not understand this the most, Butterfly replied angrily. You are disrupting players, games and livelihoods here. You need to stop this. Anarchy froze, his eyes widened. You're one of them, he whispered. I thought you would be different. You're going to have to explain yourself, Butterfly replied. I don't know where you're coming from. But you're one of the few players who actually plays RFO for its intended purpose, Anarchy shot back. You're not angered by those who aren't taking this game seriously. No, Butterfly replied. Everyone in this game has a right to play the game how they want to play it. Not everyone has to fight monsters and be levelling up. Yes, they do, Anarchy suddenly s yelled. How dare they frolic around and waste time. That's their prerogative, Butterfly shot back. If they want to spend their time having fun in RFO, then they're welcome to. There are no rules about how the game is to be played. That's why there should have been rules, Anarchy snapped. If I hadn't been unlawfully dismissed from the programming team, this game would have been so much better. You were part of the RFO programming team? Butterfly almost stuttered. Yes, Anarchy replied bitterly. But the rest of the team didn't agree with my philosophy. They had the same ideas as you. Everyone being free to do what they want to do in the game, whereas I wanted to enforce laws. Everyone would have to fight for their lives and strive for greatness, he said with manic excitement. If they sat idly, a monster would be assigned to them to torment them daily until they leveled up, he cackled. But no, he continued, his face darkening. They called me a delusional person and sick then plotted against me and had me dismissed from the team. But I won. His laugh deepened into a crazed, guttural sound. I will make this game how I wanted it, and it will be perfect. Butterfly was slightly shocked and stood there gawking at Anarchy before speaking. So you've been programming higher level monsters onto the lower levels to wipe out those that aren't strong enough to fight it? He asked. It's called survival of the fittest. And so far it's working beautifully, Anarchy replied lowly with a smirk. How are you programming them? They glitch and have strange algorithms. Is that part of your plan too? Butterfly asked, confused. I hacked the programming system and inserted my own codes, but unfortunately not everything matched up, so that's why the monsters glitched. Anarchy sighed. The system recognises that something is wrong but can't quite delete my codes because I've made the monsters as close to AI as possible. They learn as they fight. Glorious, isn't it? He sneered. Butterfly stepped back with fear. You're insane, he whispered. Join me, Anarchy said with an evil sneer. You are the number one player. You understand the ways of RFO. We could wipe out the entire idle population and start again create a race of strong fighters that are ready for battle. I refuse, Butterfly replied sharply. In fact, I challenge you to a duel. If I win, you cease this nonsense and never mess with the RFO programming again. And if you win, I'll join you in your quest. Anarchy roared laughing. I like you. This is indeed the true mark of a man. I will accept your duel because I'm in need of you on my team. Oh, I don't intend to lose, Butterfly said lowly. My intention is to stop you. Let's see you try, Anarchy said with a smirk. And since you're going to be defeated, 
I will let you make the terms and conditions. He added magnanimously. Two days time, level 15, 6pm game time, in the arena, Butterfly replied confidently. Done deal, Anaki said as he stepped to the side and walked past Butterfly. When you're on the ground, dying, watch me as I take your foxy lady and make her my own. Butterfly gasped silently and spun to say something to Anarchy, but he had vanished into thin air. The minute the creepy player had vanished, you jumped off the wagon and ran over to your man, throwing your arms around him. Butterfly, you said with fear rising in your voice as he caught you in his embrace. I, I didn't hear all of that, but I heard him say something about me on the end, right before he evaporated. Is he going to do something to me? No, On. I will never let him do anything to you. You have my word. As long as I'm by your side, you will be safe. And trust me when I say that, I'll be by your side forever. You sighed with relief, and he leaned his head down to kiss you, his lips moving confidently this time, and you parted your mouth slightly as his warm tongue entered between your lips. Tilting your head slightly, you both enjoyed the most passionate kiss you'd ever shared. I will never let you come to any harm, Butterfly promised again after pulling back from the kiss. Butterfly filled you in on what Anarchy Lord had said to him and told you that he had two days to prepare for the duel on level 15. I'd like to make it to level 15 by tomorrow if possible, he said as you both hopped back onto the wagon and headed for level 12 to stay the night. That way I can grind and hone my skills for a day in preparation for the fight. I hear you, he said, but I don't think this hacker programmer dude with a complex is going to be playing fair. He's been creating ways for monsters to attack people on lower levels. What's to say that he's not going to give himself some kind of power boost so that he's OP? Butterfly thought silently for a bit then smiled at you. But I have a weapon that he doesn't have, he said with a cheeky chuckle. You do? You asked with excitement. What is it? You, he replied happily. If I have you with me, there's no way I can lose. It was at that point you dropped all of your uwu and clutched at your heart to stop it from melting right out of your chest. Butterfly, I, oh, you're just way too sweet. I can't. He leaned down over and kissed you on the side of your forehead. It's the truth though, On. I feel like I can do anything as long as I have you with me. Butterfly, I think I'm about to pass out. I'm having a hyperglycemic attack from your sweetness. You've given me diabetes. Oh, I'm so sorry, On. I didn't know I could do... I'm joking, he replied with a chuckle. But thank you, you're adorable. I'll always be here for you. You kissed him on the cheek. You made it steadily through level 12 and got a very nice room for the night, then lay down on the bed to chat for a bit. It was still early and neither of you wanted to log out just yet, so you passed the time together. Chatting led to caressing, and caressing led to little kisses and slightly more wandering hands, with you being the one to guide Butterfly's hesitant moves. You can touch me wherever you want to, Butterfly, you whispered into his ear. I... I'm, I'm just new to this, he whispered back. I don't want to do anything wrong. You won't do anything wrong, I promise, he replied. You're too gentle. You'll be fine. You leaned in and locked lips with him again, as your hands ran over his sides and back, making their way down to his backside, and he mirrored your moves gingerly, when suddenly he stopped. I... I'm sorry, On. I, I better go. I'll see you at school tomorrow, he mumbled with embarrassment, and then quickly opened his menu and logged out. That was sudden, he thought as you lay there, still in the embrace of his empty avatar. Oh well, guess it's late. I better go too. Tamaki awoke in his bed and jolted upright, looking down at his pants immediately, still with the nerve gear headset on. A very obvious bulge met his eyes, and he sighed with relief when he saw that his pants didn't have a wet patch on them. At least I didn't. He blushed at the thought. The next day at the school you gave him a big smile as you entered the classroom. Hey Tamaki, you greeted cheerfully as you walked over to his desk. Hi Yin, he replied bashfully. I'm sorry about leaving so quickly yesterday. Nah, don't worry about it, he said happily. You're okay though, right? He nodded. I'm fine. He looked down at his desk, his hands falling into his lap as he stared at the wooden top. Okay, you said slightly curiously. Well, I have something for you after school today, so meet me at my locker after the last class, alright? Sure, he said as he looked back up at you and gave you the tiniest little smile. After last class, you quickly went to your locker and waited for Tamaki. Slowly everyone started to leave from around you and the locker room became more and more empty. Soon you heard a noise to your right, 
and looked over in time to see Tamaki, who had just popped his head around the corner of the lockers and was looking sheepishly at you. You laughed. You don't need to hide, silly. Come over here. He pushed his hands into his pockets and quickly walked over to you, his head down, as he approached you. What did you have for me? He asked as he glanced at your face. You stepped back and leaned against the locker, and he stepped closer to you. Close your eyes, he directed, and he followed your order. Quickly, you slipped your hand into your locker and pulled out a pair of fox ears on a headband that you'd picked up from the variety store on your way to school that morning, and then put them on your head. Okay, you can open your eyes now, he said excitedly. Tamaki opened his eyes slowly and they shot wide open when he saw what you had on your head. Yin, you have fox ears, he squeaked. Do you like them? You asked with a grin. He nodded furiously, a blush covering his cheeks and travelling right up to his ears. I love them, he whispered. You giggled and reached out to take his tie, giving it a firm tug to get him to step closer to you. Naturally, he stumbled forwards and put an arm out to stop himself falling onto you, inadvertently doing a cabadon against the locker behind you. Ooh, I like it when you do that, you said cheekily. I, I didn't mean to. I, I just lost my balance and... No more excuses now, Tamaki. Kiss me, he said forwardly, a mischievous look in your eye. He leaned in, one hand still on the locker beside your head and the other in his pocket. Having kissed you a number of times in Arafo, he was starting to get more confident and you let go of his tie and wrapped your arms around his neck to deepen the kiss. That's a good luck kiss for your jewel tomorrow afternoon with Anaki, you said once you'd pulled away from his lips. There's no way I can lose now with all that luck backing me, Tamaki said softly as he shifted slightly in place and tried to adjust himself discreetly with his hand that was still in his pocket. We definitely need to do something about how easily excitable you are though. You chided playfully, tapping him on the nose with your index finger. I find you very attractive, Yin, with and without the fox ears. I just can't help it. I'm not complaining, he replied happily, giving him a hug. That evening in RFO, you got to see your man in action, grinding his way through various monsters on level 15. The setting for level 15 was something similar to mythical Greek Roman times, there were a few amphitheatres and arenas around, which would be good for duelling or entertaining, but not many people lived on this level. It seemed to be just a level that most people passed through. Cyclops, Minotaurs and Gorgons made up the majority of the field monsters and made it all that more understandable as to why people didn't want to live here. You had to stay close to Butterfly as he farmed these monsters so that you could share a cut of the EXP that he was accumulating and for all those travelling and grinding you two had done, you had levelled up pretty quickly. You were close to level 40 now, which meant you could change classes soon if you wanted to, and you had your sight set on changing to blacksmith so that you could help Butterfly maintain his equipment. Your attention was drawn back to Butterfly as he took down yet another Cyclops. How many does that make? You called out to him as he finished the monsters off. Seven Cyclops, five Minotaur and ten Gorgon, he replied. <laughs> Whoa! That's a lot of Gorgon, you mused with a chuckle. How are you feeling about the duel tomorrow? I'll be fine, he said with a smile as he resheathed his sword. There's not much he could throw at me that I haven't come across before. Okay, cool, you replied. If you're happy, then I'm happy. How's your levelling up going? He asked, walking over to where you were casually sat on a rock. Amazing, thanks to you. And also thanks to the level 24 dragon you took on on level 12. That thing made my EXP jump through the roof, you laughed. I've been enjoying riding the bus. Butterfly chuckled softly. Getting used to the gaming lingo now, are you? Oh, totally, you replied emphatically. I'm boss level now, and this isn't even my final form. He grinned. You're cute. You gave him a goofy big smile and stood up, dusting the back of your pants off. So now what? You stretched and then wrapped your arms around his neck, draping yourself down his front as he wrapped his arms around your back. Are you done for the day? Should we look for a place to have dinner and stay the night? Sounds good to me, he replied. It's relatively cheap living on this level, because no one wants to stay here, but it's nice enough. I think the mythical creatures and odd-looking creatures here scare people away. Fair enough, you commented with a sweat-dropped look. I mean, like... Imagine coming across one of those Gorgons every time you stepped outside the city gates. The two of you chatted as you walked back to the wagon and then headed for the main city to stay the night. 
As you were travelling in, Butterfly received a message from Anarchy Lord about the duel next day, finalising rules and location. Everything was now set. 6pm game time the following day, you and Butterfly entered the main arena and walked out into the centre of it. Anarchy was there with his hood on, looking very ominous indeed. A man of your word, he said briskly to Butterfly as you both approached. Of course, Butterfly replied stiffly. Now let's finish this so I can get back to the game and get back to normal. No, my friend. Let's finish this so you can join me in making this game fantastic, as it was originally intended to be, Anarchy said, pushing his hood off and looking from Butterfly to you. Dearest Fox Lady, he addressed you directly. May I suggest that you kindly take a seat in the stadium so that you are out of harm's way for the duel. I wouldn't want anything to happen to you. You scowled at him, but when Butterfly turned and nodded to you, you followed orders. As you turned to, to head towards the seated area, you heard a loud animalistic bellow and the hair on the back of your neck stood on end. Your head whipped back around in the direction of the noise that it had come from, and Anarchy let out a low, cruel series of manic laughs. What made that noise? you asked Butterfly nervously still looking around for the creature that made such a ghastly sound. From behind Anarchy, a grotesque creature emerged, walking right through the walls of the arena, and you shrieked before stepping in behind Butterfly. What the hell is that? you whispered in horror. That's called a Yotun, Butterfly replied calmly. A Nordic beast from level 70. Oh, okay, well that's a good thing that you're level 80 then, huh? he replied with a nervous chuckle. But I'm not level 80, he replied curiously. What? What do you mean you're not level 80? No, on, I'm only level 63. People just assume that I'm a higher level than I really am because I'm the top player. I just don't correct them. You paled. Why is this beast down here though? I thought you were dueling anarchy. That's a good question, Butterfly replied lowly. I'm sure anarchy has a reason. He looked up and locked eyes with the very smug looking rival. Any reason in particular that you've brought a Yotan to the fight? Your man called. This be your opponent for the day, dear butterfly, Anarchy replied grandly. I agree to duel you today, Anarchy, not one of your beasts, Butterfly said back sharply. Oh, so you're unwilling to fight a level 70 beast, are you, sir? I thought you were a courageous man. Looks like I win already, he said back crossing his arms across his chest with a very self-satisfied look on his face. If you are unwilling to fight my Yotan, then I win, and our agreement still stands. No, Butterfly replied firmly. I will defeat your Yotan and prove once and for all that I am the top player, and you will abide by my wishes. Very well, sir. I wish you good luck, Anarchy replied vehemently. You do understand what you're getting yourself in for, do you not? I know very well, thank you, Butterfly replied somewhat curtly. This creature is very fitting as a beast of yours. Oh, why thank you for the compliment, Anarchy laughed. I must say I'm impressed that you picked up that much. Yes, I did choose this beast due to my situation. A chaotic beast that's perceived to have a lot of strength, Butterfly said swiftly making Anarchy's ego swell, but has a weak intellect. Butterfly finished with a small smirk. Anarchy's expression darkened.